Jaron Jackson out there with Brandon Clark. And it's smart in its small forward. Now here's Moran. Jackson with a screen on Isaac. From deep, Moran. Oh, thanks that one. He's 0 for 1 to start. Pass to Ben Carroll. Wagner outside. And the foul is called. He missed it, so he's got a couple of free throws coming his way. And for the Berlin native, Franz Wagner. His NBA career is off to a terrific start. Yeah, at 6'10", he's extremely versatile. He's already a talented scorer at all three levels. Plus, he's able to put the ball on the floor and create for his teammates. Now here's Moran. Oh, great D that time from Isaac. Look, the defense was locked in on him there. They know how dangerous he can be, and they guarded him perfectly. Suggs with the bucket. And I like the shot selection. Suggs recognizes when to look to score inside. Isaac against Moran. Great D that time from Bancaro. And the Magic with possession. Pass to Suggs. And Carroll with a screen on Bain. Suggs, the pass to Ben Carroll. Time called here. The Magic decide to talk it over. Yeah, Coach no doubt wants to use this timeout to review the matchups and maybe make some adjustments as well. I'm sure all of the above is in order, and you can never be too content. Now here's Anthony. Five on the clock. And Suggs the bucket on the assist by Anthony. And adding to this lead right now. Riding a wave of momentum. Yeah, they've locked in during this stretch. If they keep it up, their lead will only continue to grow. Moran against Isaac. And now we've got an intentional foul. Jalen Suggs. First personal foul. First team foul. Outside Bain. Can they get it? And it's good on the layup. At last, their cold streak is over. They finally found something that worked. <laughs> yeah, the lid's now off, guys. Maybe they can rattle off a few more in a quick order. Anthony with a bucket. Starting to find his rhythm. He's cooking, and he knows it. Yeah, when he gets engaged this early in the game, it's bad news for the defense. He can roll this start throughout the rest of the game. And the foul on the shot. So he'll take two from the free throw line. And that's going to be a foul on Orlando. Clever play by Morant, sticking with his shot to ensure he gets himself fouled while in the act. And Morant drops them both. The Magic have gone 4 of 4 from the floor. Perfect start. Wagner, left side. Now, if you're just tuning in, we've played about two and a half minutes here in the first. And the shot's good. They have Ben Carroll covered inside, but he stays cool and gets his shot through. Moran against Isaac. Now here's Moran. Oh, there's Moran with the slam. <laughs> I tell you, a little extra pressure on D when you're up against a point guard who can elevate. Ha, it doesn't make it easy, does it? Yeah, hard to strategize for a guy who can make a pass or a play like this right in your face. Parker with a screen to the inside. The rebound by Jackson. And here's Jackson. He'll bring it up for Memphis. They trail by six. Jackson with a screen on Isaac. Here's Moran. And then Moran with the dunk. That play is Morant's ball-handling talents pretty much in a nutshell. Fast, smooth, and very effective. Count that one. Just taking it right to the rim, and no one was there to greet him. Easy possessions like that literally are just a gift. You just dream of them. He'll gladly take those. Now here's Morant. He's got six. And the dunk by Jackson. And this is part of Morant's role. As a guard, he's responsible for finding the open man. Well, you really can't say enough about what Jaron Jackson Jr. has done since entering the league, RJ. Yeah, B.A., not only is he a walking bucket, but opposing offenses have to account for how good he is on the defensive end. That's why he was Defensive Player of the Year. And that one's good. Moran. Uh, let me just say this. You're going to want to put some extra tape on your ankles if you've got a guard, John Moran, because his handle is on a string. Now here's Anthony. 
Pass to Ben Carroll. With the drive. Oh, Ben Carroll throws it down. Just a strong drive right there from Ben Carroll. Excellent at finding the avenue to the bucket. Jackson with a screen on Isaac. Jackson outside. Back to Moran. And then Moran with the dunk! Nice ball movement there. That's how you break down the defense. Orlando leading. Three second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Here's Wagner driving to the basket. Ooh, a two-handed power slam! Get him the ball anywhere close to the hoop. That thing's over. Isaac against Moran. Payne with a screen on Isaac. Here's Moran. It's good. Morant's got 12 points. And this is what John Morant does best. When he finds his rhythm on offense, he is almost impossible to guard. Offense is coming free and easy as we wrap up the first. It's the Magic leading... And for those of you just tuning in, second quarter action is where we are. Had a moment here to take a look at the scoring breakdown for the Magic. Oh boy, they've been driving deep into that defense early on and it's paid off. Great penetration from the perimeter so far. And another thing they've done is look to shoot from the mid-range often. So far, it's really paying off for them. On the court for Memphis, Moran and Bain in the backcourt together. Brandon Clark out there with Jaron Jackson. And it's Smart in at the three, the small forward. Clark finds Jackson, and he commits the... Intentional foul. I mean, I'm just not sure what he was thinking right there. I mean, he needs to get his head in the game. Jackson, pass to Moran. Takes him. Oh, and there's the whistle on the shot. So two free throws for him coming up. All right, RJ, let me put you on the spot. In the not-so-distant future, let's say 2028, who's the face of the NBA? Well, B.A., there's a high probability LeBron might still be playing, but my smart money is on Luka. He's already a superstar. Or maybe it's Victor Wembanyama. He's 7'4". We've never seen a guy that can do what he does at his size, but I can't wait to find out. Wagner, the pass to Suggs. Back to Wagner. From down in the low post, it goes. Give him eight points now. He just makes it look so easy on offense. Just, like, who takes pleasure in torturing defenses? He does. Here's Moran. Yes, sir! Ja can throw it down. Okay, I see you, Ja, flexing a little bit of muscle, showing off that athletic ability. Okay. And it's Wagner off the drive. Impressive one-hand slam right there, B.A. Man, as long as he's confident about it, I'm good with it. Maybe use two hands next time. He knows where he is. Jackson gets the bucket. Well, Jackson has become a threat from range, taking and making those shots more consistent. Anthony, the pass to Suggs. Three-pointer, no good. And this is exactly who you want taking that shot. He just missed it. And the call will be against Jonathan Isaac. That's foul number two for him. They're having a hard time with fouls. It's still early, but one more and they'll be over the limit. And the Grizzlies making a change here. Rose is checked in. Bain with it. Wagner picks him up. Clark up top. And stolen by Bancaro. Pass to Wagner. On the wing, Suggs, guarded by Bain. Oh, Ben Carroll throws it down. And he did that so well in college. Suggs sharing it well in the league, too. Outside Bain. Fires the three. Drains the triple. Bain's got five now. Defensively, got to close out a little faster. That's a look he'll make with regularity. On the wing, Suggs. He takes it in. And so the ball out of bounds. Smart tucks it last.
Here in quarter two, we've played a little over two and a half minutes now. Anthony, the pass to Ben Carroll. Six on the shot clock. Pumped and finishes! Great stuff from Ben Carroll. It's so hard trying to throw Ben Carroll off balance. He's superb at finishing through contact. Jackson, the pass to Bain. And stolen by Ben Carroll. In transition, the magic on the run. Knocked loose. And now we have an intentional foul. I'm not timeout, sure timeout. why. Yeah, bizarre play, B.A. Not sure what got into him. And the Magic call time here. Orlando ends up going with a new group. Here's Fultz. Laid it in with a nice touch off the window. Nice execution on the inbound. Just how you want to draw it up. Payne finds Jackson. Back to Payne. Jackson the screen. And it won't go. His first miss. He's 2 of 3 now. The Magic have gotten 5 of 7 shots to go in the second. Pass to Houston. There's the 3. The rebound by Jackson. The Grizzlies have gone a terrific 4 of 5 here in the second quarter. Oh, stolen by Fultz. Down low. Here's Carter. And it's slammed in by Carter. You love the show of force from Carter Jr. He's not messing around when he gets the ball down there. To the middle. Jackson down low. He's checked by Carter. Jackson gets the bucket. They're punishing those late defensive rotations. Getting good looks inside throughout the half. Ingles passes to Houston. Back to Ingles. Nifty move. And that's two points on the layup. And the Magic lead by four. I just love when teams make it work down low. Pass to Clark. Now Jackson. Williams has checked in for Memphis. Twenty-nine seconds left in the second quarter. Payne, the pass to Jackson. Over Carter. Rebound by the Magic. Couldn't quite line that one up. Just got to shake it off and move on to the next one. Pass to Houston. Now here's Ingles. And the layup is good. Ingles got his second basket. It looked like he was playing against his little brother out there the way he just went timeout, right timeout. over him with his height. Timeout. Memphis. Here's Kennard. Oh, and the release was before the buzzer, but it's off target. And so it's Orlando with a six-point lead at the close of the quarter. And it's all due to their ability to own the paint. They've been dominant down low. Back to the game after this break. And we've got second half action for you. Thus far, a pretty evenly contested game. Oh, a fantastic game from Ja Moran in this one. Yeah, tonight, he's done a great job of slashing through the lane and finishing. And you love that mindset he has going at the rim. He hasn't settled for anything, and he's been the aggressor all game long. In the backcourt, it's Anthony and Suggs. Isaac and Wagner make up the forwards. And it's Ben Carroll in at the five down low. That's who's out there for Orlando. And the Grizzlies with some changes. Jackson, he's checked in for Jackson. Clark comes in for Williams. And it's Morant in for Desmond Bain. Jackson outside. Good.
and the setup by Moran. Jackson's got 10. What separates Jaron from other bigs is he's got great confidence in his shot. Here's Suggs. And he bangs it home with one hand. And he just driving the stake in him there. He's a guy who just never lets up. And that finish shows you how dangerous he can be as a passer and a finisher. To the paint. Here's Clark. So it'll be two free throw. And here comes the coach's challenge. He disagrees with the foul. He does not hesitate to ask for a second look. It's pretty heated game. Every call matters. People will work. Taking two shots. Close calls in every game. The NBA was smart to adopt this challenge policy in 2019. You know, one thing this does for a coach is let his players know he's got their back. If they're adamant that the call was wrong. After review, the ruling on the floor stands. And they've made their decision. The call will stand. And as much as it hurts to lose a challenge, I think Coach would challenge that call again if he could. He really disagreed with the foul, and he's still peeved. The free throw drops for Clark. Off on that one, so he goes one out of two at the line. Stolen by Jackson! Moran against Isaac. Got a piece of it. Oh, and a fast break for the Magic. The three from Suggs. And count it. Now five for seven. Yeah, nice initiative from Suggs. Seeing an easy scoring opportunity and pouncing on it. Here's Moran. And then Moran with the jam. As usual, Moran bringing down the house. Anthony outside. And Morant clears the board. And the shooter had very little space on that attempt. I'm sure they'll think twice about shooting against him next time. Jackson with a screen on Anthony. Smart passes to Jackson. And here's Morant. Down to five on the shot clock. Oh, there's Morant with the slam. Now that's how you use the screen right there. And it leads to a thunderous finish. That was nice. Yeah, you like the pick to set up the open shot. But when it leads to a dunk, okay, even better, we'll take it. This is why you always have to chase guys off the arc because everyone has a three-point shot now. There's Jackson with the three. And a great assist by Moran as that one goes. Moran's got four assists in the game. Lays it up and banks it in. And the Magic lead by five. Possessions that end with close looks, especially for guys like Isaac, those are key to winning games. Jackson with a screen on Isaac. Kicks it out to Clark. Pass to Jackson. And the Grizzlies call time here. Jackson, he's checked in for Jaron Jackson Jr. A touch over two and a half minutes of basketball played here in the third quarter. And Morant gets it to go. This man has entered the zone. Great shooting performance from him all game long. Pass to Wagner. And he takes that one up and powers it through. <laughs> Attacking the rim with power. Tremendous finish. Here's Moran. Tough points from John. This man was under-recruited in college. Can you believe that? And Morant, he still plays like he's trying to prove something. Anthony with a bucket. Anthony. Anthony's got six. And you look at how they've come out in the second half. It's almost like night and day. And they look like a completely different team. I wonder what Coach said to them at halftime to help spark this momentum change. <laughs> Did you see that? Look at the elevation on that dunk, B.A. Man, he just cocked it back and fired it down with one hand. Shot is good by Isaac. Assertive move. You can tell the game's heating up a bit. Pass to Jackson. Pulls it from the corner. And a great assist by Moran as that one goes. Jackson's got his first basket. Sharing the rock. Part of what makes John Morant such a fantastic player is his ability to pass. Back to Anthony. Wagner on the wing. Clock 
clock at six. Right wing. Here's Ben Carroll. Hello with the attack. Ben Carroll determined to hit that bucket, staying above the fray. And the Grizzlies call time here. Harris has checked in for Isaac. The Grizzlies also with a sub. Baines checked in. 50 seconds left in the third quarter. Rose up top. Still no points. And the dunk by Jackson. Another assist in the career of D. Rose. And it's Anthony with a ball for the Orlando Magic. It's a three-point game. On the wing, Suggs. And up the court come the Grizzlies on the break. And that one falls for Rose. You know, it's great to see Rose out there. After all those injuries, Derek still has a passion for the game. Eight second difference between the shot clock and game clock. <laughs> and plays like that one can make the difference in a close game. And it definitely got the bench on their feet too. And you can feel the jolt of energy that he sent through his team. That is a huge boost in a tight game like this. There's 10 seconds left in the third quarter. Five to shoot. Inside, deflects the pass. And time stolen out, by out. Clark. Memphis calls timeout. Here's Rose. No good on the buzzer beater. Timeout called. Memphis. After a quick break, we're coming right back. And it's time now to bring you our State Farm assist to the game. You talk about painting a magnificent picture with that dime. Just a great decision and a perfect delivery. A lot of times a spectacular pass is more impressive than a spectacular shot. This is one of those times. And it's been a very competitive game so far as we get rolling here in quarter number four. On the court for Memphis to start the fourth. Moran and Bain in the backcourt together. Marcus Smart out there with Brandon Clark. And it's Jackson in at the center position. Yeah, the relentless pursuit of points from Paolo Bancaro. The first free throw is good. Isaac, he's checked in for Orlando. And Bancaro drops them both. Memphis trailing here. And so they choose to intentionally foul. Now a timeout called by Orlando. Gives us a chance to catch up with Allie LaForce. Hi, guys. Well, Jamal Mosley was just reviewing the plan with his team. He applauded their shooting and their shot selection, saying we're taking the right threes, not forcing anything. Keep doing that, and they'll continue to fall. Makes the game easy, doesn't it? Okay, thanks, Allie. Moran, pass to Smart. And Smart goes up strong at the rim. Good work inside from Smart. It's clear how confident he is close to the rim. Anthony finds Ben Carroll. Back to Anthony. Clark against Wagner. Just five on the clock. Great open look there. And the Magic lead by three. And far from the best shot. But all that matters is the end result. Somehow he sinks it. And the call will be against Jonathan Isaac. That's his third foul of the game. Moran against Isaac. Smart, a screen on Isaac. Here's Moran. And the shot counts. He's fouled, and it's a chance for a three-point play. All right, guys, let's get your take on the scoring breakdown for the Magic. Look, they're getting good looks inside. It's been a point of emphasis all night long, but I love this hard-nosed attitude of this team. Yeah, another thing you notice are all the assists. The ball just has energy, and everyone is getting involved. Anthony, the pass to Ben Carroll. Ben Carroll hammers it home. 
And, and everything Dan Curry does is with aggression. Memphis has gone four or five from outside the arc in this one. Morant looking around. Pass to Bain. And there's a pick. Throws it up high. And then Morant with the dunk. A beautiful setup on the alley-oop. Great catch. Great flush. Wagner for three. And the rebound goes to the Grizzlies. We're about two minutes into the fourth here. Here's Jackson. Outside for Moran. To take the lead. Oh, Moran takes the contact and it still goes. Wow. Welcoming any physicality on his way up. Morant enjoys that type of challenge. And the dunk by Isaac. They're going at it on offense. Neither team backing down. Man, this has been a fun one, but look, who doesn't love a high scoring game? Oh, there's Morant with the slam. Get this man the ball, and he will make something happen. Morant rises to the occasion. Man. Here's Suggs, defended by Smart. Good work there as it goes. Putting this team on his back. I love seeing Suggs take charge like this. Moran against Isaac. Aggressive take from Moran. Back to Clark. Pass to Bain. Six to shoot. And it's Cole Anthony with a foul. That's his third foul so far. We've got a minute 48 left in the game. The great point guards keep their eyes up on the court. Young players should watch how smart goes about this man's business. Wagner with a screen on paint. Three-pointer Anthony. Hey, in six attempts, he's made five. Talk about efficiency. Neither team able to build the lead and sustain it. After six lead changes, it feels like it could come down to one big play. Morant with it. Wagner picks him up to the middle. And the dunk by Jackson. Won't shy away from the big moment. No hesitation from Jackson Jr. on that shot. Anthony outside. <laughs> He drops the first one, and that ties this game up. And so he's good on both free throws, and that gives him a lead. Huge free throws right there. He's able to put them on top of those makes. Outside Morant. And again, it's Memphis with a three. You expect he's going to find a way to pull through in the clutch. Here's Anthony. Oh, and he got fouled. And with this game coming down to the wire, they're quick to use their coach's challenge. Asking for a review. This could be a big call. People were worried that this was slow. The NBA was smart to adopt this challenge policy in 2019. You know, one thing this does for a coach is let his players know he's got their back. The ruling on the floor is confirmed. And they've made their decision. The call will stand. And as much as it hurts to lose a challenge, I think Coach would challenge that call again if he could. He really disagreed with the foul, and he's still peed. He gets the first, and that narrows the gap to one. And that's good as he hits both shots. Cool and collected, making them count under pressure. And it's Morant with the ball for the Grizzlies. 56 seconds left to the fourth quarter here. <laughs> Great to see guys who don't back down under pressure. He knew what they needed here and was determined to deliver. To the paint. Here's Ben Carroll. Count it! A huge shot to tie it up! And stepping up when it's clutch time. That's a very mature play by the young Ben Carroll. Here's Moran. Count it! Massive points from Moran. Willing to take the big shots. And the game isn't over yet, but they have to move quickly. Yeah, they need to focus on scoring every possession and not turning over the ball. Here's Ben Carroll. Yes! And tie game! Huge basket right there! And 
Here's Moran. Smart, a screen on Isaac. Here's Moran. Oh, he missed it! Time called here. The Magic decide to talk it over. Here's Anthony. Oh, he got it! He got it! That's just smart basketball right there. Finding a way to get a high percentage shot on offense. Now a timeout called by Memphis. Guys, your thoughts? Uh, they're in a tough spot. Barely enough time to run the catch and shoot. This would tie it.
athletic in the NBA. And I don't know if it'll be a track meet, but it will be an up-tempo game. And that's the only way these teams know how to play. And now the opening lineup for Boston. Out in the front court along with Tatum. Derek White is out there with Holiday. And it's Porzingis in at the five, roaming the paint. I don't know who's going to get up for that as Porzingis skies for the dunk. And so it's the Celtics getting on the board first. And Simons wide open. He'll fire. Drains it from beyond the arc. You can't just stop when there's a pick set up. Got to fight over it as a defender. That's one that the coaches will watch tomorrow with that player. You hate to see him give up in that situation. Let's the three fly. And again, it's the Trailblazers from deep. That's a good find from Aiton, understanding the defensive scheme. And he just waited for his teammate to be open. Here's Tatum. And the dunk by Tatum. Wow, look at how quick he flashes to the rim there for the finish. In the 2016 and 17 draft, PA Boston ended up with the third pick overall both of those years. And they nailed those picks, getting Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum back to back, setting up their franchise for years. Now here's Porzingis, and there's the call on DeAndre Ayton. That's his first foul. And you can see he just didn't get squared up with his feet. Tatum with a screen on Grant. Brown, and Brown throws it down hard. And Brown is so aggressive, a masterful penetrator who abuses defenders on the drive. Aiton a screen on Holiday. And the pass to Aiton. Here's Sharp. Fires the three. And the Trailblazers, another three. And he's not going to miss that sort of an opportunity from deep. Over in the corner, Brown. White setting the pick for Brown. Out to Porzingis. Launches it. Cranes the three-pointer. Porzingis has got five points so far. Porzingis can knock him down from out there. He's just looking for some consistency. Here's Sharp. And again, it's the Trailblazers from deep. Both teams running perimeter-oriented plays that are working. Well, both of them looking towards the three-point line. And I like to see that, especially when the results are made buckets. Now, here's Tatum. Here's Persingas. Rebounded by DeAndre Ayton. Trailblazers leading by five. Grant with a screen on Holland. Simons finds Grant. Now Ayton. Good, and Grant gets the assist. Hayden showing he could be a problem on other spots on the floor, not just the post. And Brent, we know one guy who would have been valuable in any era, DeAndre Ayton. Yeah, with that size, he's got that old school drawback to the post, physical center uh, type of physique, but he works mostly on the block and doesn't create a lot down there. Each year he's trying to add a little bit more to his repertoire. And that's simply Tatum making the hustle play, wanting it more than the opposition. Aiton, the pass to Thibel. Aiton, a screen on White. Back to Aiton. And Aiton throws it down. Oh, I love that dish down low. And so White will bring it up for the Celtics. Seven-point differential. It's Brown. Oh, 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 much. Too much. And back. And what amazing athleticism from Brown putting on a show out there with slams like that. Grant sets a screen for Simon. Again, the trail goes to score. Well, he is looking confident. Love how they're using him so far. Yeah, right now, I don't see any let up. I think he's going to just keep putting his foot on that gas pedal. And the shot goes in from Chris Dapps, Porzingis. Ready to shoot, Porzingis fires. Simons surveying the D. Inside, here Sharp shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. First, personal. It goes on Jason Tatum. First, and really the defense fouling there to, to prevent the layup, but that's exactly what you need to do. And that one misses. 
Hey, Brent, when you look at Shaden Sharp, he has shown flashes of being a great offensive player, hasn't he? Uh, he's got all the tools, Kevin, to be a superstar. His development is going to take some time. He essentially went from high school straight to the NBA after redshirting one year in college and not playing one minute. And how about that show of confidence from Tatum? He really excels at playing above the rim and taking that one home. Just shocking the defense here. They couldn't keep up with Simon's nimbleness. Just two seconds between shot clock and game clock. Pass to Holiday. White setting the pick for Holiday. Goes up and lays it nice and easy. Well, you're kind of asking for it. Drew Holiday gets in that close. He's probably scoring. Aiton with it. Shoots over White. And he was able to put it up in time, but doesn't fall. What a performance from Anthony Simon. And getting going again here in the second quarter. Fairly close game so far. And a chance to catch up on some numbers here. Scoring breakdown for Portland. Well, they haven't wasted any time getting into a groove from deep. Putting up and hitting a healthy amount of three-pointers thus far. Well, not only that, but you love how unselfish they've been to start this game. That's going to get all the guys in a great flow and feeling good. So moving that ball around and scoring off assists, that's a nice way to play. In the small and power forwards, it's Thibault and Grant. Sharp out there with Anthony Simons. And it's Aiton in at the center, filling out the middle. That's the group in the game for the Trailblazers. Now here's Porzingis. He's got eight. Shot clock at three. Brown inside the line. And there are the Celtics with another basket. Well, that, that's one way he can finish, but far from the only way he gets it done. He's got all kinds of tricks up his sleeve. Sharp, the pass to Grant. On the high post. Score of the basket. Nice shot after missing his first attempt. Good pass from the two-guard Sharp. Solid at finding his open man. White, wide open. He fired. No good with the triple. Trailblazers leading by six. Hey, GA, you went to back-to-back -back conference finals with Portland. What's it like playing here? I mean, this building is as loud as any in the NBA. The fans are tremendous, very loyal. I really enjoyed my time here in Rip City. So the Celtics called timeout. They're first. Celtics trail by eight. Outside Tatum. Kicks it to Brown. Pass to White. Six on the shot clock. He's now one for two with that bucket. And they keep hammering away at him inside, forcing the ball into the paint. Aiton a screen on Holland. Here's Simon. Austin grabs the miss. Very dangerous to leave a guy like that open. Lucky break there for the D. Brown against Grant. Brown kicks to White. The screen from Brown. From outside the arc. Good on that shot. And with that, the Trailblazer lead is cut down now to just three on the bucket from White. He's going to punish you if you leave him open. He's more than willing to take the open three when he's got it. Now, here's Simon. He's got 14. Aiton inside. Guarded by Holiday. And that one's good, Aiton. Aiton's got six points. Such a tremendous physical profile that Aiton has. He's getting it done down low. And let's head over to the sideline and catch up with David Aldridge. Thank you, Kevin. The Celtics are playing with a high level of motivation. All-star Jason Tatum says what we talk about before the game, halftime, is win by any cost, by any means. Figure it out, win the game, and build great habits along the way. Kevin? Still room to grow. David Banks and Boston has possession. Trailblazers knocking down the track. And that one, good. Nine points in the game so far. And one of the unwritten rules of team play, Brent, don't throw your teammate at grenade. 
What are those? Well, I got a lot of those in my years in Seattle, and I won't mention his name, but the initials were Gary Payton. Look, the shot clock's winding down. You're standing open, and the guard just gives it to you with 1.5 seconds to go, and you got to shoot the ball. So those are called live grenades, Kevin. Time called here. The Celtics decide to talk it over. Checked in for the Trailblazers. Malcolm Brogdon comes in for Shaden Sharp. Celtics trail by six. Holiday finds Brown. And finished off by Brown. Yeah, how about Drew Holiday? Unselfish, team first player. Love that from the guard position. Brogdon the pass to Simons. Brogdon with a screen for Simons. And there's Brogdon on the assist by Simons. Brogdon's got his first points in this one. Here's Brown, takes it inside. And just awesome speed from Brown, blasting off towards the bucket and slamming it down. Holiday against Simon. Ayton sets the pick for Brockman to the middle. And Ayton throws it down. Come on. Can you always depend on him or what? to lead you to the right place with that pass. Money. Brown outside. And a dunk by Brown. This is why Brown is one of the very best in our game. He's so good at getting into the flow. Simons against Holiday. Grant with a screen on Holiday. Simons. And the slam dunk by Simons. He just dangles from the bucket after sending that one through. And you can see which team has the swagger right now. Here's Brown. Drives to the hoop. The rebound by Brogdon. And here is Simon. Three-pointer. No good on the last second attempt there. And so it's Portland with their lead standing at six points here at the end of the quarter. They're playing a bruising game inside and it's working for them. We come back right after this. through this one plenty of basketball left in a game that's been fairly even so far one of the stories here and Bernie Simons getting it done today well we'll find out if they were able to find an, an answer for him over the break he was scoring with ease in that first half yeah just way too easy out there and I'm sure coach is going to make that a priority at halftime Starting off the second half, here's Joe Mazula's five. Orford and Porzingis are manning the post positions. Then it's Holiday. Then there's Jalen Brown. And it's Walsh in at the two. It feels... Oh! oh! And the acrobatic jam. Henderson showing the lead what he can do at the rim. Here's Walsh. He's guarded by Brogdon. Here's Horford. This is it to Walsh. It's hauled in by the Trailblazers. Henderson outside. Williams sets a screen for Henderson. He takes it in. You know, he rips it. Jams it right over Przingis. Wow! Going through the rim is really where Henderson excels. He'll take on any defender at any time. And he gets the whistle. And it looks like, yep, it's a coach's challenge on the personal foul. That triggers a replay review by the officials. And I think when it comes to some of the more difficult calls to make, Personal fouls can be tough. The action is so fast that it's really... The previous play is under review. Some technology. We've seen replay reviews so effectively, and involving the coaches by being able now to challenge like this is something a lot of people... After review, the ruling on the floor is overturned. And the announcement on the review is that the foul was called in air. 
so they have determined to overrule the original call. And guys, this is what it's all about, getting the call right. And I think in this case, the video review showed that while it was a tough call to make on the floor, they got it right with the review. Here's Walsh. Nothing on the board. And stolen by Murray. To the paint. There's Henderson. And then Henderson with the jam. And Henderson doesn't need any extra motivation to head straight for the rim. Now a timeout called by Boston. A different look now for Portland. Walker comes in for Grant. And Matisse Thibel subbed in for Murray. Tatum, he's checked in for the Celtics. White comes in for Jalen Brown. Now here's Tatum. Six points for him. And the dunk by... Tatum. And the ability to score in many ways when Tatum drives with force, get out of his way. It's good from Brogdon. On the is by Henderson. Brogdon's got the lead up to nine now for Portland. Outside, White. And stolen by Feibel. And we're just about two minutes into the second half now. Walker with a clean look. Knocks down the three ball. Walker's got himself on the board with three there. Boy, you have to be impressed with the offensive production. They have got it firing on all cylinders. I mean, this team is just dangerous. Right now, every shot that they're putting up feels like it's going in. Now here's White. Nine points in the game so far. Down to five on the shot clock. And the basket by Tatum. This is how refined Tatum's motion is. He needs so little setup time. So, Brent, with the end of the 2023 season, it saw the Blazers finishing 13th in the West. Yeah, Kevin, that's the second straight year that they've been in that 13th place. And certainly that's not the type of consistency this team is looking for. They're in between. They've got veteran players and young guys coming up. They've got to do something to feed one end of that, and we'll see what they do this year. Holiday, and that one, good. He's been accurate tonight. I think the best way for them to succeed is to get him more shots. Sounds simple, but it comes down to execution. And with an update from the sideline, let's check in with David Aldridge. Thank you, Kevin. Well, Scoot Henderson spent two years with the G League Ignite team after graduating a year early from high school. He said, it's my path since I was a kid. Competing at the highest level in the world has been my main goal. Becoming the youngest professional American basketball player is just icing on the cake. Kevin, for him, it's all about ODD. Overly determined to dominate. Back to you. <laughs> I love it. DA, thank you so much. So timeout called here. The first for Portland. A different look now for Portland. Andre Ayton's checked in for Robert Williams. Jeremy Grant comes in for Walker. And Shaden Sharp subbed in for Scoot Henderson. Here's Ayton. It's not going to go for him. Ice D from Porzingis. And White kicks to Tatum. Tatum gets it inside. Beautiful job closing the gap here. Let's see if they can sustain this run. Well, they've shown both effort and will to get back into this one, but can they finish this one off? Can't let up now. Well, that's the kind of passing right there that makes a difference, not just in that possession, but maybe on your play for the entire game. Now here's White. He's got nine. Good on the three-point shot. White's got 12 in the game. The adjustments they've made offensively they're putting guys in a position now to succeed. The possession's just way more efficient, I think, here tonight, taking smarter, better shots, moving the ball around. That's helped them to get back in the ballgame. And here is Grant, following the three-pointer by Jared White. Drills it from outside. Like seeing Grant knocking down threes, especially when it comes in the form of getting revenge. Here's Tatum. The rebound by Sharp. Trailblazers leading by six. Aiden in the corner. Grant outside. Back to Aiden. Brzingis against Grant. Driving inside. And it's tonight. 
They retain possession. And there's the shot clock violation. Couldn't get the shot off in time. And that kind of stifling effort on defense needs another look. And guys, that block could really help change the momentum of this game. And I'll call the Celtics. And as things present themselves throughout a game, teams have to adapt on the fly. And timeouts are a wonderful opportunity to just settle in and recollect the thoughts of your entire team. Not just the guys playing, but the entire team. And so it's the Portland Trailblazers with a six-point lead at the end of the quarter. Shoot the ball. Well, this has been a great contest so far, and I imagine the fourth quarter could have even more action in store for us. Austin with the ball. They trail by six. The wingman at Sharp and Thibault. Grant is out there with Aiton, and it's Simons in at the point guard. That's the group in the game for the Trailblazers. That's an excellent play call to free him up from the defense. Well, taking advantage of that opportunity, it does not get any more high percentage than that one. Grant with a screen on Holland. Simons finds Grant with the drive and the dunk by Grant. That's what he does when he drives to the hoop. Look out. Celtics trail by six. White drives in, and White with the stuff. Go into the rack with energy, and the D afraid to cut him off. Yeah, got to chalk that one up to some shaky defending. There's some ways to get your coach's attention, and that draws the coaching staff's ire. Grant the pass to Thibault. They get it back. Kicks it out to Grant. Porzingis with the block. Well, Porzingis, the height, the reach, just over time. games as entertaining as this one. No, this is about as high octane a game as you're going to find. Screen by Grant. Back to Simons. The pass to Aiton. Just five to shoot. That's another one for him. His fifth in just seven shots. DeAndre Aiton happy to shoot at that range. He stroke. Time call here. The Celtics decide to talk it over. And during this timeout, I'm sure they'll be hydrating themselves with Gatorade. All the effort out there on the floor. And these timeouts can be such a huge factor in getting a short rest and recharging the battery. Time now to turn to our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. David. Thanks, guys. During the break, listened in with Joe Mazzula and his team. Now, they've been happy with the way the team is shooting. He reminded players to keep taking those threes, that they've had some clean looks. That three goes in. It's always a welcome sight, guys. Okay, David, much appreciated. Simon from outside. In it goes for the eighth time in ten tries. They gave up a three at the other end. That's Simon's response. Celtics trail by four. Wide the pass to Brown. Down low, it's tipped and stolen by Eaton. To the inside, here's Grant and the dunk by Grant. Grant, one of those big guys that gets up off the ground like a guard. Love to see him throw it down. Porzingis with a screen on Grant. Tatum gets to Brown. Back to Tatum. The shot's good. Brown making the play. Assisted. Brown's got three assists now in this one. And you see the unselfishness right there. Brown wanting to keep his teammates involved. And it's Simons off the drive. And he can't jam it through. Two minutes in the game. Two minutes. Brown outside. One fifty-one left to play here in the fourth. No good that time. And Simons has got the ball here for the Portland Trailblazers. They've held a 12-point lead early. Got a piece of it. And stolen by Tatum. And here's the fast break. Back to Porzingis. The kick out to Tatum. Time call here. The Celtics decide to talk it over. They trail by four. 125 left in the game. They're out there, always working hard. 
25 left here in the fourth quarter. Tatum with a screen on Grant. Six to shoot. Out to Porzingis. From past the arc. Again, the miss by the Celtics. Definitely a situation you want to make sure you don't give him too good of a look. Here's Simon. And the slam dunk by Simon. And Simon saying, bring it on. I got this and more. Right the pass to Tatum. Now here's Brown. Tatum deciding where to go with it. Brown against Grant. Out to Porzingis. Let's it go from deep. It's good! What a beautiful shot to bring him to within three. Porzingis warning it and gets it. Now, here's Sean. He's holding by Brown. My goodness, he is such a great dunker. Greg, a high riser, no doubt about it. No time to waste on this possession. Time is not on their side right now. They're aware. Yes! It seems like Brown always has something cooking. And he shows up big when they need him most. Smart accurate passes, Greg, are really paying off for them at the moment. And also good off-ball movement. Everyone is paying attention and looking to create the best shot for the team. And it's Aiton missing. Time call here. The Celtics decide to talk it over. They're behind by three. Six seconds left in the fourth quarter of this one. Guys, what do you think? And if you can get a three, shoot it. Otherwise, get the quick two and a foul. Don't force something up. You got to be smart here. And that was almost a block.
Couple of teams that are all too familiar with one another going head to head. BA, they'll play four Chinas this year, and even that doesn't seem like enough because there is no love lost between these two franchises. It never seems to matter who's on the roster, there's just distaste for one another. Now, the opening lineup for the Los Angeles Clippers. On the perimeter, it's the talented duo of George and Kawhi. Daniel Tice is out there with PJ Tucker, and it's Harden in at the point. Now here's Harden. Kicks it to George. Leonard with a screen on Bain. Here's George. And count the basket. He was fouled, and he's going to the line for one more. You know, over his career, Paul George has racked up more than his fair share of accolades, Grant. Well, he's a fixture at All-Star Weekend, that's for sure. Now, he's made the all-defensive team more than a few times. He's had an outstanding career. Here's Morant. Nice start for him, sinking his first shot. Well, there's an unpredictability to his offensive game. He is always keeping the defense off balance. Leonard with a screen on Payne. Leonard outside. Back to George. Here's the pick. On the take. There's Tice with a three. Yes, and it's George picking up the assist. Daniel Tice has proven he's more than capable of giving an opportunity on the face-up game. Pretty jumper there. And just over a minute played here to start the game. Morant. Harden with the defensive effort. Never easy to stop this guy at the rim, but that is a beautiful contest right there. Pass to George. And Marcus Smart picks up the foul. That's his first foul of the game. Second team foul. Leonard against Williams. Just five to shoot. George drives in. And he drops in the layup off the glass. George has got five now. Paul George's ability to put the ball on the floor and drive it balances out his shooting. So important to have both. Outside Morant. And the officials will call the illegal screen here. You can get away with one once in a while. But it looked like he wasn't completely set on that pick. I don't think there's any question. There are so many rules that favor the offense these days. You've got to be able to equal things out when an illegal screen is set. Here's Harden. Wow, potent offense. It's been fun to watch. <laughs> Just aggressive and effective. Taking it right to the defense. Now here's George. Six-point game. Pass to Tucker. Back to George. Shot clock at six. Leonard passes to Tice. He hits it just before the shot clock expires. He's got five. Now, Kawhi Leonard understands when and where to deliver the ball to his teammates. Pretty play. This Clipper squad is quite the mix of players, Doris. Potentially the mix to make a run. I mean, certainly you need seasoned veterans that can still get it done and young guys who can contribute. They've got both of those things and incredible depth. For the Clippers, to me, it's about one thing. How healthy are your stars? Here's George. Tries again. Here's Leonard. And that's good. His first bucket of the game. Yeah, Kawhi Leonard is so opportunistic, and he has the length to create those second chances. To win the cold spell. Pass to Smart. Second chance effort. That basket is good. Off the assist from Jackson. And hitting from the mid-range here and early. I mean, really gives the defense just another thing to worry about. They're basically saying, you're going to have to guard us at every point on the floor tonight if you're going to have any chance. Harden with a bucket. They've controlled the paint so far. That's been the difference. I know it's early, but you have got to like the dominance down low. Right now, they are playing bully basketball. Good drive by Moran. And you can count it. He'll go to the line with a chance at a three-point play. Yeah, teams try to get physical with Moran, but he shows exceptional body control off the contact. And let's take a moment here to get your take, guys, on the scoring so far for the Clippers. 
In the early goings, their effort level has been exceptional. The speeding around the defense and opening up options with good penetration. And they've also done a really good job taking advantage of miscues. Their defense has been stifling in this one. Now here's George. He's got five. And the jam by George. How about the dribble drive ability of Paul George? The quick handles for a guy his size. Here's Morant. And then Morant with the jam! Leave it to Morant to shock the defense like this. I mean, just putting it on a string. Here's Harden. And Harden with the slam. Wow. I'll tell you, such an advantage having a playmaker who can get up to the rim and finish. Now that is what every team wants. Well, you love it. Fearless, aggressive, leaving no doubt whatsoever. Here's Morant. The Clippers getting their last shot to go. Down low. Out left to the wing. Memphis needs to get off a shot. Here's Jackson. Blocked! Always engaged on the defensive end. Daniel Tice with the excellent rejection. Two second difference between shot and game clock. Harden finds George. Back to Harden. The Clippers call timeout. the Clippers now. Nine point game. Shot clock at five. The three, George. And the Clippers hit again from the They're not wasting any time putting their stamp on this game. What a start. And they've been doing it largely at the offensive end. If the defense does not adjust, this could be a blowout. Paul George, he's feeling it tonight. He's been the driving force for the Los Angeles Clippers. He put together 10 points in the quarter. We'll be right back. If you're just tuning in, we've got a wide margin on the scoreboard, but plenty of time left for a comeback. And let's quickly break down the game we've seen from the Clippers guys. Well, coming into tonight, maybe you thought they were going to settle for perimeter jump shots. <laughs> nope, that's not the case. Uh, they've certainly made the commitment to pounding the basketball into the painted area, and boy, is it paying dividends. Moran and Bain in the backcourt together. Then it's Jackson. Then there's Marcus Smart. And it's Williams in at the four-man position. That's the lineup out there for the Grizzlies. Outside Moran. And for some reason, he decided to foul there. Yeah, B.A., that's an odd move. Maybe there's something else behind it. I mean, I'm just not sure what he was thinking right there. I mean, he needs to get his head in the game. From deep, Bain. And again, it's the Grizzly from deep. We always see trends come and go in the NBA, Grant. It seems like in the current era, the pick and roll is the go-to offensive set. Oh, no question, B.A. To be competitive these days, you have to be able to run the pick and roll very, very well. And that's why lead guard play is so important right now in the league. Tice finds George. And the jam by George. You've allowed Paul George to lock in and get his rhythm. Now you better start to stop him. Morant surveying the floor. The three. And Tucker pulls it down. And here's George. He'll bring it up for Los Angeles. They held a 12-point lead earlier. 
And just about a minute and a half has passed here in the second quarter. Kawhi finishes inside. So good at the rim. What a slick look by Paul George. Defense expecting him to shoot, but he decides otherwise. And what an aggressive move to the rim. He's really trying to fire up his teammates right now. Boy, it's not hard to feel inspired after a teammate makes that kind of finish. Where was the defense? No help. You can't afford to give up these kinds of buckets. And finished off by Tice. Uh, Daniel Tice up high to finish that shot. Nicely done. There's Jackson with the three. No good. And you just can't afford to give up that kind of look very often. Tice passes to George. Leonard with a screen on Bain. Let's the three fly. Can't get it to fall. Now five of seven. Yeah, and the defense has really got to tighten up on him. I mean, he's just too dangerous from the three-point line. That pass was about the location. Puts it perfectly into the hands of his teammate. Second quarter play. Almost three minutes gone here. Here's George. And the jam by George. You see an opportunity if you're Paul George, say the athleticism is still a part of who I am. Memphis has gone one for three from downtown here in the second. Williams with the screen. Morant, the pass to Williams. And a great assist by Morant as that one goes. Williams has got his first bucket in this one. When they get their opportunity to punch it inside, they don't hesitate. Tice, a screen on Bain. Back to Leonard. George outside. To the inside. Six to shoot. Tice. And finished off by Tice. You simply have to respect the passing ability of Paul George. His ability to read and react and make the right choice. So good. Jackson can't get it to go. The Clippers have gotten five of their first six attempts to fall in the second. George's shot is good. There's a minute 17 left to play in the first half. Jackson, the screen. Morant, the pass to Jackson. Morant against Leonard. George with a steal. Drives to the hoop. Pass to Leonard. Clock at six. And the Clippers again with a bucket. Well, the mid-range is Kawhi's bread and butter. This guy can get to his spots and take whatever he wants. Moran against Leonard. Moran elevates at the rim. Wow. Always fun to see point guards who can elevate above the rim like that. Oh, a strong mindset and even stronger finish. Boy, it's incredible how much explosive scoring ability can come from the lead guard position. That is a big-time play. And just totally relentless, only increasing the intensity level. One thing I enjoy is watching... Oh, oh throw it look down! Out. Can you say wow. elevation? Oh, putting on a show for the fans. Orant's skills making it look like a circus in here. Harden against Bain. Leonard with a screen on Bain. And Harden with the slam. And taking a look at this first half, they've just shown better shot selection. And I think, obviously, we see the execution and the willingness to make the next pass so important. That jumper is pure. Jackson with great touch for a big man. Set him up and let him knock him down. And that'll do it for the first half of play. The Clippers on top. They lead by 13. Well, now a minute to check in with Allie LaForce. She's courtside. Hey, Allie. Thanks, guys. Alongside Ty Lu and Coach, what's the folk? Thank you, Allie. Good stuff. We will be right back after this break for the beginning of the third quarter. the second half here a big comeback is needed for this game to be competitive and it probably has to happen quickly 
Paul George has been sensational. Yeah, he's kind of been the floor general for them tonight. A lot of assists for him. I don't know that you necessarily think of him as someone who's going to create for others, but boy, all night he's been willing to make the extra pass. And so in the game for Los Angeles, Westbrook and George manning the backcourt. P.J. Tucker is out there with Daniel Tice. And it's man in at the three, the small forward. Yeah, he's still showing flashes of that incredible athleticism. Rose is a force attacking the lane. Westbrook against Bain. Westbrook outside. Tice, a screen on Bain. Westbrook with it. Jackson in his pocket. And finished off by Tice. Well, there's a connection that Daniel Tice has with his teammates. Vertical threat at the rim. Yes, I am. Pass to Bain. The shot is good, and the assist by Rose. Bain's got 12 points. Probably a play they drew up in the locker room at half. Well, there is nothing better than catching a rhythm as early as possible. And boy, that's a terrific... Start right there. And he just driving the stake in him there. He's a guy who just never lets up. Well, you love that he wants to wear out the defense. What a catalyst for his team. Incredible. <laughs> the big man moves. Jackson Jr. with the nice conversion off the drive. Bain against Westbrook. Tice is green on Bain. Pass to Tice. And here's George. 4-3. Mark with the defensive effort. And now the Grizzlies on the run. Bain with it. Picked up by Tucker. Bain, the pass to Williams. And Williams punches it home. Flying in with the one-hand slam. That right there was a statement finish. Westbrook against Bain. Westbrook outside. There's the drive. Tice outside from deep three-point range. They get it again. Here's Tucker. Uses the glass on the layup. And the Clippers lead by 13. Oh, if you don't put a body on Tucker, he will find a way to burn you on the offensive glass. 18 feet out. Williams misses. The Clippers have gone four of six from the floor in this third quarter. Here's Westbrook. And it's stolen by Rhodes. Left side Bain. And the Grizzlies pushing it up now. Two minutes remaining in the third. Two minutes. 157 left in the third. George against Rose. Let's it fly. Five on the clock. From deep pain. Timeout called timeout, the timeout. Grizzlies. Protecting the rim has to be their top objective right now. And the question they're going to have to answer to me is, is it a problem with the scheme or is it a problem with matchups? Changes here for the Grizzlies. Clark is checked in for Jackson. Williams comes in for Williams. And it's Ja Morant in for Desmond Bain. Harden, he's checked in for Los Angeles. A minute 42 left in the third quarter. Westbrook with a screen on Morant. Harden drives in, and Harden with the slam. Well, with that frame. That power, James Harden leaves no doubt. And so Moran will bring it up for the Memphis Grizzlies. Down by 15. Oh, there's Moran with the slam. Ooh, bouncy. 
seat. That should give him a nice lift. Good <laughs> timing. They needed that one. Well, sometimes it's about taking it into your own hands. That kind of individual play could spark his group. The Clippers call timeout. Plumlee's checked in for Los Angeles. Kawhi Leonard comes in for man. 119 left in the third quarter. Harden against Moran. Harden the pass to Plumley. Out of bounds. It'll be Memphis's ball. Here's Moran. 13 points in the game. Barry from 15 feet out. Moran's got four points in the quarter. Once Ja Morant gets rolling, there is no stopping him. Ja is feeling it tonight. Harden against Moran. Plumlee a screen. Here's Harden. There's the drive. Now that's how you capitalize on a screen. Yeah, good positioning, too. Gave him a clear path to the hoop. Where was the defense? No fighting through the pick. No rotation. My goodness. Morant, the pass to Williams. Knocks it down from distance. Williams has gotten himself going with a triple. His first basket of the game. Nine seconds separating the shot clock and game clock. Inside. Here's Leonard. And he was fouled in the act of shoot. And they want a second opinion on that call. The signal for the coach's challenge has been made. And even with the coach's challenge in place, we've seen so many of these personal foul calls still just... There's going to be a gray area in a lot of these calls. But at least we have the option to take a second look. So the officials can be sure they get it right. Zubats, he's checked in for Los Angeles. After the review, the ruling on the floor is overturned. So they see clear evidence of a bad call, and they're going to overturn it. Probably the right decision. And give credit to the officials for recognizing the mistake and correcting it. Nobody likes to say they got it wrong, but they fixed it in a hurry. Clark with a screen on Leonard. Morant using his speed. That one falls. 8 of 10 and scoring with confidence. Because of his ability to elevate and make adjustments in air, Morant has no trouble scoring inside. Time called here. Los Angeles decides to talk it over. So both teams changing it up here. 12 seconds left in the third quarter. Harden finds George. Back to Harden. Four seconds left. It's good. Set up beautifully by George. George has got six assists in the game. Timeout time call. Time out. Memphis. From deep pain. And that's not going to go. And so it's the Los Angeles Clippers. Now holding a 12-point lead at quarter's end. How about the way they've attacked the paint? This throwback approach is paying off. Time for a quick break, then back to the action. All right, let's take a look at our assist of the game presented by State Farm. You know, I'm kind of stoked this was a choice because I love this pass. A remarkable find. He put his court vision on full display. Well, making the game easy for your teammates. All about putting them in a position to score. That's pretty. 
Well, there may not be a lot of drama down the stretch as we head into the fourth quarter. Stranger things have happened. We've got Brandon Clark. Derrick Rose is out there with Desmond Bain. Then there's Marcus Smart, and it's Williams in at the power forward position. That's the lineup in the game for Memphis. Well, it's Harden continuing to evolve as a playmaker. This guy, including his teammates, making them feel good. Clark with a screen on George. On the wing, Bain. George defending. Timeout call. Memphis. Paul George with a strong contribution so far in this one. Boy, he's really had their number. They need to make some kind of adjustment during this timeout. And the Grizzlies with some changes. Jaron Jackson, he's checked in for Clark. Williams comes in for Williams. And it's Ja Morant in for Rose. Let's go now to the sideline and catch up with Allie LaForce. Hey guys, I had a chance to find out what Taylor Jenkins was discussing with his players. And he was adamant that they need to tighten up their D. That lack of communication at that end has led to breakdowns, wide open shooters, and easy buckets. He sounded pretty frustrated, guys. Great work, Allie. Thanks. Tucker with a screen on Williams. And George with the jam. Uh, how good is Paul George at getting separation? He uses the screen perfectly and sticks it to the defense. In the paint, Moran puts it in. And despite the size mismatch, getting a little aggressive down there in the paint. Some guys just relish the challenge. Find a way, and he does. And the jam by George. Well, primarily known as a scorer, Kawhi Leonard using his playmaking skills to set up his teammates there. George against Bain. And how about that? Eight for nine now. He's bringing a lot of energy to this offense, not letting the scoreboard discourage him right now. And to me, he's just playing smart, efficient basketball, really helping his team hang around this one. Here's George. And George with the jam. Oh, nice. One-handed jam there, B.A. Hey, little exclamation point. The Grizzlies have got all four shots to go in this final quarter. And Kawhi Leonard gets the whistle that time. That'll be a second foul of the game. To the paint. Here's Moran. And then Moran with the dunk! And you know you're always going to see some highlights when Moran is on the court. I mean, he loves to use that incredible 44-inch vertical. Outside Harden from the arc. Oh, he's on fire. Eight for eight and just looking relentless. And trying to put the game away, he's been nailed all evening. And he hasn't forced much tonight. I love the efficiency he's giving to them. Morant, no good. They've got time on their side here, Grant. And if they're smart, they'll milk the clock a little. Leonard outside. Six on the shot clock. Tucker, the pass to George. Leonard outside. Over Williams. Leonard can't get it to go. And this is exactly what you have to do to stop him. That was a tremendous contest, forcing the miss. And the basket by Bain. I tell you, he's making everything he looks at tonight. He should be their number one option on every possession. And then Harden with the jam. And James Harden simply stated is putting it to the defense right now. Somebody has got to step up and get the ball out of his hands. The drive by Moran. No, stop it in there. Well, maybe a little bit of a use it or lose it situation with the coach's challenge. Probably won't make a difference to the outcome, but they still want to review the call. And even with the coach's challenge in place, we've seen so many of these personal foul calls still. Once up. Previous play is under Doubt there's going to be a gray area in a lot of these calls. But at least we have the option to take a second look so the officials can be sure they get it right. After the review, the ruling on the floor is overturned. So they see clear evidence of a bad call, and they're going to overturn it. Probably the right decision. And give credit to the officials for recognizing the mistake and correcting it. 
Nobody likes to say they got it wrong, but they fixed it in a hurry. Harden with it. Jackson in his pocket. And he got the whistle on the, well, maybe a little bit of a use it or lose it situation with the coach's challenge. Probably won't make a difference to the outcome, but they still want to review the call. People were worried that this was part the previous two shots. Every game, the NBA was smart to adopt this challenge policy in 2019. You know, one thing this does for a coach is let his players know he's got their back. If they're adamant that the call was wrong, he'll back. The ruling on the floor stands. And they've made their decision. The call will stand. And as much as it hurts to lose a challenge, I think Coach would challenge that call again if he could. He really disagreed with the foul, and he still peed. First free throw is good. Harden hits them both. Over three and a half minutes through the final quarter now. Moran against Leonard. There's a screen. The teardrop. Kawhi Leonard comes up with a rebound. Los Angeles has got four of seven threes to go so far in this game. And there's no way this margin gets closed down. Great execution of a game plan and a nice win here for the Clippers. Absolute fireworks display. High scoring game. They were unstoppable, Grant. Yeah, just relentless from start to finish. And the pace was furious. Ultimately, they wore out the other team. And when you look at the game, the one thing that helped fuel this team to victory was the efficiency for Paul George. We look forward to playing with someone who doesn't just move the ball, but moves it with a purpose. There's 38 seconds left in the fourth. Tice, a screen on Payne. Pass to Tice. Here's Harden. Crafty move. And Harden with the slam. You got to give them respect. They're doing everything they can to close this out. Well, just terrific teamwork. Each guy doing his part. You love what you're seeing from them tonight. Leonard against Moran. Now Jackson. From deep. And again, it's Memphis with a three. Yeah, Moran showing a bit of confidence knocking down that three. Outside Harden.
Front court matchup. A lot of talent in the low post here. And, you know, a lot of times that means it'll come down to the rebounding battle. Whoever controls the boards will have a big leg up in the physical and mental aspect of this game. Now the starting group for Orlando. The guard pair for them, Anthony and Son. Isaac in the front court along with Wagner. And it's Ben Caro in at the five, roaming the paint. Man, I love how strong Tatum goes to the rack. You give him room to get up, He's banging that thing. And there's Suggs on the assist by Isaac. And once he got to the 10, I think he was surprised to find himself that wide open. Well, this early, they should be showing a lot more energy on defense. It's not there. And it's Jonathan Isaac with the foul. That's his first foul. Personal foul. First team foul. Isaac against Tatum. Chalk up two there. Tell you what, Tatum using his length for positioning inside, able to operate well in the paint. No doubt, Greg, Jason Tatum is an all-NBA player, and this guy continues to improve. And JT's scoring average increasing in each of his first five seasons. I, I just love how he gets to the line more, being more aggressive. Tatum. Oh, oh what a finish! Oh, Turning on the afterburners on the drive. Good to see Anthony using his athleticism in these situations. White with it. Picked up by Van Carroll. And the foul is called. He intentionally grabbed him there for some reason. I don't know. Kevin, Kevin, all I can think of is that he's trying to slow the game down a little bit. That, right. That's a stretch, though. Definitely a strange move on his part. Here's Persingas. And contact on folks. The coach's challenge has been initiated for a personal foul. Close game like this, and he thought it wasn't a good call. And this is the time now where the officials can review in closer detail. Getting a different angle can sometimes make it a lot easier to determine. Indeed, and the one thing with replay review is that when you see... After the review, the ruling on the floor is overturned which these players are moving at and how fast the action really is and, and how hard it can be sometimes, you know, Greg, to, to make the right call. And the announcement on the review is that the foul was called in air. So they have determined to overrule the original call. And guys, this is what it's all about, getting the call right. And I think in this case, the video review showed that while it was a tough call to make on the floor, they got it right with the review. Suns score the basket his second of two attempts really easy to appreciate Isaac I mean a solid teammate who's always ready to share the sugar here's Holiday out to White Suggs with the steal and now the fast break Anthony with the ball Wagner wide open plenty of room to knock down the shot just reliable guys he's just always trying to make the right play here's white and it's sent back by isaac you know he's gifted with incredible length isaac is almost a footer seven feet that is so he should pile up the block shots clock at four the celtics need to get a shot off tatum that's for two almost but it rolls out yeah but the hand in the face it's critical that you contest his shots every time down the floor. and the whistle blows as the and here we go coach's challenge happening right now this one in regards to the personal foul seeing if that was the right call and i think when it comes line for one it's gonna be tough the action is so fast that it's really tough to catch everything in real time the wonders of technology we've seen re after the review the ruling on the floor is overturned this is something a lot of people have been hoping for the and the announcement on the review is that the foul was called in air so they have determined to overrule the original call and guys this is what it's all about getting the call right and i think in this case the video review showed that while it was a tough call to make on the floor they got it right with the review Round kicks to tatum will it go and slam dunk by tatum the athletic prowess of tatum on full display what a move to the bucket 
Here's Doug. Sinks the triple. Suggs has got seven. Boy, he is looking confident. Love how they're using him so far. And you know what? They're going to keep using him. I mean, he'll be the centerpiece of their offense today. You can bank on that. And finished off by Brown. Brown is so creative at picking apart the defense with his ball hand. you got to love how clever he is with the ball. And stolen by White. Here's Tatum. And the dunk by Tatum. And that's such good work to make this a one possession game. Terrific steal to get it all started. And Carroll passes to Anthony. Back to Van Carroll. Puts the move on. That's in there. Anthony with the assist. A capable floor general. I love watching Anthony set up his teammates. And Clark, much like his pops, Cole Anthony has proven to be a skilled ball handler. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with that. Perhaps it runs in the DNA, huh? He definitely has some strong instincts out there, and I know he got a little bit of that from you, Greg. And he does his part to help others find shots when he's not scoring himself. And that was a little bit of a range check for him. You know, guys, I think he's got confidence to shoot it from anywhere, but he could have gotten a better one than that. And they don't want to get in a habit of giving him open looks from three. First quarter still, but not who you want to leave open. Isaac with the steal. About seven seconds separating the shot and game clock. Got that one up quick. He's got five. Their play on both ends has been superb. We, we'll see if they can maintain the momentum. And, you know, nothing like getting an opponent on the ropes early. You love that if you're on that side of the scoreboard. And they are landing some... Oh! oh, oh, oh my goodness! Man! <laughs> Brown with that amazing athleticism putting on a show out there with jams like that. Anthony, the pass to Isaac. Stolen by Holiday. That shot off. Keelan Suggs has been leading the charge for the Magic. He got... And if you're just tuning in, we've got a wide margin on the scoreboard, but uh, plenty of time left for a comeback. And a moment here to take a look at the scoring breakdown for the Magic. They've really been pushing that thing in the open floor. And so far, the opposition's not been able to slow them down at all. And they're making their own luck with how hard they're playing. Forcing turnovers and turning that into offense. And so in the game for the matchup, the guard pair for them, Anthony and Suggs. Isaac in the front court along with Wagner. And it's Ben Caro in at the foul. And so they choose to intentionally foul. Yeah, not time sure out, what out. that was about. I mean, talk about a brain cramp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, completely a brain fade. I don't know time where out, that came out. from. Just lost sense of time and the situation. Right. Time call here. The Magic decide to talk it over. Don't just say, GA, the league has a problem when it's punishing the retaliators and not the instigators. Do they have a point? Kevin, I think so. But for any scuffle, it's worth asking who started it. And that's what we do in life normally, right? Just four to shoot. A wide open look here for Holiday. The shot's good. Brown making the play. Holiday's got himself going with the triple, his first basket of the game. Suggs kicks to Isaac. Wagner outside. Anthony on the wing. Back to Wagner. Rebounded by the Celtics. Outside, Brzingis. And he's going to get whistled for that foul, G. That was intentional, but not exactly <laughs> logical. <laughs> How about pointless to foul there? I mean, I don't know where his head is, but it's not in the game. Porzingis sets the pick for White. Passes to Holiday. He kicks to Tatum. The dish to Brown. Shoots over Wagner. And hit the turnaround jumper. Boy, that's got to be terribly frustrating there. I mean, with the defense not hustling, and he still misses, boy, he wishes he had that one back. You've got to love his hustle, leaving the defense no time to react. And, you know, you're going to get those buckets, guys, when you're quick to get out on the break. Get that ball up the court as fast as you can. 
And the wait is now from our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. David, it's all yours. Take it away. Thank you, Kevin. Well, back in grade school, when Jason Tatum told folks his NBA goals, they'd often suggest a backup plan. And he said, I always... Oh, my goodness, Tatum! Wow! An athletic forward who dunks it with style. Showing off his dunking ability right there. Here's Anthony. Beats to Van Carroll. Shoots. Anthony gets it to go on the assist from Van Carroll. Anthony's got his second basket. Celtics trail by seven. Clark, in recent years, Orlando's been one of the league's bigger teams. Well, you can see clearly, Kevin, that the front office prioritizes length. Uh, you don't ever have to really worry about them playing small ball. Here's Van Carroll. Basket is good. He'll get a chance for one more at the line. Nice job by Van Carroll to get behind the defense on the break. As far as first overall picks go, Paolo Van Carroll definitely arrived with a bang in 2022. He sure did, Greg. I mean, he's the first rookie since LeBron James to record at least 25 points, five boards, and five assists in his debut game. And he continues to build on that en route to rookie of the year. Here's Tatum. That one is good again. He's six straight from the floor with the basket. Tatum clearly putting on the show in this one. Doing it all. Van Carroll with the screen. Anthony in the corner. Kicks to Suggs. And it's White with the rebound. And so White will bring it up for the Boston Celtics. Ball trailing here by eight. And now the first time out called here for Boston. Here we go, man. Substitutions for the Celtics. Al Buffer. Here in the second quarter, just under three and a half minutes played. They get a hand on it. And a bit of a battle here for the ball. The official signal is a jump ball here. Jump ball. Pass to Brown. Lock at six. And he drives. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness! Oh, yeah. What a play! Just awesome speed from Brown. Blasting off towards the bucket and slamming it down. And that one's good, Wagner. And I've been impressed with the unselfishness, but also getting guys the ball where they can do something with it. He is delivering a lot of room service times tonight. One sweet one after another. On the wing, Brown. He's covered by Isaac. On the wing, Holiday. Back to Porzingis. And he hits it just before the shot clock expires. Well, it appears to me that pressure doesn't get to Porzingis, guys. In fact, you could actually make a case that makes him sharper and more focused. Here's Anthony. And he uses the glass on the way. And that's now six points for Cole Anthony. Yeah, I love the communication and the chemistry between those teammates. He hits Brown with the drive, and then Brown with the dunk. Brown really is at his best when he takes it inside. I mean, the defense has no idea what to do with it. Time call here. The Magic decide to talk it over. So a new group on the floor for Orlando. Here are the Magic now. They've led by as many as 11 points. Here's Fultz. A rim-rattling two-handed jam. Boy, moving the ball with purpose there. Fultz has... Tremendous offensive potential, and we're seeing him put it all together now. Time called here. The Celtics decide to talk it over. Brown wide open. He fired. And that shot was up in time, but doesn't go in. 
And so it's the Orlando Magic. Ahead by nine as the quarter comes to a close. Their shooting has been the big key. Their percentage from the field so far has been terrific. And we've got more on 2K Sports coming your way after this break. so far we're halfway through the game we're seeing a tremendous game from Jalen Suggs he's done a fantastic job of finding open space to operate with within the first few quarters you know what it helped that they had a few guys with very hot hands on the perimeter too Horford and Porzingis are manning the post positions then it's Holiday then there's Brown and it's Walsh in at the two that's who's in the game for the Celtics some people see the Orlando Magic as a team, Clark, with a very high ceiling. How about you? Lots of potential there. No question about it, Kevin. And plenty of room for growth. The challenge is going to be corralling that and moving it in the right direction. You know, it could take longer than people expect or wanted to, but you got to be patient in this situation. Fultz finds Carter. It's Black in the corner. Back to Harris. And there are the Magic with another bucket. The inside game of Harris continues to get better. He's effective at finding spots inside to score from. Holiday attacking. And the dunk by Porzingis. When he's on the floor, offensive rebounding is always going to be a strength for him. Greg, he keeps so many possessions alive, doesn't he? And you know, those second chance opportunities can be game changing represents so much value to this team because of what he does. Knocks it loose. It's stolen by Fultz. Out of bounds, Boston takes possession. Celtics trail by six. Horford dishes to Brown. And there's the drive. And the dunk by Brown. We've come to expect plays like that from Brown. He won't waste any opportunity to throw it down. Here's Black. Rebound, Boston. Here's Walsh. Hasn't made one yet. Round the pass to Persingas. An intentional foul committed, but for what purpose, Greg? I'm not sure. A scene of confusion right uh -huh. there. I can't imagine why he thought it was a good idea to foul there. So a new group on the floor for Orlando. Now a timeout called by Boston. Tatum, he's checked in for the Celtics. Light comes in for Brown. And now around two minutes gone by in this half. Porzingis banked in off the glass. Porzingis has got four this quarter. Kristaps did not get thrown off by the contact. He's just too big and long. Too determined as well. Anthony, the pass to Wagner. And finished off by Wagner. Oh, an aggressive move and fantastic finish. Mm -hmm. Trying to send a message with that slam, I think. That's exactly how you send it. Two hands and down. And that's a great piece of work to get to the hoop there. Just tore the D to shreds. There's the pass to Wagner. Good ball movement here by the Magic. Here's Suggs. Driving in. And Suggs. Throws it down. So tough trying to slow down Suggs, especially when he gets it going because he's persistent and relentless. Holiday with it. He's got six. And it's sent back by Isaac. And it goes out of bounds. That one's off Holiday. Second half of play, and we're three minutes into the third here. And when we talk about the league's elite defenders, Drew Holiday is certainly up there. Yeah, that's for sure, Greg. I mean, I think it's a lot to do with how much pride he takes in playing defense. I mean, he's locked into shutting down whoever he's defending. He looks at it as a challenge, and I really appreciate and respect his hard-nosed approach. And Wagner drives in. That's in there. Anthony with the assist. Anthony's got six assists in the game. And here's White. He'll bring it up for the Celtics. 
six point game. Out left to the wing. Isaac against Tatum. Shot clock at six. Nice move. Rebounded by Isaac. That's not the type of opportunity he fails to convert very often. Back to Wagner. Gets the three-pointer to fall. And now it's a nine-point Orlando lead. Attacking right away. Once Wagner has the ball, he doesn't even think about it. Take it and go. Now a timeout called by Boston. Jalen Brown checked in for Boston. The Celtics have gotten five of eight shots to fall for them in the third quarter. A nice 62% for the field. White, good. White that time, feeling the separation. He was able to shoot that shot with Rip. And here's Anthony from the arc. And again, it's Orlando with the three. The real. Come at us, and we're coming right back at you. A little back and forth from long range. I love it. That's a terrific answer there. And Holiday kicks to Brown. Back to Holiday. Down low. And the dunk by Porzingis. Boy, that is some kind of heads-up basketball from Holiday. He does not sleep on the wide-open man and found him perfect. Wagner with a screen for Suggs. Got it. Good job in the low post. Suggs has got four points this quarter. And his stroke has been dead on from the outside. I mean, inside, outside. It just doesn't matter. And it's sent back by Isaac. to the wing. Got a piece of it. Here's Porzingis. Here he goes. And the dunk by Porzingis. Once Porzingis gets some momentum, just get out of the way. Isaac outside. Over Porzingis. And no luck with that time on the buzzer beater. And so it's the Orlando Magic heading to the bench with a seven-point lead as we wrap up and now let's go back to a play from earlier as we show you our State Farm assist of the game. And he, he may not be known as a pass-first guy playing out of the two-guard spot, but he shows here that he can dole out an assist or two when he needs to. That's right. I mean, that's not his primary duty, but when the situation calls for it, he can do it and does it well. The fourth quarter has arrived. So good to have you with us. And so in the game for the Magic... The guard pair for them, Anthony and Son. Isaac in the front court along with Wagner. And it's Van Caro in at the center, pulling out the middle. And yep, we thought we might see it. And the coach's challenge has been triggered on the personal foul call. And I think when it comes to some of the more difficult calls, fast that it's really tough to catch everything in real time. The wonders of technology. We've seen replay reviews so effectively. And and so the word is in. They've decided that the call stands as it was made on the floor. And you know, even if a coach still feels it's not the right call, you got to acknowledge the effort being put in to reviewing it. The double checking and the game continues on. It's time now to hear from our Hall of Fame reporter, David Aldridge. What's the latest, David? Thanks, guys. Listened in on what Joe Mazzulla told his team. Now, he begged his guys to get after it on the break. He said, let's keep up the tempo, guys. You know how dangerous we are on the break. Be confident with the ball. Take risks. Move it, guys. Thank you, David. An intentional foul committed, but for what purpose, time Greg? Out, out. I'm not sure. A sort of confusion right there. I can't imagine why he thought it was a good idea to foul there. Attention fans, now on the court is your fight squad. Mike finds Porzingis. The Celtics working the ball around now. Lock at six. Holiday up and in on the way. Packing some muscle on it. Holiday. Able to push that shot through. Bancaro against Tatum. Bucket is good. And the Magic lead by six. Able to get to the hoop with those nice handles, leading to an easy finish. White left side. Brown against Wagner. Pass to White. 
Tatum on the wing. He's covered by Isaac. Tatum no good. Magic leading by six. Pass to Wagner. Here's Isaac. And an intentional foul right there. First personal foul. Second team foul. A little over a minute and a half of the fourth quarter gone now. It's Anthony with the drive. Lost contact on the shot, and now a three-point play chance as he'll head to the line. Fighting to the finish. Cole Anthony gets his, and then some. And let's take a moment, guys, to get your take on the scoring so far for the Magic. Well, you know, they've been tremendous, I think, when it comes to sharing the basketball. You know, getting guys involved on the plays and creating offensive opportunities for everybody. Equal opportunity offense is fun to watch. And another area they've separated themselves has been their three-point shooting, making the defense pay for any airspace. Hits it from three-point range. You know, it's not his greatest strength. He's got a lot of different things that he's good at, but Suggs will hit the three if you give it to him. And finish off by Brown. You love how each side has risen to the challenge throughout this one. Hey, defense is taking a back burner. Secondary on the marquee, but who doesn't love a game like this? Let's go. I like offense. Taking matters into his own hands. Yeah, we didn't expect to see that kind of finish. And you know, guys, when your point guard is making explosive plays at the rim, I really do think it sets the tone for the rest of the team. He hits Brown with the drive. Yep, it counts. Brown can give you so many things on the court. Really a versatile team player. Orlando leading by seven. Here's Anthony. Wagner outside. Now, here's Suggs. Guarded by Holiday. And Suggs throws it down. Wagner, he'll find the wide open teammate more often than not. Heady player. And White kicks to Brown. And they call the foul, so a chance. At, and so the coach's challenge here comes into play. The coach protesting the personal foul call. And this is the time now where the official personal foul, second team foul, original personal foul. Getting a different angle can sometimes make it a lot easier to determine. Indeed, and the one thing with replay. Re the ruling on the floor is confirmed. Just the immense speed at which these players are moving. And how fast the action really is. And, and how hard it can be sometimes, you know, Greg, to, to make the right call. And so the word is in. They've decided that the call stands as it was made on the floor. And, you know, even if a coach still feels this wasn't the right call, you got to acknowledge the effort being put in to reviewing it. The double checking and the game continues on. Celtics trail by six. And that's out of bounds. Boston will retain possession. One thirty-two left to play in the final quarter. Screen by Porzingis. Brown dishes to White. Six on the shot clock. Porzingis gets to Holiday. For three, Anthony with the defensive effort. And here's Van Carroll. He'll bring it up for the Orlando Magic. They've led by as many as 11 points. And that one's good, Wagner. Wagner's got nine points here in the second half. The defense was there, but the concentration and focus from Wagner also there. Really good for Third personal foul. He drops the first one, and that narrows the gap to seven. At the line for two. And both free throws, good for White. And good, aggressive basketball on that trip. Drawing the foul, converting the free throws, and then also narrowing the gap. Orlando's gone, seven of 11 from deep tonight, using the three-pointer to their advantage. Oh, and a jam by Anthony. Late in the game, up big, they continue to attack. I don't think you want to get loose and sloppy or ease up, but it is time for them to start using that clock a bit. Back to Tatum. 
leaving the lane. Oh, and the jam by Tatum. And Tatum continues to evolve before our eyes, showing excellent leadership by knocking down these clutch shots. Mm. Seventeen seconds left in the fourth quarter. Wagner as Green on Holland. And here's Anthony from the arc. And it's White with the rebound. Brown finds Tatum. Yes! The playmaking of Brown continuing to evolve. Nice dime there. Wagner from long range. On the money. And so it's Orlando.
Excited, but as we've seen, anything can happen. Anything can definitely happen, B.A. And look, you have to understand that every guy in this league is talented. If you come in flat and those other guys are inspired, you can fall. But honestly, you shouldn't. It's all about handling your business. All right, let's check out the starting lineup for the Trailblazers. Matisse Thibel out there with Anthony Simons. Then it's DeAndre Ayton. Then it's Jeremy Grant. And it's Walker in at the four-man spot. Leonard for three. Drills it from deep. At the start of his career, no one thought Kawhi would end up being this good of a three-point shooter. He's a marksman. Pass to Ayton. Now Grant. Jacks up a three. Out to the right wing. Aiden, a screen on George. And here's Simons outside. They get it back. Outside for Grant. From outside the arc. And here's Simons. Launches it. Outside Walker. Pass to Simons. Walker, a screen on Tucker. Just three to shoot. Aiden in the high post. Over Tice. Aiden, no good. Clean look from mid-range. Coach will probably want to run that play again. Well, Smitty, Portland had that streak of eight straight playoff appearances. Now they've missed out two years in a row. It's a talented B.A. but frustrated group in Portland. But you know what? They'll be back. Harden can't hit. Got the ball where he wanted it, but then got swarmed. And Kawhi Leonard gets a whistle that time. That's his first foul. First team foul. Now here's Simons. And he's going to the line for... And in a game this close, they're going to challenge the call. Coach does not agree with it, and he wants them to take another look at the monitor. And even with the coach's challenge in place, we've seen so many of these personal foul calls still disputed even after the video. Previous play is under the calls but at least we have the option to take a second look so the officials can be sure they get it right the ruling on the floor stands and they've made their decision the call will stand and as much as it hurts to lose a challenge i think coach would challenge that call again if he could he really disagreed with the foul and he's still peeved Knocks down the first one. Well, they gave him the nickname Anferno. Anthony Simons can really take over a game. B.A., when he's hot, watch out. Lights out shooting the building, and he can slice up a D with the best of them. Now here's George. Leonard outside from behind the arc. And the Clippers hit again from deep. Love what Paul George is doing right there, spotting those wide open guys. Pass to Graham. The three. Count it. And that shot gets him in the books. He's one for three. Exchanging buckets from downtown. That's been a staple of tonight's game. Hey, players love competition. And the fans love it as well. George with it. And Walker picks him up defensively. Leonard with a screen on Tybal. Here's Harden. Gets it to go. That makes him two for three in this game. Yeah, getting it done inside. Harden proves he's more than just a perimeter player. There's Simons with a three. And again, it's Portland with a three. You don't want to let him get into a rhythm from out there. Here's Harden. And it's out of bounds. They say it was last touch by Harden. Careless turnover. You lose focus for even a moment in this league. That's the result. And in the first quarter, about three minutes played. Two minutes remaining in the first. Simons outside. 
And it's flushed down. A nice jam. Anthony Simon is more than capable of hammering it down, especially when the defense isn't guarding him tightly. Now here's George. Pass to Leonard. Back to George. To the middle. And the dunk by Leonard. Not many people can make the dunk look so smooth as Kawhi Leonard. Simons passes to Aiden. Outside for Grant. Oh, George with a steal. And here they come. Here's Harden. And then Harden with the jam. Oh, that's impactful defense right there. Finding a steal and instantly turning it into offense. Looking back to last season, Smitty, the Clippers were as busy as anyone at the trade deadline. Well, they came into the season with high hopes, B.A., but midway through, they saw the changes had to be made. It didn't translate to playoff success, but they gave it a shot. Here's George. Can't get it to drop. Even though he missed it, this is the exact play your offense is designed to produce. And here's Grant from the arc. It's rebounded by George. And he probably thought he was going to bury that one. There's 31 seconds left to play in the first. And he banks in the layup. It's almost too easy for Paul George inside. He gets right in close and converts. And it's Simons penetrating to the right side. Grant against Leonard. And there's the screen. Oh, and makes it with the kiss. Grant's got five points. Talented, driven. He puts constant pressure on your defense. Leonard with a screen on Grant. Got it off in time. Oh, it would have counted had it fallen, but it is offline. A nice first quarter of play. We've seen plenty of offense so And close game underway so far. We'll see if either of these teams can jump out ahead in this second quarter. And let's quickly break down the game we've seen from the Clippers guys. You know, they've been relentless in how they attack the paint. They came in looking to attack from the get-go, willing to be physical and setting the tone. On the perimeter, it's the talented duo of George and Kawhi. P.J. Tucker is out there with Daniel Tice, and it's Harden in at the one. That's the group for the Clippers starting the second. And that's an intentional foul. I mean, I'm just not sure what he was thinking right there. I mean, he needs to get his head in the game. Here's Harden. And he drives in. Chalk up two there. Give him eight. Wow, the vision of P.J. Tucker made that play possible. Simons passes to Graham. Grant, you had a terrific mid-range game. It feels like more players are going back to that now. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, B.A. The analytics say dunks and three-pointers. But that makes your offense almost just two-dimensional. In many cases, too predictable. You're seeing more and more players, particularly the elite ones, finding comfort in the mid-range. Now here's George. Launches a three. Portland grabs the miss. Ayton's got his seventh rebound here tonight. Thibel finds Simons. Tice against Grant. Beyond the arc. Hits the three-pointer. Grant's got eight. Dangerous from distance. Jeremy Grant has turned himself into a knockdown three-point shooter. Tice a screen on Grant. George drives in. Tice outside. Leonard outside. Going inside. Leonard just muscles his way in. Taking the hit. Kawhi Leonard. Great concentration. And for a guy who doesn't talk or emote much, Kawhi Leonard is a commanding presence. B.A., he reminds me a little of Tim Duncan. The way Leonard just puts his head down, goes to work, and leads by example. The score now all even. Walker's gotten himself on the board with a three there. This is the shot you want to get him. An open look from range. George passes to Tucker. 
George against Grant. Down low. Leonard. The claw. Too much for the D to handle. The claw making it look so easy right now. He's demanding the ball, and you see why. And we're now a little over two and a half minutes into the second. All right, guys, let's get your take on the hustle stats for the Clippers. For me, they're turning defense into offense, creating opportunities by taking the ball away. Great effort. And not only that, you like how they're turning defense into offense, forcing turnovers and capitalizing. Murray's checked in for Portland. Brogdon comes in for Simons. Time called here. Los Angeles decides to talk it over. So for the Clippers, man comes in for Kawhi Leonard. And it's Westbrook in for Paul George. And we're just over two and a half minutes into the second. Harden scanning the floor. Tice is screen on Tybal. Harden, the pass to Westbrook. Count it. One for one to start the game. He thrives in that painted area. Westbrook has a lot of moves and different ways he can hurt you inside. And Russell Westbrook gets the whistle that time. That's his first foul. Personal foul. First team foul. 152 left to play in the first half. Aiden with a screen to the paint. Oh, and he took a hard foul on the shot. So he'll head to the line to shoot a pair. Well, looking back, it wasn't too long ago, Grant. The Blazers had an eight-year playoff streak. NBA, that's no easy task. Some great years, but couldn't get over the hump. Now I think it's time to reset and build around their youth. When your bigs can make free throws, it's a huge advantage. Love his approach to getting to the line. Westbrook, the pass to Harden. They set a pick. Back to Westbrook. Dybul with a steal. And here's the fast break. And here's Grant from the arc. Knocks down the long day. Grant's got 11 points. Not just a knockdown shooter. He does a great job of finding space for his shot. Time called here. The Clippers decide to talk it over. Los Angeles, they've gone a terrific four of five here in the second quarter. A chance here to catch up with Ali from the sideline. Well, DeAndre Ayton has big goals. He said, quote, I want to be the best young two-way player in the league, controlling the game even if I'm not scoring the ball. Being everywhere, creating shots, rolling, blocking shots, just being in the paint, loud, communicating. That's my type of basketball. He's got all the tools, Ali. Thanks for that. Good stuff there. What I love about Russell Westbrook, he plays with maximum effort every single night. You can be sure he's not taking any plays off. Now here's Brogdon. No point so far. Takes the three. Tice grabs the miss. And he almost made them regret defending him so loosely. Westbrook finds Tice. Here's Harden. Tice sets a screen. Just five to shoot. Harden with it. Now guarded by Brogdon. And stolen by Murray. And here's Brogdon. From downtown. And Brogdon caps off the break. A legitimate threat beyond the arc. Brogdon's sense for when to shoot from there is outstanding. Pass to man. Here's Harden, covered by Thibel. Tucker with a screen on Thibel. 
Harden from outside. Sinks the tray. Harden's got five points in the quarter. He's never shy to let it go from three-point range. Harden wants to make the D's job as tough as possible. And there it is for him. So good at the rim. A slow defensive rotation leads to the easy lay. Time, time out, called time here. Out. Los Angeles decides to talk it over. It may be a player's league, but the coaches obviously play a big part as well. Yeah, if that weren't the case, you wouldn't see so many coaching changes in the offseason. Here's Harden. Oh, and he just knocked down the buzzer beater. And credit him for understanding the situation and coming through. That is situational basketball. It takes a good understanding and good execution. And a pretty tightly contested game here as we end the first half. Clippers ahead. They lead by one. And don't go away. After the break, we'll see you right back here for the start of quarter number three. And as we get into this third quarter, as we've seen so far, neither team able to create much separation on the scoreboard. Nice game. What a performance by James Harden. What makes him an exciting player is the ultra-aggressive mindset that we saw over and over in the first half. And not standing around, not settling for perimeter shots. He's looking to attack. On the court right now for Portland, we've got Malcolm Brogdon. Walker out there with Jeremy Grant. Then it's Matisse Thibel, and it's Aiden in at the five. Here's George, and the jam by George. This speaks to Westbrook's high level of awareness. Understands when one of his guys is wide open. Bible passes to Walker. Here's Brogdon. Brogdon with a strong finish. The defense couldn't collapse quickly enough. And so it's Westbrook who will bring it up for Los Angeles. Two-point game. Well, if you're the Clippers, are you out looking for the next young star grid? Possibly, B.A. I mean, five of their top six scorers last year were over 30 years old. So they may need more production from your young guns to be a consistent contender. Sharp, he's checked in for Portland. Here in this third quarter, just over a minute play. Grant, the pass to Aiden. Grant with a screen on Tice. Brogdon with the ball. Back to Aiden. Just five on the clock. Oh, and the jam by Aiden. Yeah, looking at Aiden using all of his height and reach, slamming it down on a helpless defense. Tice a screen on Grant. George with the bucket. Rock solid screen right there. The defender got completely lost. Hey, if you're not going to fight over, you're essentially giving the shooter the look he wants. The all-around game of Brogdon. I mean, he's all for doing what's best for the team. A selfless pass. And Westbrook slams it home. And you have to love it. The floor general taking things into his own hands. Just the aggression they're looking for, man. But not every point guard can give you that. The ability to finish with that level of authority. And here are the Trailblazers now. Following the score by the Clippers. Driving inside. It's George on the wing. Tucker with a screen on Brogdon. Up top, George. Guarded by Brogdon. That gives him the lead. George has got seven now in this quarter. Aggressive move by Paul George in the paint. He wanted that one bad. And here's Grant from the arc. And again, it's the Trailblazers from deep. <laughs> Just incredible. I mean, he's really making it rain out there, knocking them down one after another. Yeah, the defense has allowed him to get into a rhythm from there, and he's been relentless. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Malcolm Brogdon. That's his first foul. First two. And here are the Clippers now. Tucker, the pass to Leonard. Six to shoot. Kawhi, so steady inside. Look at the handles by Kawhi Leonard. He has worked on that part of his game. He has his defender on skates. 
George against Brogdon. Pass to Walker. Grant outside. The three is up. And again, it's Portland with a three. Hey, what a showing this has been for Jeremy Grant. Putting in the work to contribute on the offensive end. George drives in. Oh, the bucket's good, and he'll have a chance at one more. It goes on Jeremy Grant. Oh, nice feed. On time and on target. And the Clippers making a change here. Harden's checked in. Thibel, he's checked in for Portland. Simons comes in for Brockton. In my opinion, one of the most talented two-way players of this generation. Paul George has stayed humble throughout his success and has shown that he is willing to do whatever it takes to win. Ooh, good defensive intensity, but you have to stay in control always. And he's good on the second. Anthony Simons has proven himself as an effective and efficient scorer. Someone this team leans on to fill it up. I'll tell you, he doesn't give points away. Excellent job from the line. Now here's George. He's got 13. Into the lane. And the jam by George. Hey, when in doubt, run the defender off the screen. And you know, with a result like that, we'll see them run it again. Especially if the defense is going to allow you to do it. Have to switch on that play. They are unconscious from outside. And so far, the defense has had no answer. You know what? They talked about this at halftime. And they're doing a better job of creating space. Ooh, and Leonard throws it down. And <laughs> once he gets to the rim, it's fairly automatic. Nothing fancy right there. Just takes his two points. Moves on. Pretty slick move by Anthony Simons with the rock. The defender couldn't keep track of it. Tice sets a screen. Three-pointer, Harden. Tice finds Harden. Now George. Tucker with a screen on Grant. George passes to Tucker. On the wing, Harden. And the shot clock expires. 24-second violation. And so Grant will bring it up for the Trailblazers. They lead by four. And it's Simons penetrating. Oh, and that one, no question, powered it down. The first step quickness is up there for Anthony Simons. George scanning the floor. Oh, no good on the last second attempt there. And so it's the Portland Trailblazers with a... And it's time to bring up the State Farm assist to the game. Now, I know he's a big man, but he's got some point guard in him if he's making passes like this. Let me tell you, when you can run offense through your bigs, you give the defense just another thing it has to try and take away. And with three quarters behind us, we'll start the fourth in what is still anybody's ball game. On the perimeter, it's the talented duo of George and Kawhi. Daniel Tice is out there with P.J. Tucker, and it's Harden in at the point. So that's the lineup on the floor for the Clippers. And George with the jam. And with those long strides, it takes Paul George no time to get to the rim. And Kawhi Leonard gets a whistle that time. That'll get him his fourth foul of the game. First team foul. On the wing, Simons. Leonard defending. Anthony Simons again! And the Trailblazers lead by six. Not easy to maintain your form with that much contact. Nice work by Anthony Simons to keep his focus. Harden with a bucket. And that was the right decision. When you're in need of a bucket, you go to your most trusted guys. And it was great execution. Clutch effort all the way around. Now here's Aiden. Aiden, the screen on Harden. Bible passes to Aiden. Clock at six. Again, the Trailblazers, good for two. Heads up play by Simons. He sees a better opportunity for his team and moves the ball. Out to Leonard. Tice is screened on Murray. Leonard for three. Oh, and a 
another three for the Clippers. And defensively, how do you leave them that open in crunch time? And here's Simons outside. Tice grabs the miss. Tice has got four rebounds now. Outside Harden. Inside. Tice passes to George. Back to Tice. And finished off by Tice. Well, if you came here looking for a scoring battle, I think you made the right choice. Yeah, both teams trying to close out strong. These are the fireworks that fans came to see. His hang time on the rim puts a sweet cherry on top, B.A. It's a close game, and those displays of explosiveness can jumpstart a team. Here's Leonard to the inside. Yes, and it's George picking up the assist. Leonard's got nine points now in the second half. His tremendous hands are part of what makes Kawhi effective inside. That's why they call him the claw. Firing with confidence, Simons continues to flourish when given the opportunity. George finds Harden. And a foul called on the way up. So he'll take two from the free throw line. I don't mind that. I mean, they met him at the rim and temporarily prevented the points. Harden hits them both. Yeah, that's who you want stepping to the line when the game is close. The Trailblazers have gotten four or five attempts to fall so far in the fourth. And here's Simons outside. And again, it's the Trailblazers from deep. You can tell Simons has this shot dialed in. He's a very accurate range shooter. Leonard with a screen on Tybal. Harden the pass to Leonard. Back to Harden. Puts up a three. Score that basket. His eighth out of nine shots here today. Oh, can you say important bucket by Harden? James always wants the ball in these moments. Love it. Now here's Simons. Pass to Graham. Back to Simons. And he was fouled while in the act of shooting. So he'll take two free throws. It's going to go on Kawhi Leonard. The development of Simons over the last few years has been incredible. He's shown he can be a lead ball handler and someone who can get you a bucket when needed. Fantastic job stepping up and knocking those two down. That's got to be a huge confidence builder. And then Harden with the jam. <laughs> and there is no way anybody else has taken that shot. I mean, when it's crunch time on a big possession, Harden is always going to be that guy. They kick it out to Murray. Aiden, the screen on Tucker. Murray passes to Aiden. Now here's Simons. Aiden into the lane. He connects! Whoa, whoa, that is as clutch as it gets. Big time play. This is why we all watch. The NBA is about these moments. Now here's Harden. Tice is screen on Tybal. Back to Tice. And the bucket counts, and he is on his way to the line. He'll try to make it a three-point play. And the free throw, no good. There's 31 seconds left in the final quarter. Aiden, a screen on Harden. Outside for Grant, pass to Aiden. Left side Murray. And they go to the intentional foul. First free throw is good. And that'll put him up two. Second free throw, no good that time. He really wanted that one. Timeout. Called the Clippers. They're losing by two. 11 seconds left to play in the fourth. The Clippers making a switch here. A 
11 seconds left to play in the fourth quarter of this one. Outside Harden. There's a screen. Leonard for three. Oh, that...
passing game. And all the better for us. I mean, as fans of the game, seeing that kind of flow and teamwork, it just makes the game fun to watch. A look at the starting group for the Magic. The guard pair for them, Anthony and Suns. Isaac in the front court along with Vodker. And it's Ben Caro in at the center position. I love Suggs' feel for when to attack. A strong mix of dribble moves allows him to just blow by defenders. Now here's Morant. Oh, and he almost had a four-point play right there. He'll go to the line with a chance for three. That's on Jonathan Isaac. The Grizzlies shoot their first free throw. First trip to the line in this one. In an era where so many point guards are three-point shooters, John Morant, you know what? This man is built different. He's more of a throwback. Ja wants to apply pressure by driving, not shooting threes. With the Grizzlies, Richard, we've heard about an emphasis on defense in the past few years. Yeah, and there has been some improvement. They were a middle-of-the-road type defensive team not too long ago. But the last few seasons, they have played impact defense. When Morant drives, he is just so difficult to stop. His agility, that's what makes beating the D look so easy. Passes it to Isaac, and Isaac throws it down. I tell you, he's playing the game with pure excitement right now. He kept off that dunk with some serious hang time on the rim. Now here's Morant. Bain with the screen on Isaac. Outside, Bain. Plays it up off the glass. And this is part of Morant's role. As a guard, he's responsible for finding the open man. The Magic have gotten their first three shots to go in for him to start off this game. Shots good by Anthony. And once he got to the 10, I think he was surprised to find himself that wide open. Easy possessions like that literally are just a gift. You just dream of them. He will gladly take those. And finished off by Morant. This is what you pay to see. Morant doing what he does, exploding right to the rim off the drive. Wow. Now, here's Sun. Here's Anthony. His shot is good, making him a perfect two for two from the floor. Boy, he is looking confident. Love how they're using him so far. Yeah, when he gets engaged this early in the game, it's bad news for the defense. He can roll this start throughout the rest of the game. Here's Smart. Back to Jackson. Five on the clock. Clark with a wide open look. That doesn't go in. Had a chance, though, to take the lead. And here's Isaac. He'll bring it up for Orlando. Shots good by Anthony. When he has that much space, he's a pretty good bet to nail the three. Outside Jackson. And he can't answer back. The three-pointer offline. Anthony against Bain. Anthony, the pass to Wagner. That one falls coming off Anthony's feet. Yeah, and there it is again. On a lot of their possessions this first half, they've established great inside position. Here's Morant. And he lays it straight in. got eight working through the lane Morant he's got such a great change of speed to keep the defense off Wagner outside and again it's Orlando with the three three points and good to get him going early that, that shot should give him some confidence it makes a difference for them if he can establish his three-point shot as a weapon Puts the D in a tough spot when you have a point guard who can throw it down. He really does, G.A. He really does put pressure on him. Yeah, hard to strategize. For a guy who can make a pass or a play like this right in your face. I tell you what, it's, it's almost like stealing to watch how he plays the game from this scene. Clark inside. He's defended by Wagner. Nice defense from Wagner. Smart against Anthony. From down in the low post, it goes. 11 points in the game. 
Yeah, they, they have gone full throttle from the opening tip, showing no signs of letting up. Yeah, they're in control on both ends of the court, and it's always impressive when you build a double-digit lead in the first quarter. Yeah, nice, strong finish there. Nearly a three-point opportunity. All free throws, good from Morant. There's 38 seconds left to play in the first. Magic leading by eight. Wagner outside. Wagner is green on Morant. Out to Anthony. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. It goes on Brandon Clark. Yeah, good job to take it right at the goal. It's his first trip to the line. And both free throws, good for Anthony. Now he's perfectly comfortable doing work at the line. Memphis has gone 0 of 2 from deep here. Morant surveying the D. Clark outside. With one on the clock. And it is good at the buzzer. Wow. Resourceful move there. Ending. And so it's Orlando in the driver's seat. Up eight points at the end of the quarter. And they've done a phenomenal job down low. So many of their points coming right at the rim. We've got more in store for you right after this. And thanks again for tuning in. If you're just joining us, we've played through one quarter of action so far. You guys, what do you think about the offensive approach so far that we've seen for the match? I've really been impressed with how aggressive they've been inside. Looking to capitalize from the paint whenever they can. And also, they've been draining mid-range jump shots, measuring the defense well, and just taking what they give them. In at the guard spots, Morant and Bain. Jaron Jackson is out there with Clark, and it's smart in at the three side. That's the group for Memphis to kick off the second quarter. This man was under-recruited in college. Can you believe that? And Morant, he still plays like he's trying to prove something. No one near Suggs as he lets it go. That's in there. Anthony with the assist. Anthony's got his fifth assist in this one. The Grizzlies trail by nine. Right now, I'd send it over to the sidelines and get a report from David Aldrich. Thank you, Kevin. The Orlando Magic is rolling out with some long and rangy athletes. They've got some size and the foundations of an identity. One scout recently said, everyone talks about playing positionless basketball, but they're the only ones who have really said, what the heck, let's do it, Kevin. <laughs> They've got a type, don't they, David? Thank you. Let's it go with a three. And again, it's the magic from deep. And what can you say about Suggs? A natural-born leader, very unselfish and great vision. Pass to Morant. Quarter number two with just over a minute gone. Jackson has the open look. Buries the long-range jumper. Jackson's got himself going there. His first points of the game on the deep ball. Wagner kicks to Anthony. Suggs with the ball. Now defended by Bain. Going inside. And that one is good from Suggs. Suggs has got nine. And we've heard defensive-minded players, Greg, say, man, everything is a foul nowadays. You can't even touch the guy. You can't defend. Uh, do they have a point? It's getting tough, isn't it? I mean, you can't use your hands. You have to be set. It's almost like they want defenders to be traffic cones. Inside. And finished off by Wagner. Textbook pick and roll. Suggs is both explosive and creative. He'll be running this play for a long time to come. Count that bucket. Bain's got his second bucket of the game to go. I mean, the number of points they've scored in the paint already here is eye-opening. Now, here's Suggs. Guarded by Bain. And finished off by Wagner. And Suggs showcasing his versatility, which includes keeping his teammates involved. Bain finds Clark. And it's Wagner with the rebound. And he's usually able to score on that type of defense rather easily. Surprising to see him come away empty. That's 
it's in there. Anthony with the assist. He's got 11. Uh, unwilling to let up, even for a moment. That's his killer instinct, just fanning the flame. Always plays hard until the final whistle, no matter what the situation is. And the Grizzlies call their first time out of the game. Now about three minutes gone in this second quarter of basketball. To the paint, here's Payne. And he takes it in for the layup off a very nice feat. Sharing the rock. Part of what makes John Morant such a fantastic player is his ability to pass. Isaac passes to Ben Carroll. Ben Carroll was screened for Suggs. To the middle. Gray T that time from Bain. And so Morant will bring it up for the Grizzlies. They trail by 11. to Jackson that's in he's got two made now and he's shooting two for three Lando's gotten both of their three-point attempts to go down here in the second quarter boy Richard coach has got to love having a flex guy like Brandon Clark around a classic high utility player stick him in the game and you're getting points rebounds and you're gonna get good defense he gives you a little bit of everything you need Here's Moran, and Moran throws it down. Still a little bit of a streak shooter. Moran has been deadly accurate tonight. Man. Orlando shooting their third and fourth free throw attempts of the game. And just to mention, a season ago, they were very comfortable at the line, hitting about 78% of their free throws. Fultz, he's checked in for Anthony. Both good from the line that time. And you know, Jalen Suggs has had to deal with some huge expectations. But he's got a great attitude and always works hard to live up to it. Morant with it. Now guarded by Fultz. Morant passes to Jackson. And the dunk by Jackson. Just a textbook lead pass right there. Putting it right where it needed to be. Magic leading by seven. 27 seconds left in the second quarter. And Wagner drives in, and he gets it to go. Wagner's got 13 points. Great recognition of the mismatch, abusing the smaller defender. Poor guy. Morant's against Isaac. Morant outside. Bain, and the bucket is good. Three point. And now, yep, this will be a coach's challenge. We thought that might happen. Triggering a review of the personal foul. And this is the time now where the officials can review in closer detail what constituted the original person. Desmond Bain. A lot easier to determine. Indeed, and the one thing with replay review is that when you see the slow motion replays, you really get a new appreciation for just the after review the ruling on the floor stands it can be sometimes you know great to, to make the right call and so the word is in they decided that the call stands as it was made on the floor and you know even if a coach still feels this wasn't the right call you gotta acknowledge the effort being put in to review it with double checking and the game continues on Throw good, Bain. Time call here. The Magic decide to talk it over. As the teams head into this timeout, a chance for the coaches now to map out some plays for the next few minutes and a chance for the players to rehydrate with some Gatorade. It's important if they want to make sure they don't wear down later in the game. Absolutely. Over the course of a game, you have to stay hydrated. And so it's the Orlando Magic with their lead standing at six points here at the end of the quarter. Their lead is where it is because they've gotten good shots. A lot of good shots. We'll take a quick break and then back to the action here.
And in that first half, we saw a pretty tight battle. We'll soon find out what sort of adjustments were discussed during the half. Guys, John Morant has been sensational. And the way that he has helped out with the ball movement has been a difference maker early on. And it's a role we don't always see him in, but he's done a great job tonight getting the rest of his team involved. On the court for Orlando, we've got Van Carroll. Black is out there with Fultz. Then there's Harris. And it's Houston in a power forward. Yeah, not sure what that was about. I mean, talk about a brain cramp. Bain passes to Morant. Back to Bain. Tries it from 19. Good. And the nice assist from Morant. Morant's got his eighth assist in the game. Anthony kicks to Suggs. It's in and he's a very efficient five for six on the game. And the body control from Suggs just brushing off tight coverage and keeping the focus on the task at hand. Good on that shot. And with that, the Magic lead is cut back down to four points with the basket from Morant. Now, here's Suggs. He's tightly guarded. Van Carroll dishes to Anthony. Six to shoot. Over smart. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. No question. He got bumped on that shot. The Magic have looked good at the line today. They're perfect in four attempts. The Grizzlies making a switch here. Clark's checked in. And both free throws good for Anthony. Here in this third quarter, just over a minute play. Up top, Morant. He's covered by Isaac. That one drops for him. Morant's got four points now in the quarter. And man, is he in a zone right now. Seems like he can't miss. Here's Wagner. It's good again in an excellent seven for eight shooting night so far. It's a great move, and he catches the defense completely off guard. Yeah, taking it right to the rim. What I imagine is that might be discussed at halftime. That's going to be on the floor. They didn't have much of a problem getting the ball into the post that time. The Grizzlies shoot their seventh free throw attempt here. That's good from Morant. Over a minute and a half into the third quarter of action. Wagner has screen on Bain to the inside. And Isaac throws it down. Yeah, you, you got to push Isaac out of the paint. Once he's got that position, he is going to be all over the rim. Jackson kicks to Morant. Back to Jackson. And they go to the intentional foul. So it's the Grizzlies now. It's a five-point game. Here's Smart. Good. And the nice assist from Morant. Smart's got his first bucket in this one. Good work inside from Smart. It's clear how confident he is close to the rim. To the wing right side. Here's Suggs. And the layup's good off the glass. Suggs has got 15. I like the intention, the focus, finding a way to make it work inside. Here's Moran. And Moran throws it down. Showing off that vert. Morant attacks the basket with just such intensity. There's not much any defense can do with it. Here's Suggs. And Suggs throws it down. Just rubbing it in their faces with that number. <laughs> he is never going to take his foot off the pedal. And that finish shows you how dangerous he can be as a passer and a finisher. Offensive rebound. Out to Morant. Outside, Bain. Off target from three-point range. Magic leading by five. Suggs passes to Wagner. And finished off by Wagner. And I've been impressed with the unselfishness, but also getting guys the ball where they can do something with it. His court vision has been on display in this one. He's doing a tremendous job just orchestrating the offense beautifully. Timeout called the Grizzlies. Williams is checked in for Memphis. Rose comes in for Morant. 
There's 138 left to play here in the third. Rose against Isaac. Outside Williams. And it's Williams finishing it off. Strong move to the 10, trying to get his guys going. Hard not to get motivated, GA, right when your teammate makes that kind of play. And that could be the spark they needed to make a little run as they try to even this thing up. And good that time. Suggs has got eight points here in this quarter. And really did have its paying off for Suggs. He's finding shots and drumming up points for his squad. Time call here. The Magic decide to talk it over. Orlando making some changes. Houston's checked in. And it's Gary Harris in for Isaac. Here's Anthony. He's got 18. Pass to Houston. Back to Anthony. And stolen by Williams. Here's Rose. Uses the glass to finish the lane. And how about the clever move by Rose? He somehow manages to get around the contact and finish. Anthony, the pass to Houston. That one falls coming off Anthony's feet. Anthony's got his seventh assist in the game. Just outstanding distribution. This is the kind of team chemistry that you love to see. Here's Payne. It's good. Now he's shooting six for seven. 24 seconds left here in the third quarter. And Anthony's got the ball here for Orlando. 13 points was their biggest lead in the game. 11 seconds left in the third quarter. Shot clock at five. Three-pointer. He can't get that one. Now a timeout called by Memphis. Nice game. Notable performance by Jalen Suggs. Okay, I'm going to take you guys inside the huddle, all right? The message from Coach is simple. Stop him. Williams, that's a two-point. And he beats the buzzer. Wow. Yeah, that's just an amazing. Jalen Suggs has been leading the charge for the Magic. He notched eight points in the quarter and has that terrific basketball instinct on this one. Right back after this break. And with these teams locked in a very close contest, this fourth quarter promises to be a good one. In at the guard spots, Morant and Bain. Randy Clark is out there with Marcus Smart. And it's Jackson in at the five, home in the paint. That's the lineup in the game for Memphis. And he can do a lot more damage to the rim than that when he wants oh, to. Oh, you're right. And with the lead they're enjoying, I'm surprised he didn't put a little something extra on that one. Suggs with the steal. And a look at how the offensive approach has been going here so far for the match. I'm liking the throwback approach. They're making use of the mid-range area and inflicting major damage there. And the other thing that stands out is just how well they have moved the ball. Everyone's touching it and having a chance to create. Williams, he's checked in for the Grizzlies. Wagner with a screen for Suggs. He's still up. Now he is 9 of 10. No, bigger than your average guard, Suggs can score all around the floor, including down low. And he's going to get whistled for that foul, G. That was intentional, but not exactly <laughs> logical. <laughs> How about pointless to foul there? I mean, I don't know where his head is, but it's time in the game. And Jackson throws it down home. Just muscling it home from there. Jackson is no stranger to having to work over strong defense. Anthony kicks to Wagner. Orlando moving the ball around. And Carroll passes to Wagner. He dishes it to Suggs. Shot clock at six. A floater, and the layup is good. Suggs has got four points this quarter. 
Making the floater look this smooth is not as easy as it looks. It's a challenging shot. Isaac against Morant. Isaac with the steal. And now Orlando on the break. And here's Anthony for three. Buries it from three-point range. Anthony's got 21 in the game. You love how each side has risen to the challenge throughout this one. Man, this has been a fun one. But look, who doesn't love a high-scoring game? And now we've got the intentional foul. His third personal foul. Second team foul. Smart deciding where to go with it. Smart with a screen on Isaac. Six on the shot clock. A three from Morant. And Carroll grabs the board. And Carroll's got four rebounds in this game. And here's Anthony from the arc. And again, it's Orlando with a three. Well, he's been doing it all night. Why not go back to it? Yeah, just keep feeding him. That guy is a man on a mission. And the defense, well, they don't have much of an answer. And Morant throws it down. Puts the D in a tough spot when you have a point guard who can throw it down. He really does, GA. He really does put pressure on him. Yeah, hard to strategize for a guy who can make a pass or a play like this right in your face. And, and this offense is in a perfect rhythm. And you can see how they're finishing their play. Right about that. Seems like they haven't missed. And now they decide to foul intentionally. Time call here. The Magic decide to talk it over. Let's check in with our reporter, David Aldridge. During that last break, I got a chance to hear what Jamal Mosley said to his team. Now, he told his guys not to get comfortable. He said, so we've got a little breathing room. So what? That's no reason to slow down out there. He wants them to keep the effort up. Guys? Thank you, David. And that one's good, Anthony. When you allow good scores to get uncontested shots at the rim, no wonder you're losing. That's a great possession. Put your best players in a position to succeed. Outstanding work to send him away. They sniff that one out. And finished off by Wagner. They're relentless in their approach, even with the game firmly in hand. No let up with these guys. They're going for the throat now. Williams has a screen for Morant. There's the drive. And he banks in the layup. Morant's got four points this quarter. Inside, Morant doesn't have an obvious advantage, but his moves, look, they'll get him to the bucket. And, and so just rolling to the finish line now in what has been a very confident-looking performance for Orlando. You know, it's tough to put your finger on the deciding factor in this one, but I'd say that the shooting accuracy made the difference. Yeah, I think you're on point, Kevin. They got better looks, and that tends to lead to a better field goal percentage. Oh, look out! Look out! usual Morant bringing down the house now here's Suggs over to the left wing here's Ben Carroll makes it off the glass and it's just competing you know giving your best when it matters most and let me tell you as a team you love to hit your stride right at the crucial moments they put this game away in style and that one's good Morant <laughs> when you're as explosive as Ja, then opponents are going to let you take shots from deep. It's been a nice stretch for them offensively. I mean, the communication's great. The movement's been really good. This is solid team basketball. 29 seconds left in the fourth quarter. And Morant throws it down. Step ahead of the defense with that solid screen. And then, Greg, the monster dunk to finish it off. Oh, great chemistry on display. He understood where to put the screen in order to free up his teammate. Anthony against Smart. Here's Anthony. And Carroll outside. Gotta be careful when Jackson is lurking more than just capable.
lot of star power at the guard positions on both sides. And you know, traditionally, B.A., when big guys match up, it's all about the power. But this contest is about finesse. Who can outplay and outsmart the competition? So here's Portland's starting group. Thibel and Grant are at the forward spots. Sharp out there with Anthony Simons. And it's Aiden in at the five, roaming the paint. The drive by Simons. Just shocking the defense here. They couldn't keep up with Simons' nimbleness. Brown against Grant. Brown passes to White. Porzingis sets a screen. Let's it go from deep. And White hits from deep. He's consistent from out there, especially when you give him that kind of room. Simons against Holiday. The drive by Simons. And he goes in for the dunk. Tough to slow down the momentum that Simons has here. Just powered through on the drive. White the pass to Tatum. Porzingis sets a screen. Wing shot on the way. Jump shot is good. Starting to find his rhythm. He's cooking, and he knows it. Yeah, right now, I don't see any let up. I think he's going to just keep putting his foot on that gas pedal. When talking about the Celtics, you'd have to say they have a unique one-two punch, Grant. Yeah, I mean, think about it, B.A. To have Tatum on one wing and Brown on the other, that's a potent combination. And what a luxury yeah. for Boston. They complement each other so well. And defensively, you have to make them work harder than this, or it's going to be a long night. Two open that time. Made it look easy. Simons got seven. Yeah, Simons has great confidence in shooting that three ball, and that consistency will help this squad. And the whistle on the shot. Got some contact there. Misses the shot, but he'll shoot two. Well, if we want to talk about Derek White for a moment, he's become such an effective defender, Grant. Yeah, you know, B.A., he's got a great mix of awareness and ability. Just an exceptional quickness that allows him to be a disruptor at that end. That's what he does. Rock solid at the line. Pass to Aiden. Launches it from deep. Oh, it's blocked by Porzingis. And Porzingis showing some of those signs from early on in his career. He was a great shot blocker. Here in the first quarter, with about two minutes gone by. Thibel, a screen on Brown. Nice move. Blocked again! There's the link Tatum provides on the defensive side. He can change a game on that end. Porzingis sets a screen. Pass to Holiday. Uses the glass to finish the layup. And setting the tempo with an assertive move, like... Where was the defense on that play? Yeah, APB sent out to try to find out where the defense is. Inexcusable. Here's Sharp. Takes a three. Nails it from beyond the arc. Five points in the game. At the arc, Sharp just going for it there. He's trusting in his ability. Outside White. Tatum passes to Porzingis. Brown against Grant. Back to Porzingis. And he takes it in for the layup off a very nice feed. Nice ball work there in Porzingis. It finds his hands, and then the ball finds the hoop. Three-pointer sharp. Out to Simons. Back to Aiden on the wing, Simons. Aiden, a screen on Holiday. Clock at four. Jam by Aiton. Aiton's so big inside, he turns a miss into an opportunity. Outside White, pass to Tatum. Brown, a screen on Tybal. Now Brown, back to Tatum. Fires from deep. And the Celtics have another three. Yeah, nice seeing Tatum knock down the perimeter jumper. Wanting to keep improving from there. Grant, the pass to Simons. And that one is hammered home. This guy is putting on a clinic for the people. Man, I'm shocked. I can't believe he pulled that off in a real game. Right. Good. And they keep trading punches. Both teams in a groove early. Who's going to miss first? Every time one team scores, the other team right back at you. Now here's Simons. He's got nine. Aiden, the screen on white. Back to Aiden. Out to Simons. Go, 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 
Trailblazers got to hurry. Got to get up a shot. Now eight seconds separating the two clocks. Holiday finds Porzingis. Oh, and there's the whistle. He was going up for the layup, and while it looked like there was some contact, I wasn't sure they were going to call it or not. So we got a couple of free throws coming up. Kristaps Porzingis, throughout his career, continues to look for good help. And when he is that, he's a force. And the big fellow with the skill level, showing a soft touch at the line. Sharp, no good. And so it's Tatum who brings up the ball for the Boston Celtics. Six-point game. Outside Holiday. The three ball. Nails it from three. Holiday's got five points. And Drew Holiday can make enough threes to make your defense nervous. Derek White getting it done for the Celtics. Hunting for opportunities. We welcome you back to second quarter action. Plenty of basketball left to play. But this one has been one-sided so far. And for the Celtics here, guys, what jumps out to you stat-wise? They are looking engaged so far, especially on offense. Well, if they wanted to start well, this would be it. They seized momentum right away, and they just didn't let it go in that quarter. Taking a look at the Trailblazers. Sharp teams with Thibel on the perimeter. DeAndre Ayton is out there with Jeremy Graham. And it's Simons in at the point guard position. Now here's Holiday. White with a screen on Simons. Holiday passes to Brown. Outside Tatum. Shoots over Grant. And it's Tatum missing. Well, that's the only way to take him out of his comfort zone from that range. Get right up in the jersey, force him off the spot. Yeah, here's a list of things I don't want to do, and right at the top is guard that guy. Well, the Blazers have boasted some high-powered offenses in recent years. Well, their success is always centered around what they've done on the offensive end, B.A., but now they've lost a little bit of that potency, and they've got to get back to more balance so that they can be competitive on a nightly basis. Time now to hear from our reporter, Ali LaForce. Well, the incredible athleticism of Scoot Henderson has drawn comparison to players like Westbrook, Wall, and Rose. Scoot said, quote, no, I don't want to try to follow up anybody. I want to have my own career where people compare to me. But those are some great players, some great guards, and leaders. But I just want to make my own path. B.A.? Yep, and that's where you have to be mentally. Thanks, Allie. Bible, a screen on Tatum. And here's Grant from the arc. The rebound, Celtics. Porzingis has got four rebounds now. To the middle. From inside. The kick out to White. Time, out, time, out. time called here. The Celtics decide to talk it over. The three-point shot changed the game, clearly. But did you see it becoming the centerpiece of so many teams' offense, Brent? I think it was inevitable in a way, B.A., but the way it got introduced to the league and the way that the seven seconds or less Phoenix Suns adapted to the three-point line and then eventually what the Rockets were doing kind of came in like a flood. And each year we're seeing more and more guys who you wouldn't think should be shooting threes now capable of not only taking them, but making them. And so that goes for every position that makes the game very dangerous. So for the Blazers, Murray's checked in for Thibel. Brogdon comes in for Sharp. And it's Scoot Henderson in for Simon. Such a smart offensive play right there. When Holiday sees that chance open up right there, he's all over. And it's the Blazers with the ball. After the basket by Boston, Brogdon finds Aiden. Not sure why he committed the intentional foul. No purpose. I think everyone's a little confused. But weird plays happen. Now here's Brogdon. Inside. Aiden with the stuff. Pretty good awareness there from Malcolm Brogdon, capable of spotting the open teammate on that side of the ball. Here's Holiday. And the layup is good off the glass. Holiday's got nine. Well, he's too good a finisher to blow that kind of chance, but that's going to be a wake up call to the defense. Henderson for three. They kick it out to Murray. Pass to Graham. Let's go with a three. Gets his second attempt to go. Now he's one for two. No doubt that Jeremy Grant wants to become a better shooter, showing signs of progress in his catch-and-shoot game. Here's Brown. They kick it out to Porzingis. And 
the Celtics another three. As a big, unless you're a dedicated rim runner, you have to be some kind of threat from distance. Well, Brent Kristaps Porzingis, he's a big man who can do a whole lot. Knocks down the three ball, can defend inside, and causes some problems with his length. Makes smart passes because he knows the league and he knows the tendencies. This guy is very skilled and is getting better. Grant, one of those big guys that gets up off the ground like a guard. Love to see him throw it down. The offensive rebound. Henderson against Holiday. Screen by Horford. Another shot. Oh, rejected by Aiden. Oh, man, 7-1. Not a good idea to challenge Aiden there. And now they decide to foul intentionally. I mean, I'm just not sure what he was thinking right there. I mean, he needs to get his head in the game. There's a minute 12 left in the second period. Grant with a screen on Brown. Up top, Grant. Fires the three. And again, it's Portland with a three. Yeah, Grant has really embraced this part of his game, becoming a reliable three-point shooter. Here's Holiday. Pass to Walsh. it down and this kind of six slam is just one of the reasons this team is in charge of this game right now ba you know there's an edge the way they play and a confidence they're not afraid to show now here's murray he's scoreless and here's grant from the arc can't get it to fall now three for five in this one and it's holiday with the ball for boston their biggest lead of the game was nine here's the break up ahead Here's Aiden, and it goes as the official. Calls the foul, count it, and he'll shoot one more at the line. Well, Aiden and efficiency go hand in hand. I mean, this guy's field goal percentage is on cloud nine. Holiday passes to Brown. to Horford. Forzing is surveying the floor. He got it up in time, but it would not fall for him. And we're through the first half of play here in what's been a good one. It's the Celtics up by two. And we'll see you back here after the break. Third quarter action in just a bit. in that first half we saw a pretty tight battle we'll soon find out what sort of adjustments were discussed during halftime you look at Anthony Simons he's been playing really well using all that momentum behind him to finish with power gotta love watching him dive toward the rim this is why the best athletes in the world play this game if he finds a hole he rips through and throws it down now a timeout called by Boston Portland has gone 5 of 12 from three-point range tonight. We've got Kristaps Porzingis, Derek White out there with Drew Holiday. Then there's Jason Tatum, and it's Walsh in at the three, the small forward. And that's the group for Joe Mazzula as we begin the second half. Well, Brogdon is a pretty gifted passer and trying to do a great job of heading up this offense from the point position. And for the Celtics, Grant, when it comes to something like rebounding, it's a total team effort. Well, it's part of their personnel strategy, B.A., Get wings and guards that have length and toughness, which allows them to control the glass and switch just about everything defensively. Henderson. And so he draws the foul, headed to the line to shoot a pair. That one on White. And at most other draft classes, Scoot Henderson could have been a top pick. Yeah, he has the talent and skill you want in a number one overall pick. Circumstance of the class drops him down, but he has everything you look for in a franchise centerpiece. And Grant, this season, the Blazers adding a G League affiliate in North Portland. The NBA, I mean, the second to last team to do it. And the Suns next season will make it 30 for 30. Now there's a G League counterpart operating under each of the league's teams. Keeping pace here. That's an excellent move inside. Henderson, the pass to Thibault. For the lead. 
Hits the trifecta. And the Trailblazers lead by one. Defensively, you can't afford to get stuck on the pick. That's one that the coaches will watch tomorrow with that player. You hate to see him give up in that situation. And sometimes you forget how long Tatum is, and he's terrific at using this to his advantage inside. Walker finds Thibel. Brogdon with the ball. Over Holiday. And it's Brogdon missing. Well, they shouldn't be giving that shot to anyone, but they certainly shouldn't be giving it to him. That's a big break for the defense. Outside White. Tatum a screen on Tybal. White the pass to Tatum. Oh, Tatum taking flight. You're calling Tatum a capable scorer would be an understatement. He is an elite offensive talent. Brockton against White. Pass to Henderson. Here he goes. Boom! He jams it straight down. Yeah, he's just explosive. I mean, Scoop gets off the ground in a hurry and puts some emphasis on it, too. Here's White. Outside Holiday. And here's Tatum, covered by Thibel. Porzingis with a screen on Thibel. Five to shoot. The soft touch from Tatum. Oh, the ball handling of Tatum. It's what separates him from other star wings. Henderson scanning the floor. Three-pointer. And it's Jason Tatum with a rebound. Hey, sometimes you miss even under the best of circumstances. Here's White. Oh, through contact. White gets the finish. This is a gravity game right now. Whatever he throws up must come down. He's having a great game. Timeout called. Portland. Jalen Brown, he's checked in for Holiday. A big group substitution here for Portland. DeAndre Eaton, he's checked in for Williams. Grant comes in for Walker. Sharp, he's checked in for Malcolm Brogdon. And Simon is subbed in for Henderson. Well, you got to find ways to keep feeding Anthony Simons. Right now, this guy is on fire. For Boston, they've gotten all six of their shots to fall. Talk about a perfect start to the half. Now here's Tatum. He's got 15. Back to White. Pass to Walsh. Outside Tatum. Porzingis with a screen on Tybal. Tatum can't hit. Portland trailing here for the tie. He drops it from range. Tybal's got six here in the quarter. Simon's playing unselfish. That's going to help this team get in a great rhythm. White, the pass to Brown. JB off the bounce. And the jam by Brown. He's just too quick to the cup. No one near him to get postered. Aiden, a screen on white. Here's Simons. Hey, how's that for an answer? Right back with the dunk. Well, the handles right there from Simon. Great job of just creating enough space for him to do the damage. Brown. Brown! Oh, my goodness! You can tell Brown is having fun. What a phenomenal dunk artist he is. Up top, Aiden. Aiden, a screen on Tatum. And here's Grant from the arc. Kept alive to the left side wing. Goes back up. Takes it inside. And he'll draw the foul. And they're not happy with the call here. Coach has given the signal. He's going to use his challenge. Probably a good idea in such a close contest. People were worried that this was... Taking two shots. Every game. The NBA was smart to adopt this challenge policy in 2019. You know, one thing this does for a coach is let his players know he's got... After the review, the ruling on the floor is overturned. Another look. So they see clear evidence of a bad call, and they're going to overturn it. Probably the right decision. And give credit to the officials for recognizing the mistake and correcting it. Nobody likes to say they got it wrong, but they fixed it in a hurry. Now here's Grant. Give him eight points now. Sharp, no good. Aggressive mindset, but the defender just as determined to send him away empty-handed. That's good from White. 
Now a timeout called by Boston. And one thing I've learned through the years is no matter the situation, there are always adjustments you can make. Yeah, not just there to pump up or to discipline players. You've got to make sure that the coach makes the proper adjustments and has his team in the right mindset to carry it out. Holiday's checked in for Boston. And it's Tatum with the ball for the Boston Celtics. Their biggest lead of the game was nine. And count that. And here comes the coach's challenge. He disagrees with the foul. He does not hesitate to ask for a second look. It's pretty heated game. Every call matters. People were worried. Second team foul. Calls in every game. The NBA was smart to adopt this challenge policy in 2019. You know, one thing this does for a coach is let his players know he's got their back. If they're adamant that the call was... After the review, the ruling on the floor is overturned. So they see clear evidence of a bad call, and they're going to overturn it. Probably the right decision. And give credit to the officials for recognizing the mistake and correcting it. Nobody likes to say they got it wrong, but they fixed it in a hurry. Aiden, a screen on Holiday. Simons passes to Aiden. Down low. Oh, and there's the whistle on the shot. And in a game this close, they're going to challenge the call. Coach does not agree with it, and he wants him to take another look at the monitor. People were worried that this would slow the action down. But with so many close calls in every shot, the previous play is under the see in 2019. You know, one thing this does for a coach is let his players know he's got their back. If they're adamant that the call was wrong, he'll... After the review, the ruling on the floor is overturned. So they see clear evidence of a bad call, and they're going to overturn it. Probably the right decision. And give credit to the officials for recognizing the mistake and correcting it. Nobody likes to say they got it wrong, but they fixed it in a hurry. It could go. That one doesn't drop. And offensively, a great show for the fans through the first three quarters. It's been a... And while we have a chance, let's go to our State Farm assist of the game. Woo, I'm fired up to see this dish one more time. It's always great to see your two guards share the wealth. Well, sometimes that's what can separate some of the best players, not just creating for yourself, but creating for others as well. We've reached the fourth quarter in what has been a very... Get out of the way! Oh, wow! And the defense didn't even see Brown coming, driving in hard and making a statement. And here's Grant from the arc. It's not going to go for him. Boston's gone four of six from three-point range thus far. Here's Walsh. Ball stolen. Simons against Holiday. Out to the wing. Simons outside. Pass to Aiden. Four on the clock. Yep, right through the net. And just great intensity down the stretch. I mean, he really wants to rock with the game on the line. Take a look at that. Locked in right now in this moment. Wants the ball in his hands and feels real comfortable with the shot he's taking. And the Celtics making a change here. White's checked in. And from the sideline, let's catch up with Allie. During that last break, I heard Joe Mazzula as he talked with the team. Well, Coach is thrilled with their three-point shooting, saying in the huddle, guys, let's keep it up. Continue to shoot it from deep. It's working. They've been on fire from distance so far. Appreciate the report, Allie. Now here's Simons. The three. Oh, he can't miss. Eight for eight after that shot. Simons says hello. Great answer. White the pass to Tatum. Slams it home. Oh, oh, what great action we've seen tonight. Hard to imagine a more entertaining game. No, this is about as high octane a game as you're going to find. Simon's shot is good. Their strategy has been pretty simple here in the second half. Attack from three-point range. Maybe trying to find a little bit more space and ball movement to get guys open in the three-point Portland has gone two of three from beyond the arc here in the fourth. Here's Thibault. Well-timed pass, and he goes straight to the bucket for the layup. And Grant with a nice heads-up play, willing to make the next pass. Here's 
Here's White. Tipped. Now the Blazers on the move. And Sharp is the kind of guy who gets up there in a hurry. That elevator, that's got some extra juice. Tatum inside. On the wing, Holiday. Tatum with a screen. Oh, sweet move. And Holiday with the layup. And the Celtics lead by two. And you have to love how Holiday came up big with the shot. That's the kind of leadership you want to see from him. Simons passes to Sharp. Holiday grabs the miss. Boston has gone one of two from deep in this quarter. To the paint. To the inside. Porzingis. The kick out to White. Tipped away. Heibel with a steal. And they're on the run. Well, if you're just tuning in, welcome. We've played about three and a half minutes into the fourth quarter here. Pass to Aiden. Down to five on the shot clock. Here's Simons. And there's the slam. Dunk to finish it off. And it's crucial, but Simons takes that responsibility and gets it done. Outside Tatum. Porzingis sets the screen. There's the triple. They get it back. Kick out to Brown. Left side white. This one for three. Three-pointer goes up. Three-pointer goes down for white. Easy look when the defender isn't fighting over the screen. The coach over there just asking for one simple thing, and that's some effort. Got burned on that one. And Simon saying, bring it on. I got this and more. White finds Brown. There's 48 seconds left in the fourth quarter of this one. <laughs> now, that's one to remember. What an impact on the game. I'm wondering, is that the biggest shot of the game? Simons with it. To the paint. Here's Aiden. Money! How about a pivotal hoop from DeAndre Aiden? Oh, so much on the line here. And the crowd is locked in. Porzingis with a screen on Tybal. against Tatum. Holiday passes to Tatum. Here's Brown driving in. It's hauled in by the Trailblazers. And even though he couldn't send the shot back at him, he certainly altered it. Yeah, that's the kind of energy that you want to see on every possession throughout the game. Timeout called. Portland We're trailing by one. Nine seconds left in the fourth quarter. All right, guys, what's your take? It's always interesting to see what play a coach has saved for a situation like this. And sometimes not just what a coach draws up, but who he has execute in these moments. During this final quarter, he's erupted from outside the arc. Just assume every three he takes now is going in. And the Celtics call time here. They're behind by two. Three seconds left to play in the fourth. Guys, what do you think? I would honestly attempt to get the ball near the rim because even if the shot doesn't fall, a quick putback will suffice. Ties it up with that one. You know, he's such a smart scorer. He doesn't force anything. Let's the opportunities come to him. is ended and we are headed to overtime and we'll return short well four quarters were enough to decide this ball game sit back and enjoy as we move on to overtime now here's Brogdon the core of this team Brown and Tatum they're the forwards Derek White out there with Drew Holiday. And it's Porzingis in at the five down low. Tatum with a steal. White on the wing, covered by Thibel. It's Brown on the wing. And it's Boston scoring again. Man, I'll tell you what, the pressure is cranked up. Who better to call than this guy? 
Three-pointer is up from Brogdon. From deep, Brogdon! Brogdon steps up, fearless, with that one. Boston has gotten six of ten three-pointers to drop. White finds Tatum. Count that bucket. Tatum's got 23 points. <laughs> when this team needs a bucket, it naturally looks for Jason Tatum, and he typically comes through. Bible passes to Sharp. Down low. Here's Aiden. And Aiden with the stuff. Oh, my. That's why we have those breakaway friends. Dude, he risks pulling the whole thing down to the floor right there. It's not easy to finish in traffic, but those are chances he has to convert. Timeout called. The Blazers. They're leading by one. 143 left in the OT period. Anthony Simons, he's checked in for Brogdon. And so it's Aiton with it. He brings it up for Portland. They lead by one. Here's Simons. And he got the whistle on the way up. So he'll be headed to the line for a pair. It's on Drew Holiday. Well, Simons can produce, and he does it in bunches. But can he do it in big moments? Here's a chance. You might want to think twice before sending him to the line again. He gets locked in when the game gets close. Outside, Brown. Tatum, screen on Tyler. Brown passes to Tatum. Back to Brown. Oh, Brown just throws it down. Oh, assertive play there by Brown. Rising to the challenge of the moment. And it's Simons. Getting oh, out. Man, he got fancy with that finish. <laughs> he may be trying to provide the spark they need to break this one open. Porzingis with a screen on Simons. Holiday passes to Porzingis. And here's Tatum. And Aiden pulls it down. The Trailblazers have got their first three shots to drop in overtime. Simons against Holiday. Simons passes to Sharp. Shot clock at six. It falls! And how about that? Aiden stepping up, wanting the pressure. What a huge trip here. Absolutely. You can feel the energy in this arena. They kick it out to Porzingis. It's rebounded by Grant. And stolen by Porzingis. And right here, they can't waste any time. Well, it's probably a little bit too late here, but you really need to score a bucket here to stay alive. Tatum passes to Holiday. Outside Tatum. And it's off from three-point range.
Options really stands out. No question about it. Both teams rely heavily on their backcourts to get it done. And I'm interested to see which backcourt brings it tonight. And the starting group for the Grizzlies. In at the guard spots, Morant and Bain. Smart is out there with Williams. And it's Jackson in at the five down low. Harden can't hit. And you can see the defender's afraid to kind of get in his way a lot of times when he's on his way to the basket. But on that one, they were there. And he commits the intentional foul. Really no idea why you're fouling in a situation like that. You know, maybe there's some bad blood between those two. Here's Morant. Oh, and he parks it off the glass. Wow. George against Bain. Here's the three. And the rebound goes to the Grizzlies. A great gritty is a word that is often used to describe the Grizzlies team. And I think it applies to this unit as well. These guys are all tenacious and hungry. They play every game with a healthy ship on their shoulder. They love to compete. Well, you have to admire how Smart is running this offense right now. He has a knack for spotting open teammates. And the foul on Marcus Smart. That is his first foul of the game. First team foul. And just over a minute played here in the start of the game. Tucker finds George. Leonard with a screen on Smart. George with no one around. And they come right back with their own three-pointer. Well, Paul George says, I can answer with my own big-time three-point shot. Go to work, PG. A three from Leonard. And it's Morant with the rebound. For Memphis, they've gone two or three here to start off the game. Bain with the bucket. And that's exactly what he's looking for, draining the triple. George looking over the floor. Harden outside. Pocket six. Now the dish to Leonard. Williams with the defensive effort. Well, this is the kind of shot we've come to expect him to make. He's got to be upset with that one. Lays it up and banks it in. Well, it's just outstanding distribution from Marcus Smart, keeping his eyes peeled in order to find his guys in their spots. Tice with a screen on Bain. Harden the pass to Tice. Harden kicks it to Tucker. Los Angeles with another miss. For Memphis, they've gone four or five from the field so far. And that one's good, Morant. Yeah, we're seeing some fireworks from them already. Well, what I love is the game plan has been solid from the opening tip. And guys are making their shots. That's critical. Just setting the tone with an aggressive move to the rack. And, and where's the help defensively? To me, that's a complete lack of communication on that side of the ball. These guys need to be talking to each other. Well, they've been excellent so far, coming in with a well-balanced attack. On the offensive end, it feels like they're getting the shots they want, and defensively, they are connected and on a string. Now an all-NBA caliber talent, Morant still feels like he has room to improve. Here's George, and it's George finishing it off. Now, I'll bet even they didn't think the pick would work that well. No, no, no. And they get the major league dunk out of it, too. And my question is, where was the help? Someone rotate over and challenge. And it's the Grizzlies with the ball after the basket by Los Angeles. And it's Morant missing. And now running up the court, Leonard pushing it up. Kicks it out to Harden. Tucker a screen beyond the arc. And James Harden, good for three. Well, this is the basis of James Harden's game, right? That three-point accuracy opens up every other aspect of the floor and his scoring ability. And the basket by Jackson. And an eye for an eye. Both teams working to stretch the floor. Well, that three-point shot just gives you so much room to operate on the offensive end. Now, here is Harden. the pass to Leonard from the arc 
not going to fall. Starting off slow, he misses his first three from the floor. Morant against Harden. Morant with a wide open look. And the Grizzlies tack on two more. Yeah, they, they have gone full throttle from the opening tip, showing no signs of letting up. Well, you set the tempo early, and when you get command and control of a game, it's perfect. And giving up some inches inside, but makes up for it with an aggressive style. Well, he's attacking, he's forcing the issue, and that's simply stated a terrific play. Up top, Morant. He's got 12, and it's out of bounds. The Grizzlies able to retain possession here. Just four seconds left in the first quarter. Two on the clock, fouled on the shot, and picks up two points. So one free throw coming up. The rugged toughness of Moran. Excellent at fighting through there and capitalizing in style. So timeout called here, the first for Los Angeles. Adjustments are a part of the game, and the coach sees something he doesn't like here. Well, this is a chess match. Looking ahead a few moves and trying to execute toward that. The three from Harden, and the last shot before the buzzer is off. And so it's the Memphis Grizzlies holding on to an 11-point cushion as we get ready to take a break. And so far through one quarter, it's been a lopsided game. We'll see if that changes here in the second. And a moment here to take a look at the scoring breakdown for Memphis. We've got a bunch of this game yet to be played, but they're shooting it well from the three-point line. That's got to be a welcome sight. And boy, have they started out quick, running the floor, taking advantage of their speed. Filling the two and three, the core of George and Leonard. Daniel Tice out there with P.J. Tucker, and it's Harden in at the five. They're the group out there for the Clippers starting the second quarter. And the Grizzlies with possession here. They lead by 11, the largest margin of the game. The D just kind of stepping aside and letting him get to the rim. There's a reason, G.A., the lead is what it is right now. I tell you, you can't get stops if you're unwilling to put in the work. Harden against Bain. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. And, Greg, we still see players embellishing contact. Is enough being done to discourage those creative flourishes? We're talking about flopping, right? I mean, we're seeing the league experiment assessing a technical free throw. It's necessary, or guys will keep jerking their heads and falling down, and, and who wants to see that? some power coming from the PG. Ah, that's right. GA seeing more and more of that these days. Backcourt guys who can elevate. We know versatility is huge in this game. Just a tremendous job finishing that play. Wow. And while we've got a moment, let's send it over to our terrific reporter, David Alder. David. Thank you, Kevin. Now the Grizzlies backcourt is in the conversation for the best starting backcourt in the league. Desmond Bain says, Ja is obviously the focus, and that's why I feel like we're a good combo. If they want to sell out on him and pack in the paint, and that leaves me open on the perimeter to do my damage. Kevin, back to you. And he does a lot of damage. David thanks a great tandem indeed. Just three to shoot. And with that shot, the Grizzly lead is cut down now to just 10 points with that basket from Kawhi Leonard. We're now about two minutes into the second quarter. Morant drives in and finished off by Morant. Watching Morant drive is like watching lightning move across the sky. If you blink, you might miss it. Leonard sets a screen for Harden. Puts up a deep three. It's rebounded by Memphis. Jackson's got four rebounds in this game. And the Clippers, one of the more efficient three-point shooting teams, Greg, in the NBA. And Kevin, really, over the last decade, that's been one of their most consistent traits. And it's not just because of talent. They're smart about the shots they take. And with the lead, I like the strategy here. Continue to get the ball to guys who can do something with it. One thing we've learned in the NBA, the game is never over. So you've got to continue to score, continue to build your lead. 
and no doubt they'd love to see him get a lot more of those opportunities. And that deficit will go away quickly if he does, Greg. Here's Morant outside Williams. Pass to Bain. Memphis needs to get off a shot here. Two minutes remaining in the first half. Two minutes. Bain against Harden. And the call on the shot that sends him to the line. Well, James Harden is just so good at drawing contact and getting himself to the charity stripe. It has been a specialty of his over the years. Mann's checked in for the Clippers. Derrick Rose is checked in for Memphis. You can tell when he steps to the line the kind of confidence he has in himself. It's written all over his body language. For three, Williams. And again, it's Memphis with the three. The vision by Rose, right? Hits the open man. He's creating for others. And this guy is so tough to deal with. And foul on the shot. So he'll get a chance at the line. First and you look at Paul George, Doris. He really fits any system you can think of. But Kevin, that's about two things, the skill set and the mindset. If you need him to take over, he can change and get that line of thinking in his mind. You want him to play a secondary role, he can adjust there mentally as well. Russell Westbrook in for James Harden. Jackson dishes to Rose. Jackson a screen on Westbrook. Here's Rose driving to the basket. Good for the basket, starting off one for one with that shot. And that is one of Derrick Rose's signature moves. May not be as fast as he once was, but boy, that explosive first step remains. And George kicks to Tice. Westbrook a screen on smart. George finds Westbrook. And the rejection by Jackson. And it's out of bounds. They say it was last touched by Jackson. There's 53 seconds left to play here in the half. And so they foul intentionally. The Grizzlies making a switch here. Williams is checked in. Here's Rose. Floats one. The second chance effort. Jackson hits the layup after the sweet pump fake to freeze the D. Jackson's got five. And I like seeing Jackson use that length on the offensive glass. You don't have to be the most physical guy when you have a wingspan like that. Oh, that's a major league throwdown. Keeps a tight grip on that rim, too, after the finish. Rose goes in, laid in with a nice touch off the glass. You can see the athleticism and toughness. Rose becoming exponentially more dangerous the closer he gets to the rim. Westbrook kicks it to Tucker. For the basket, nice shot after missing his first attempt. Good job attacking. Those restricted area shots are what every NBA team is looking for. Outside Rose, one second left. Well, physical on-ball defense, something we come to expect every night from Tucker. John Moran has been leading the charge, guys, for the Grizzlies. They've leaned on him for offense, and he hasn't let him down. He's now up to 23 points today. Back right after this. And with a big gap on the scoreboard, the second half begins with very different goals for these teams. One side trying to mount a comeback, one side trying to protect their lead. Guys, John Morant has been sensational. You just love the patience in that first half. Oh, oh, now the superb athleticism of Russell Westbrook on full display. The vertical out of this world. Rose passes to Jackson. Back to Rose. From downtown, Jackson misses. And here's Westbrook. He'll bring it up for the Los Angeles Clippers. 11-point game. George against Bain. Right side, Westbrook. 
and time the out, Clippers time out. call time here. And Doris, the Clippers Sorry. are moving into a new arena in Inglewood in 2024. Kevin, I think this is absolutely huge for the organization. Part of establishing your own identity in Los Angeles will be their new arena. So exciting for this fan base that's growing and growing. Leonard, he's checked in for Los Angeles. Harden comes in for George. Then for the Grizzlies. Jackson, he's checked in for Jackson. Williams comes in for Williams. And it's John Morant in for Derrick Rose. Harden, no good. And the way he was able to reach out towards that release had an impact. Well, no question. He altered that shot. And most of the time, that's just as good as blocking it. It's good. Morant's got 25 points in the game. Yeah, I'm amazed at Morant's ability to take contact and still stay in full control. Leonard kicks it out to Harden. That ball, nice feed that time from... Amazing individual performance, but you'd like to see more guys start to get involved. I don't know if he can do it alone. Here's Morant, and finished off by Morant. Obviously, Morant has found his flow here, finding plenty of ways to create for himself. And he drops in the layup off the glass. Leonard's got seven points in the game. And that tells the tale here today, guys. Throughout this game, they've been able to get the ball in tight and finish. Outside for Smart. Back to Morant. Just five on the clock. Here's Jackson. And the layup falls. Jackson's got his first points of the game. It's like reading a picture book for Moran. He makes it look insanely easy. Leonard finds Westbrook. Leonard sets a screen for Westbrook and finished off by Westbrook. And credit the screen for giving him the space he needed to get to the rim. For sure, GA allows him to come in with the sledgehammer. Boy, that's a play you just practice time and time again, and that's the result of the work put in. A moment now to hear from our sideline reporter, Hall of Famer, David Aldridge. David. Thank you, Kevin. Well, Jaron Jackson Jr. is a prolific shot blocker, but blocks aren't his goal. He said, I'm playing the game to not foul, but make it as hard as I can. And if I block it, then cool. Avoiding those whistles is key. John Morant says of Jackson, his defensive presence is big time for us. We're a totally different team with him out there on the floor. And here we go, coach's challenge happening right now. This one in regards to the personal foul, seeing that that was the right call. And going up strong inside demonstrates confidence. Moran, not afraid to get physical. And I think when it comes to some of the more difficult calls to make, the previous play is under the And it's really tough to catch everything in real time. The wonders of technology. We've seen replay reviews so effectively and involving the coaches by being able now. The challenge like this is something a lot of people have been hoping. After the review, the ruling on the floor is overturned. And the announcement on the review is that the foul was called in air. So they have determined to overrule the original call. And guys, this is what it's all about, getting the call right. And I think in this case, the video review showed that while it was a tough call to make on the floor, they got it right with the review. And the Grizzlies call their first time out of the game. Paul George, he's checked in for Russell Westbrook. Jackson, he's checked in for the Grizzlies. Rose comes in for John Moran. And 153 left in the third quarter of the game. That's tipped. Five to shoot. Payne for three. And it's James Harden with the rebound. Clippers trail by 13. Outside, George. Leonard with a screen on Rose. Pass to Leonard. And here's George for three. And another three for the Clippers. Oh, he is absolutely unstoppable right now. Paul George in rhythm. Look out. And the Grizzlies leading by 10. Inside. 
Jackson finds Rose. And the foul called on Kawhi Leonard. That's his third foul of the game. And the Clippers making a change here. And checked in. 107 left in the third. Offensive rebound. Up top, Bain. Defended by George. Jackson, a screen on George. Shot clock at five. Second chance shot. And Jackson finishes inside. And it's seven points for Jaron Jackson. And that is quickly becoming Jackson's domain. He is such a strong finisher in the paint. Harden dishes to George. Into the lane. And George with the stuff. Well, as usual, this guy cooking on the offensive end. But right now, the other guys on his team have got to step forward. Oh, he just punches that one down with a fury. He rubs it in a little deeper with the hanging finish. Six seconds separating the shot and game clocks. And two free throws coming up. Unable to get that one to go with all the content. That one on smart. You see, Paul George just understands how to use his length and his size. He is such a tough cover close to the basket. And he makes the first. And it's been an outstanding game for them at the free throw line. Not missing their chances when they get them. And the Clippers making a change here. Westbrook's checked in. Rose against Westbrook. Rose, that's good. Rose has got six. Boy, what a warrior Derrick Rose is. Guy gets buckets through contact out there. So tough. And the Clippers call time here. Twelve seconds left to play in the third. Now George. Tice with the ball. And the last shot of the buzzer doesn't go in for him. And that defensive versatility Jackson has is just... And so it's the Memphis Grizzlies up by a dozen here at the end of the quarter. What a night they've had in terms of their shooting. Everything dropping in for them. We'll get right back to the action when we return. Now let's take a look at our assist of the game presented by Steve Farm. Yeah, an easy choice tonight. Look at the precision on this pass. Put it on a platter for him. And when you're the beneficiary of a pass that good, you better deliver. And he did just that. And there have been two very different performances from these teams today as we get going in quarter number four. With a short break in the action, gives us a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge. Thanks, Kevin. Well, Coach Taylor Jenkins talked to his team during the break. Now, he kept it simple in the huddle. He said, play smart. If we don't beat ourselves, we walk away with the win. Keep it simple, and we got this. Back to you. Thank you, David. Doing the two and three, the core of George and Leonard. E.J. Tucker is out there with Daniel Tice. And it's Harden in at the point. So that's the lineup on the floor for the Clippers. Leonard with a screen on Morant. Poked away. Stolen by Smart. And now with the fast break, Smart with the ball. And Morant throws it down. And the agility, the hops. Morant just explodes off the floor. Tucker a screen. And here's Leonard from three. And the rebound by Jaron Jackson. Jackson's got rebound number eight here tonight in the game. It's Morant with the drop. How about the handles from the young fella? Give Morant credit for taking the initiative and capitalizing. Tipped away. Stolen by Smart. Oh, and here we go. Jackson, nobody back. The three from Morant drills the three-pointer. Morant's got 36. And let's get your guys' take now on the hustle stats for Memphis. All game long, they've had active hands and, and really out in the passing lanes. And that aggression on defense has resulted in a ton of steal. And another theme in this game to me, guys, has been how lethal they've been in transition. Attack on the break and make sure you convert. I'll tell you, that vertical ability he has puts him in select company in NBA power forwards. May not have great size, but boy, he plays bigger than it. 
And this offense is in a perfect rhythm. And you can see how they're finishing their plays. Well, what great game planning. What great execution. It doesn't get much better than this. And George kicks it to Tucker. Passes it to Harden. Shot clock at six. Launches a three. But Grizzlies pull it in. Jackson's got nine rebounds now tonight. Just over two and a half minutes played now here in the final quarter of regulation. Morant scanning the floor. Williams finds Rose. Off target with his three. Clippers trail by 21. In the corner, George with it. Leonard with a screen on smart. Harden the pass to Leonard. Oh, and the jam by Leonard. Well, don't let Kawhi's quiet demeanor fool you. This guy has athleticism and explosiveness. How about that in style? Outside Rose. 146 left in the fourth. The kick out to Williams. The tray. It's rebounded by Tice. Tice has got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. And this is going to end in a lopsided victory. I, I love the tenacity and aggressiveness as well as the ability to close. You really got to give it up here for Memphis. In the end, they had a better shooting percentage, and that's what made the difference. Sometimes, you know, things go your way. The other team wasn't catching any lucky breaks themselves. Yeah, and, and Kevin, not all about luck. I thought their overall shot selection was better. And, you know, looking back at all the contributions tonight, it was a really phenomenal all-around game for John Moran. A big part of their success was his ability to keep the ball moving, finding guys when they would flash open. Spirited performance. You love to get this kind of win, especially on the road. You've got to be able to block out all distractions in enemy territory. This team did a tremendous job staying focused on the task at hand. Here's Leonard. It's good. The assist that time from Harden. Just incredible touch from the interior. Kawhi Leonard more than capable in that painted area. Let's it fly from 18. And the Grizzlies check on two more. Saw the opportunity to put this away and did not turn it down. Yeah, playing with great energy and great effort. And as a coach, you'd love to see this from your team every single night. Five seconds separating the shot and game clocks. Leonard with a screen on Morant. Harden the pass to Leonard. Beautiful dish and the layup goes down. Well, it's Harden continuing to evolve as a playmaker. This guy, including his teammates, making them feel good.
This one, both teams very skilled at the four and the five, Clark. And you know what? It's a nice contrast in this age of small ball and positionless basketball. It's good to see the front court players thriving and making it happen. Looking at the starting five for the Boston Celtics. The core of this team, Brown and Tatum. They're the forwards. Derek White out there with Drew Holiday. And it's Porzingis in at the center position. Here's Brown following the bucket by the Magic. Tatum drives in. And finished off by Tatum. Man, I love how strong Tatum goes to the rack. When you give him room to get up, he's banging that thing. Wagner inside. He's covered by Holiday. And it's Wagner missing. Boston on offense. Outside, Brown. There's the drive. Oh, rejected by Isaac. You know, he's gifted with incredible length. Isaac is almost a footer. Seven feet, that is. So he should pile up the block shot. Great teamwork on that drive. Punctuated by a strong finish. That is the perfect fast break, guys. Getting a hoop before the defense can get set. And defensively, you have to make him work harder than this, or it's going to be a long night. You really don't want to allow him to get too comfortable, but even with stifling defense, he's going to still find a way to get it in the basket. Starting to find his rhythm. He's cooking, and he knows it. And you know what? They're going to keep using it. I mean, he'll be the centerpiece of their offense today. You can bank on that. White, good. And they may have talked about shot selection coming into this. The end of the 2023 season was a rough stretch for a young Orlando Magic squad. Always hard, B.A., to close out a season on a losing streak and in the bottom part of your conference. It's a tough learning opportunity, even for veteran guys. And the Celtics in possession here. The Magic making their last shot. Brown with that amazing athleticism putting on a show out there with jams like that. And he's going to the line for two. The official saw contact while he was going up. In the early stretch of his career, Clark, Jalen Suggs has had a tough go. Yeah, you know, injuries are an ugly part of the game, B.A., and he's had to overcome quite a bit here early in his career. Such a promising young talent. But I do believe when you look at the long road in front of him that he's going to show you how special a player he is. The shot by Holiday, no good for Orlando. They've gone four to five so far, looking sharp. Here's Suggs. It's good. A physical guard, Suggs, loves working inside. He doesn't back away from the paint at all. Outside White. And Tatum, here we go. Oh, he took the contact and tried to throw it down over the top. And here comes the coach's challenge. He disagrees with the foul. He does not hesitate to ask for a second look. It's a pretty heated game. Every call matters. <laughs> and even with the, the previous play is under the Personal foul calls still disputed even after the video review. There's no doubt there's going to be a gray area in a lot of these calls. But at least we have the option to take a second look. The ruling on the floor is confirmed. And they've made their decision. The call will stand. And as much as it hurts to lose a challenge, I think Coach would challenge that call again if he could. He really disagreed with the foul, and he's still peeved. That free throw, no good. A young man who has an appetite for greatness, always pushing himself is Jason Tatum. That one's no good. They've been taking care of business. Especially at the offensive end, where they've been totally in sync. Back to Ben Carroll. Oh, Ben Carroll throws it down. This is why you put the ball in his hands. An accurate pass hitting a moving target. Pass to Porzingis. Outside, Brown. And there's a minute 45 left in the first quarter of the game. It's blocked. Wagner, so good with his hands, but he's a smart defender, too. Positioned himself well to come away with that block. And give their offense some love. They've been the more efficient team. Well, you know, it's been all high percentage shot for them so far. I mean, just the kind of execution you want in the first half.
And what an aggressive move to the rim. He's really trying to fire up his teammates right now. Boy, it's not hard to feel inspired after a teammate makes that kind of finish. And you know, when you're looking to close the gap, you need guys who will take it upon themselves to step up, take the initiative, and make something happen. Here's White, the Magic, making their last shot. Back to Porzingis. Tatum, a screen on Wagner. Just five on the clock. Hook loose. They kick it out to Porzingis. The baseline, Jay. With the putback, it's good on the putback. Tatum's got six. Tatum hanging around the basket. Got the board and bucket. Wagner with a screen on White. The three from Suggs. And again, it's the magic from Pete. You know you're doing something right when you find yourself up double digits in the first period. Well, they're doing everything right. How about that? I mean, this could turn into a blowout very quickly. There's Tatum with the three. Oh, he gets it to go. So far, he can't miss. He's four for four. Man, this is just fun. These teams are trading threes back and forth. Nothing like answering back. One team gets three, you fire three of your own. Boom. <laughs> Attacking the rim with power. Tremendous finish. Really piling on the lead with a dunk like that. Gotta fight harder to get over those screens. Well, I'm gonna credit the screen. I mean, that's a good, strong pick he lays there. Here's Anthony. Paolo Van Carroll getting it done for the Orlando Magic. He put together 10 points in the quarter. Back. Hope you've enjoyed the broadcast so far. Halfway through the first half in this one. All right, guys, what do you think about the magic here in this one? Well, they've used the fast break well to score easy points and keep the defense unsettled. And, you know, for them, guys, it's all about tempo. Keep the pressure on and do so as much as possible. On the court for the Celtics. Second quarter underway. With the core of this team, Brown and Tatum. They're the forwards. Drew Holiday out there with Derek White. And it's Porzingis in at the five. Wagner, the pass to Anthony. The three is up. And again, it's Orlando with a three. Wagner, he'll find the wide open teammate more often than not. Heady player. You think of Wagner mostly for his offense. But Clark, he's a great defender as well. You know, B.A., he really is. He moves his feet well, both laterally and up and down. He's got great size in 6'10". He can step out and defend guards in the pick and roll. Very versatile defensively. And he's got a nice seal in how he goes about it. Keeping his eyes locked in on the rim. Anthony made that hard shot look easy. Isaac against Tatum. With some arc. Look at Tatum using his length. How about that wonderful floater he has. Showing off an exquisite touch. Wagner, the pass to Ben Carroll. Oh, Ben Carroll throws it down. Van Carroll putting together some kind of performance here. He's the entire pack. White with it. Wagner picks him up. And the Magic call time here. And Grant, these days, more and more teams emphasize the importance of switch defense. It's so true in the modern NBA, B.A. Every team has to be able to switch to take away a lot of the action of the offensive team. So having defenders who can guard multiple players on the court is a must. There's Tatum with the three. Oh, wow. He drew the contact, and that three almost went in. So he'll go to the line for three free throws. Coming at you with so many ways to get his points. Tatum draws a lot of contact throughout the game. Gets himself to the line. And he makes all three. Orlando's gone three of three from outside here in this one. Wagner finds Isaac. Anthony with it. He's covered by Holiday. And Carroll with a screen on Brown. And Anthony slams it in. Turning on the afterburners on the drive. Good to see Anthony using his athleticism in these situations. White, the pass to Porzingis. Over to the left wing. Anthony with it. Guarded now by Holiday. Anthony misses. 
and the shooter had very little space on that attempt. And guys, that's exactly the kind of high-impact defense they want to see out of him. Pass to Holiday. Porzingis sets a screen. And there's Holiday. That's good. On the assist by Tatum. Holiday's got his first points of the game. Orlando has gone one of two from deep in the second quarter. And Carroll with a screen on White. The three from Suggs. That shot off the mark. Good work defensively by White. Time called here. The Celtics decide to talk it over. And as the coaches draw up their strategies, the players staying hydrated with some Gatorade. That's key to keeping them at their best all the way up to the buzzer. It really is. And every one of those players knows it. They're all making sure to stay hydrated. It's impossible to play your A game if you're not getting enough to drink, especially towards the end of games when the physical toll of a long contest really starts to add up. The playmaking of Brown continuing to evolve. Nice dime there. Ben Carroll flushing it home. I just love the aggressive finish. Oh, I'm thinking he's sending a strong message with that jam. That's exactly how you send it. Two hands and down. Nice dime drop there from Holiday. Excellent awareness. Anthony finds Ben Carroll. Ben Carroll the screen. Inside. Oh, Ben Carroll throws it down. More than capable of running points. Anthony, a gifted passer, really has good vision. Pass to Porzingis. Porzingis sets a screen. Outside Holiday. Horford, a screen on Anthony. Just four to shoot. They kick it out to Porzingis. Whoop, there's the shot clock violation. So they'll turn it over. Orlando calls timeout. The Magic have gotten an impressive six of eight shots to fall in the second. To the middle. And he jams it after taking the nice feed on the run. A capable floor general. I love watching Anthony set up his teammates. Holiday passes to Brown. No good on the three. Two for one opportunity here. Hey, if I'm in their shoes, I go for it. Back to Anthony. Here he goes. Oh, oh, nice. oh big finish. Man. Anthony going up top. Don't let his size fool you, folks. Cole's got some hops. Porzingis with a screen on Harris. Oh, look out! JB throwing it down. A strong finish to cut into that lead a little. And left no doubt with that one, Grant. Well, I tell you what, he loaded up as much power as he could behind that two-hander. Anthony against Holiday. Now here's Anthony, down low. Here's Black. Misses the baby hook. And so it's the Orlando Magic with a six-point lead at the close of the quarter. Their key to consistency has been their dominance in the paint. They've been the more physical team. More NBA on 2K Sports right after this. Just joining us, we played through the first half in a game that's been fairly even so far. Paolo Bancaro with a strong contribution so far in this one. Pretty much the entire first half, he was dominating down low, piling up a ton of dunks. Guys, he's been in beast mode down low, asserting his will. The defense has been helpless, unable to slow him down. We've got Wendell Carter, Gary Harris out there with Joe Ingles. Then there's Markel Fultz. And it's Black in at the shooting guard. So that's who Jamal Mosley starts the second half with. And what you like about Gary Harris, you can depend on him to make good decisions and always bring that energy, Grant. Yeah, no doubt, B.A. I mean, he's all about the team, willing to do whatever they ask of him. You can't have enough guys like that on your roster. Oh, a big finish with a one-handed jam. Boy, 
and moving the ball with purpose there. Fultz has tremendous offensive potential, and we're seeing him put it all together now. And Boston calls time here. So Orlando ends up going with a new group. Jason Tatum, he's checked in for Boston. White comes in for Jalen Brown. Boston trailing. Tatum looking it over. Oh, great D that time from Isaac. Well, you know, stopping him is never easy to do, but the defense was strong there. Barger, the pass to Suggs. And down it goes. Jam that one home. One of the more explosive point guards in this game. That is impressive. Pass to Tatum. Okay, Tatum punching it home. A bit undersized. His hops make him a legit small ball four. The three from Suggs. Hey, in six attempts, he's made five. Talk about efficiency. You know, it's not his greatest strength. He's got a lot of different things that he's good at, but Suggs will hit the three if you give it to him. Tatum passes to Holiday. Three-pointer. It's hauled in by Isaac. Isaac's got four rebounds now. They set the pick. A nice shot by Tatum. Tatum's got 18 points in the game. Tatum clearly putting on the show in this one. Doing it all. Van Caro takes it. The rebound, Celtics. Well, I tell you, that was double duty right there. He influenced the shot and then got back and cleaned the glass. And for some reason, he decided to foul there. Yeah, B.A., that's an odd move. Maybe there's something else behind it. Three-pointer, Holiday. Fires in the triple. And now it's just a four-point magic lead. This isn't a shot Holiday will pass up. He's a reliable three-point shooter. Here's Ben Carroll. Second chance shot. And another shot. Wagner left side. Half to the outside. Six on the shot clock. And it's thrown down hard with both hands. Really good movement that time by Franz Wagner. I mean, rolling into a good scoring position and then begging for the ball. Here's Walsh, defended by Wagner. Pass to Porzingis. Tatum inside. He's against Isaac. Elbow shot. And it's Boston scoring again. You can't exhale at all as a defender on Tatum. Mid-range, not his go-to spot, but he took advantage there. And Carroll with a screen on Holiday. Anthony finds Isaac. Back to Anthony. Inside. And stolen by Holiday. They're running. Here's Tatum. So it'll be two free throws. He was fouled in the act of shooting. And Tatum does a little bit of everything, and he's especially skilled down low. Fantastic at drawing the defense into him and playing off the contact while he's going up for a shot. Orlando leading. Isaac left side. Holiday against Anthony. Ben Caro outside. Back to Anthony. Here's the floater. The shot off that time. Nice D from Tatum. And Boston calls time here. Paolo Bancaro with a strong contribution so far in this one. You know, that defense is helpless right now. I mean, he's got their number, and he knows it. Jalen Brown, he's checked in for Boston. 114 left in the third. No question, this offense has some firepower. <laughs> and they're looking very confident in all that they're doing right now. The three from Suggs. Ben Carroll the screen. And an intentional foul right there. I mean, I'm just not sure what he was thinking right there. I mean, he needs to get his head in the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, completely a brain fade. I don't know where that came from. Just lost sense of time and the situation. Just five to shoot. Ben Carroll with a screen on white. And Porzingis with the block. Hey, with that length, Porzingis is always a threat to block shots. I mean, when he matches that length with really good energy and awareness, he can be a good defender. And another miss by Orlando. 
Maybe he thinks he has that type of range, but I don't think his coaches will agree. Yeah, you know what? Sometimes guys have the green light to take that shot, but I don't think he's one of them. And the ball is tied up, so we'll have a jump ball. Back to White. Clock at six. To the inside. Oh, look out! Poor Zingas! He's very capable as a point guard, is Derek White, showing off his playmaking skills there. Holiday against Anthony. Ooh, coming through again. Shooting five for seven now. <laughs> Once he breaks out the crossover, you just know something special is about to happen. Tatum passes to Brown. And the jam by Brown. Jason Tatum scores, but also creates for his teammates a sign of his continuing growth as a player. It's all tied in Orlando. And right after this, we'll bring you the start of the final quarter. And a moment now as we take a look at our State Farm assist of the game. Woo, I'm fired up to see this dish one more time. It's always great to see your two guards share the wealth. Yeah, platinum level dime dropping there, fellas. Accurate and on time. Well, this has been a great contest so far. I imagine the fourth quarter could have more action in store for us. On the floor for Boston, the core of this team, Brown and Tatum. They're the forwards. Derek White out there with Drew Holiday. And it's Porzingis in at the pivot spot, manning the middle. Hey, the defense has no answer for Jalen Brown. I mean, he's dribbling the ball. His teammates know they're in good hands. The shot is good by Isaac. Man, where's the effort on the defensive end? You've got to play harder than that. And you know, it's made for a fun game, but you're right. You're exactly right. I mean, the defense has been non-existent. Here's Tatum. And the Celtics tack on two more. Oh, the ball handling of Tatum. It's what separates him from other star wings. After the outside. One minute in now in the fourth quarter. Orlando calls timeout. Yeah, coach no doubt wants to use this timeout to review the matchups and maybe make some adjustments as well. And I agree. I think there's going to be a new wrinkle in their game plan when they come out of this timeout. All right, let's check in with Allie LaForce. Thanks, guys. I got a chance to hear what Jamal Mosley was saying to the team. This might be a close late game, but don't tell coach. They were cool as a cucumber in the huddle, and I think that resonates with their players. We'll see if that approach works. Brian? Good job there, Allie. Thanks. Wagner with a screen on white. The three from Suggs. Holiday grabs the miss. They've led by as much as 10. Brown with it, and Anthony picks him up defensively. And so they foul intentionally. First personal foul. First team foul. Now here's White. Defense is right there. Brown, a screen on Isaac. Tatum drives in. Oh, look out! Tatum takes off! Tatum's athleticism as he drives, really impressive. I mean, just shredding the defense to pieces there. Wagner finds Isaac to the left wing. Anthony, the pass to Wagner. Here's Van Carroll, defended by Porzingis. Six to shoot, into the lane. Oh, Van Carroll throws it down. Van Carroll's got such a smooth game for a guy so big and powerful. Moves extremely well and has deceptive speed, too. And the Celtics call time here. And we're about two minutes into the fourth here. Holiday passes to Tatum. Holiday against Anthony. And the basket by Holiday. Packing some muscle on it. Holiday able to push that shot through. Here's Suggs. He's guarded by White. Suggs with the bucket. And this is just typical of him. Always making an impact at crucial moments in the game. You know, they want the ball in his hands here because they trust him to hit all the big shots. Brown, a screen on Isaac. Tatum with it. Wagner picks him up. It's stolen by Isaac. On the wing, Suggs. 
Here's Ben Carroll. Oh, Ben Carroll throws it down. No shame or fear in this young fella. Ben Carroll going to take on any big shot. Love seeing that from him. Isaac against Tatum. Pass to Brown. Outside Porzingis. Tatum with it. Five on the clock. Porzingis sets a screen. JT to the hole. And finished off by Tatum. And Tatum has been in these situations before. He's reliable when it comes to stepping up in big moments. And Carroll with a screen on Brown. Wagner to three. Knocks down the triple. As the game gets tight late and the stakes rise, you need guys who are willing and able to step up. Brown scanning the floor. Outside Porzingis. It's deflected. A little over three and a half minutes in the books now in this fourth quarter. To the paint. And stolen by Porzingis. And it's good. Fought through contact. Hit the shot. And will go to the line. All right, guys. Some stats here. The scoring breakdown for the Magic. Well, the coaching staff has to love what they're seeing on offense. There's so many assists because how this team is moving the ball. You've also got to commend them for how they've attacked the basket. They've been aggressive. They've not settled and have consistently gone at the rim. You know, he's not a knockdown shooter from there, but when you're that uncovered, you almost are forced to take it. Outside Tatum. Pass to White to take the lead. It's rebounded by Ben Carroll. And he probably thought he was going to bury that one. Expect them to take their time this trip down. Yeah, B.A., the clock is theirs to burn. This is what it's been since halftime. Remarkable results from downtown. Boy, it's been a three-point barrage. They came out gunning and have not stopped. 24 seconds left in the fourth. They double him with White. Inside. Here's Wagner. And he throws it down. What a terrific lead pass. Boy, good vision that time from Suggs on this play. Finding the most ready shooter. And fed him nicely. Oh, he buried the three. Dependable performance from Holiday. So reliable. This is a guy who is unshakable by the high stakes in that situation.
These teams have very different expectations. And in any matchup like this, the early stages are important. The team coming in as a big underdog has to keep it close. Otherwise, things can go south in a hurry. Here are the starters for Los Angeles. Filling the two and three, the core of George and Leonard. E.J. Tucker is out there with Daniel Tice. And it's Harden in at the point guard position. Harden, that's good. You can't lose Harden there. He slipped inside there and made them pay. Leonard against Simon. Ayton, the pass to Thibault. Simon's with the ball. Shoots over Leonard. They get the rebound. Kicks it out to Grant. Bangs home the trifecta. I like how Grant can play up-tempo, reacting fast to capitalize off a hot pass. Tucker is screen. Here's Harden on the wing. He's covered by Grant. Six to shoot. Here's George. And it's Portland with the rebound. Shut down. This is the way you play defense. This is how you protect the rim. Injuries have hampered Paul George over the last few years. But when he's healthy, he's elite. Greg, he's still a go-to option offensively who can guard the league's top wings. And as he's aged, he's really embraced a leadership role. Simons kicks to Grant. Walker is screen on George. Grant, that's good. Heads up play by Simons. He sees a better opportunity for his team and moves the ball. Harden finds George. To the paint. Here's Leonard. Pass to Tucker. Fires the three. That's good. And it's Leonard with the assist. And they don't want to get in a habit of giving him open looks from three. First quarter still, but not who you want to leave open. And the slam dunk by Simon. Agile drive by Anthony Simons. He sees an opening and takes off. And here's George for three. And again, it's the Clippers from deep. This is why you're trying to get him as many touches as possible. He's got the deck. And that one's good. Bible. Well, check out that assist. That's a pair of teammates that are clearly on the same page. Now here's Harden. Defended by Thibel. Harden the pass to George. From deep. Up and in. Off to an efficient start. Two for three from the field. Scary good from downtown. Watch out for PG-13. Simons gets to Aiton. Outside, Walker. Pass to Simons. From 18 feet away, again the Trailblazer score. And I like to see this. They're calling his number early, and he's delivered. It makes sense, right? You're trying to get off to a fast start, and he can help with that. Yeah, really good defensive play to cut him off there and square up. There's a minute 47 left in the first quarter. Grant gets a wide open look. Again, the Trailblazers score. And now from anywhere on the floor, Jeremy Grant has a lot of confidence in his jumper. And Smitty, we know when it comes to the Clippers, they seem to go as Kawhi Leonard goes. No doubt, Kevin. The only year they didn't make the playoffs with him, he was hurt. But when he's healthy, they are dangerous. A nice shot by Tucker. What can Leonard do? Keeping his eyes up, pinpoint strike. That's a nice play. Simons against Leonard. Eight and wide open. From outside, off the mark. And so it's Leonard with it. He'll bring it up for the Clippers. They trail by one. That bucket in in no time at all. George has got nine. He is in a zone right now. Every three he puts up seems to be going down. Here's Simon. And the slam dunk by Simon. A pro at working the pick and roll. Simon's just taking what the defense gives him. On the wing, Harden. Leonard sets a screen for Harden. Feeds it to Leonard. Seven second difference, shot and game clock. 
and out of bounds as the Clippers gain possession. 26 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Harden the pass to George. Eleven seconds left to play here in the first. Down to five on the shot clock. Leonard sets a screen for George. And it's Leonard. That time on the assist by George. Not enough. Kawhi Leonard is too strong to get rattled by contact. A nice shot by Simmons. Boy, both teams racking up the points to start this game. And you wonder how long they can keep it going. At some point, you expect the defense will adjust. What a... And if you're just tuning in, it's been a pretty even game through the first quarter. Guys, what stands out from the Blazers so far? Well, one way to generate more offense, pound the offensive glass. That was the difference in the first. And you know this, most of the time, offensive rebounds generate high percentage looks. Aiton is out there with Walker. Then there's Matisse Theibel. Then there's Malcolm Brogdon. And it's Grant. And at the three, the small forward. That's the group on the floor for Portland. A three-pointer, no good. Uncontested look. Can't fault the shot selection. He's money from there. Harden the pass to George. Leonard with a screen on Grant. Back to Harden. And stolen by Eaton. Brogdon with it. And it's Harden picking him up. And Malcolm Brogdon, good for three. And a moment here to take a look at some hustle stats for Portland. The way they've been going after steals in this game, it has been super impressive. They are wreaking havoc right now. And so far, just a great job forcing turnovers and creating opportunities in the open floor. The defense at the heart of that. The Clippers shooting their first foul shot of the game. Yeah, a year ago, though, Kevin, 78% conversion rate from the free throw line. So that's a nice all-around effort. And sports may be the ultimate meritocracy. Does it matter where you're from, your grade, your background? You got to have game, right? Kevin, it's a beautiful thing. Some players grew up with a father in the NBA. Others were a world away. Either way, when you get here, you know you've earned it. And the Clippers making a change here. Westbrook's checked in. Shot's good by Walker. Walker's got his first basket. And really, it's been a major aspect of their offense in the early stages here. Their success working the ball inside and getting points from close range. And now the latest from our reporter, David Alden. Thank you, Kevin. Well, Scoot Henderson has prepared himself for the pressures of the NBA. He meditates. He reads books on self-improvement. And he said, I'm pretty sure you can lose yourself making a lot of money. You've got to be mentally sound. There's going to be downsides of being this young and successful. But I don't like failure, so I just try to minimize that. Kevin? Wise words, David. <laughs> Wise words. Thank you. The pass to Tice. A shot goes in. First shot, first basket. We'll see if they can finally hold on to a lead. It's been back and forth all night. Both teams putting forth their best efforts right now. This is the kind of game fans pay to see. A primary responsibility of Brogdon's. When someone is open on his squad, he gets it to him. You know, Greg, the way Malcolm Brogdon is used in the catch-and-shoot game, it makes that offense very difficult to stop. Well, he's a high-percentage shooter, doesn't go through many ups and downs, and when he doesn't have the look he wants, he's willing to get off the ball. And some hang time on the rim puts a little cherry on the top of that slam. Well, those kind of displays of strength can get one team rolling. And once Jeremy gets going, he's automatic, making it look effortless right now. Harden dishes to Leonard. Jacks up a three. It's good from long range. Leonard's got the lead back up to two now for the Clippers. 
both teams running perimeter-oriented plays that are working. How often do we see this these days? Clubs answering each other from range. And this is how confident Robert is in his scoring ability. Able to get it done from everywhere. Yeah, not sure what that was about. I mean, talk about a brain cramp. And the Trailblazers making a change here. Murray's checked in. Here's Leonard. Stolen by Walker. Murray outside. Passes to Thibel. It's Brogdon on the wing. He's covered by Westbrook. Ayton sets the pick for Brogdon. And the shot goes down. Brogdon's got seven points for the quarter. And that pick takes the D totally out of the equation. Hey, if you're not going to fight over, you're essentially giving the shooter the look he wants. 100 kicks to Harden. is a nightmare in the pick and roll. Just a clever combo guard who is completely unpredictable. Here's Brogdon. Got it for his fourth field goal of the game on just five shots. That's nice work. Stopping short of the rim. Just laying it over the top. So timeout called here. The first for Los Angeles. Grant, he's checked in for Walker. Shaden Sharp comes in for Matisse Thibel. And it's Simons in for Brogdon. And a switch here also for the Clippers. George is checked in. About seven seconds separating the shot and game clocks. He dishes it to Leonard. Leonard with a screen on Grant. And here's George for three. It's in and he's a very efficient five for six on the game. And you can tell he's looking for his shot. He just believes in it. You know why? Success breeds confidence. And he's certainly been successful from there time and time again. Fires from the wing. And that would have counted, but his uh, shot was off the mark this time. And that's it for the first half of action. All right, David, thank you. We'll be back after halftime for the start of the third quarter. 37. And after a fairly even first couple of quarters, the second half could turn out to be a great one as both teams try to gain an edge. It's been one outstanding game from George. And, and the bulk of his damage so far has come from the perimeter. A lot of threes early on. He's been vital to spacing the floor for them. Makes everything else you want to do easier to accomplish. And the Clippers call time here. The Clippers in the lead. So with Harden on the bench, here's who Teron Lewis going with. At the guard spots, we'll see Westbrook and George. Daniel Tice out there with P.J. Tucker. And it's Leonard in at the three. And the Blazers, Steve, have made every attempt to put together a championship roster. But it's possible they may be heading in the other direction. Yeah, Kevin, sometimes a rebuild comes your way, whether you like it or not. This is a proud franchise. They play to win. But they're going through some growing pains right now. George against Grant. And George, here we go. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. That one on Simon. Good luck containing Paul George on the drive. He's one of the more fluent wings in the league. That free throw good from George. And load management, a term, Greg, that's been associated with the Clippers. And Kawhi rightfully managing his return from ACL injury with care. It's harder to build chemistry when guys are out, but it's all about staying healthy for the postseason. If he has a lane, Grant's taking it right to the rack. And a minute played as the second half gets going. George looking over the floor. 
down low. Here's Leonard. Oh, and the jam by Leonard. And not even three quarters out of the way. So many lead changes. The fans, guys, are getting their money's worth. Heck, I should have paid to watch this one. It's been a nail bite. Simon's up top. He's covered by Leonard. It's stolen by Tice. Outside Leonard. Outside George. Picked his pocket. And it's Grant in the corner. And another three for Portland. Clean long range shooting from Grant. His team counts on him to deliver that shot. George against Grant, and George gets it to go. George has got the game tied up here for the Clippers. Hey, guys, the D has to show a little more fight on the interior than they did on that trip. Now the Clippers moving it up. Now Westbrook still without a basket. Now here is George, and it's Paul George with the finish. Letting it all hang out when George takes flight. Just enjoy the show. Sharp, the best assignment. Takes the three. And another three for Portland. How can you leave this guy that wide open? Please. That's terrible. And what a score Anthony Simons has become, Steve. Wow. I love it, Kevin, because he can do it from all three levels. Smooth jumper, uses his body to protect the ball when he's driving inside. And some nights, he's unstoppable. The Trailblazers making a switch here. Murray's checked in. James Harden, he's checked in for Los Angeles. And the first time out of the game, called here for the Trailblazers. Jacked in for the Trailblazers. Third quarter here, and three minutes have come off the clock. Here's Harden, and Harden with the stuff. Wow, the vision of P.J. Tucker made that play possible. Portland's gotten two-thirds of their three-pointers to fall tonight. They're six of nine overall. Grant sets a screen for Simon. Grant kicks to Simons. This one for three. Good, and Grant gets the assist. Simons has got a pair of threes now here in the third for the Trailblazers. And there's the call on Matisse Theibel. That's his first foul. Jaden Sharps checked in for Jeremy Grant. Now on the floor for your Trailblazers. Number 17. Murray against Westbrook. Here's Tucker. Cracks in the trail. Tucker's got eight points. Offensively, Tucker's role is a spot-up jump shooter. Pass to Thibel. Shoots the three. And again, it's the Trailblazers from deep. Matching baskets from the perimeter and earmark of today's game. Hey, players love competition. And the fans love it as well. Here's Harden. Shooting foul, and, and here we go with the coach's challenge. Not surprised in a competitive game like this, and he's disputing the personal foul call. And this is the time now where the officials can review in closer Taking two shots. Getting a different angle can sometimes make it a lot easier to determine. Indeed, and the one thing with replay review is that when you... The ruling on the floor is overturned. Speed at which these players are moving at, and how fast the action really is and, and how hard it can be sometimes, you know, Greg, to, to make the right call. And the announcement on the review is that the foul was called in air. So they have determined to overrule the original call. And guys, this is what it's all about, getting the call right. And I think in this case, the video review showed that while it was a tough call to make on the floor, they got it right with the review. A bruising bucket down low. Kawhi's not going to flinch because of a little contact. A nice shot by Simon. Man, 
that he's been on point, not forcing things, getting the most of his looks within the flow. Harden the pass to Westbrook. There's the screen. And there's the drive. Here's Leonard, the kick out to Westbrook, time out, time out. and the Clippers call time here. One of the stories here, and Bernie Simons getting it done today. I mean, the ridiculous production from beyond the arc. They have to find a way to cool him down. So for the Trailblazers, Walker's checked in for Murph. Jeremy Grant comes in for Sharp, and Malcolm Brogdon subbed in for Anferni Simons. And then for Los Angeles, Mann comes in for Kawhi Leonard, and Georgia subbed in for Russell Westbrook. Portland leading. Grant outside. There's the three, and another three for Portland. Jeremy has worked hard to improve his jumper. You see the result there. Here's Harden. Outside for George. Tucker a screen. Oh, and he just knocked down the buzzer, Peter. And that's a crucial three there. They've cut it close going into the fourth. This is far from over. Jeremy Grant. And a moment now as we take a look at our State Farm assists of the game. And definitely deserving of the prize tonight. How about the read he made here? Looking like a point guard with a pass right on the money. Yeah, it's one thing to find a guy. It's another to deliver the ball where he can do something with it. Wonderful play. Three tenths quarters behind us. One more to go. Thanks for being with us as we begin the fourth. And now we've got some time to check in from the sideline. You got for us, D.A.? Guys, during that last break, I listened to Johnson Phillips talk to his team. Now he reminded his team, keep looking for the deep ball. If the three is there, take it. You've done a good job getting those looks, so keep taking them. Back to you guys. Thanks, David. Matisse Thibel's out there with Anthony Simon. Then it's Walker, then there's Grant, and it's Aiton in at the center, filling out the middle. That's the group on the floor for Portland. Simons against Leonard. Aiton a screen on Leonard. Simons from outside. Tries again, and Aiton with the nice bucket inside. There's a certain resiliency to this team, and, and you're starting to see it. Well within striking range. Now is when you have to lock in at both ends. George against Grant. Here's Tice. And Tice throws it down. Oh, nice work finding the open man by George. Plays like this prove he's a team player. Three-pointer, Simon. A three-pointer is right on target. Simons has got the lead up to five now for the Trailblazers. Here's George. That ball. Nice feed that time from Leonard. Leonard's got four assists in the game. Aiton a screen on Leonard. Simons kicks to Aiton. And again, it's Portland with the three. Their ability, again, to stretch the floor, particularly in this second half. This was obviously a focal point coming out of the break. Look smart when the shots are going down. Oh, he got fancy with that one. Yeah, maybe trying to give them the momentum boost they need to break this game open. And Aiton throws it down. And it's the way Aiton uses his body inside. It's what allows him to get so close to the basket. George from deep three-point land. And again, it's the Clippers from deep. Oh, beautiful looking shot. I mean, when you can hit it from that deep, Wow. And the foul called on Kawhi Leonard. That is his first foul of the game. Aiton a screen on Leonard. Simons kicks to Aiton. Leonard with the steal. Harden outside. George against Grant. Leonard sets a screen for George. Six on the shot clock. The Clippers need to get off a shot. Leonard hangs in midair and converts on the double clutch layup. Now just a one-point trailblazer lead. Here's Simon. And the slam dunk by Simon. 
Bayern with confidence. Simons continues to flourish when given the opportunity. George against Grant. Tice sets a screen for George. And it's good with time running down on the shot clock. George has got 36. Big points as the stakes rise. So does George's impact on the game. And here's Harden for three. And it's Aiton with the rebound. Aiton's got his fifth rebound in this one. Aiton is three on Leonard. Here's Simon. Oh. <laughs> and once Simon gets cooking, watch out because he's capable of dominating games all by himself. That one's in there. The trailblazer lead is cut down to just one on the basket from James Harden. And this is what great players do. Harden understanding how to deliver. And a oh, 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 he went. Oh, oh, oh. He must have ice in his veins. Simons pushes out all distractions and drops the clutch shot. Hutton finds George. Leonard with the ball. Now defended by Grant. And George, here we go. Cut. Big time basket at a big time moment. This is why we all watch. The NBA is about these moments. Grant the pass to Simon. Walker with a screen for Simon. Yes! Not just a jump shooter. Anthony can make plays at the rim. And the Clippers have possession. Harden draws the double. Pass to Tucker. Here's Harden on the wing, covered by Simon. Harden kicks to Tice. Back to George. Tice with a screen on Walker. The offensive rebound, the pass to Leonard. Can't get the three to fall. And here is Simon. And they foul intentionally. They're going to have to do that now again and again. They're not in the penalty yet. That's right. No other option but to foul and hope for some misses. Man, it took forever for them to commit that foul. I don't know why they didn't do it right away. Those are precious seconds. So the first one drops, and that gives them a four-point cushion. The development of Simons over the last few years has been incredible. He's shown he can be a lead ball handler and someone who can get you a bucket when needed. Los Angeles calls timeout. They're trailing by five. Just four seconds left in the fourth quarter. What do you think, guys? And I don't think they'll be able to climb out of this hole. I just think they have to focus on the moment. Don't worry about the score. Don't worry about executing the next play.
is tremendous. Oh yeah, these young boys got some bounce, but what I like is the skill in the basketball IQ combined with the athleticism. That's why you're seeing so many beautiful plays out here. The starters for the Memphis Grizzlies. Moran and Bain in the backcourt together. Brandon Clark out there with Jaron Jackson. And it's Smart in at the three. Small forward. Here's Bain. And stolen by Anthony. He saw the pass coming a mile away. Was perfectly positioned to intercept it. And now they decide to foul intentionally. You don't want to stop the clock right there. I'm not quite sure what he was thinking. Here's Suggs. Fires for three. Counted from distance. Yeah, good to see Suggs bury the triple. This will only help with his confidence. Morant looking around. Anthony grabs the board. That is a rarity. When he takes flight, he usually hammers it home. And Richard Javarant, one of those guys that seems to always be working hard on his game. So much fun to watch. Yeah, he looks to improve every single year and still believes he can get even better than he is now. You gotta love that type of mindset. I don't know, but it seems like Morant's got springs or something in his shoes. And Suggs the bucket on the assist by Anthony. Suggs has got eight points. Just taking it right to the rim, and no one was there to greet him. Easy possessions like that literally are just a gift. You just dream of them. He'll gladly take those. Now here's Anthony. Pass to Wagner. To the wing on the left. Bancaro in the post. Working on Clark. Fires from 14. And again, it's Orlando converting. You really can't give Bancaro room anywhere. He will find a shot to take. And that one's good. Moran. Starting to find his rhythm. He's cooking, and he knows it. Yeah, when he gets engaged this early in the game, it's bad news for the defense. He can roll this start throughout the rest of the game. Now here's Moran. Over Isaac. It's rebounded by Ben Carroll. Oh, I can see some miscommunication on defense there very clearly. They were super fortunate it didn't torch them with that mistake. That one goes in. I know what they say, defense wins championships, but you need some bucket getters too now. Up top, Moran. Isaac covering. And now we have an intentional foul. I'm not sure why. Yeah, bizarre play, B.A. Not sure what got into him. Second team foul. And just under two and a half minutes elapsed here in the first. Shots good by Moran. Well, great point guards keep their eyes up on the court. Young players should watch how smart goes about this man's business. Here's Wagner. Oh, nice finish from the low block. That one's good. A quality pass setting up a quality shot. It's just textbook basketball. Moran against Isaac. Drops in the layup for two. Morant's got a closer in look. Let me just tell you, Morant, he's going to find a way to score. He just has such a fantastic touch around the rim. Richard, since 2011, the Grizzlies have been very competitive, only missing the playoffs three times. Yeah, in three quick years, they were able to do a rebuild by creating a strong culture, drafting some incredible young talent, and allowing them to develop. One of the most dynamic passers to enter this league in a while. Morant, this man is in full control of the offense. Anthony with it, and Clark picks him up defensively. And just shredding apart the defense with his passing. He's helping to pace this offense so well. He's locked in with his teammates right now, setting guys up in perfect position. Jackson with a screen on Isaac. Here's Moran. Kicks it out to Bain. Shot clock at six. It's hauled in by Isaac. The Magic have gone an impressive eight of nine. Here's Wagner with the drive, and that makes him three for four. He's looking good. Building a big advantage early with a terrific all-around performance. They got off to such a hot start, and that can keep you energized throughout the whole game. Here's Moran. And then Moran with the jam! And man, does Moran put on a show. He's got such insane athleticism. Anthony against Bain, and the Magic call time here. 
and something fans don't always get to see. Some of the closely guarded secrets that happen in that hunt. And we see it so often. One little tweak to the game plan and everything falls into place for a team. Sucks, no good. Memphis trailing here. And then Morant with the jam! This man was under-recruited in college. Can you believe that? And Morant, he still plays like he's trying to prove something. Six seconds separating the shot and game clocks. Anthony against Bain. Wagner for three. And he finishes. That makes him four out of five. And so Moran will bring it up for the Grizzlies. Jackson, the screen. Moran, the pass to Jackson. And it's Moran off the drive. And this is what John Moran does best. When he finds his rhythm on offense, he is almost impossible to guard. One second left. And it's in! Oh! Nails the buzzer beater! Are you kidding? Makes his selection just in time. Well done. He didn't even look worried about the time on the clock. Nice way to end a quarter. And so far through one quarter, it's been a lopsided game. We'll see if that changes here in the second. All right, guys, what do you think about the offensive approach we've seen so far for the Magic? Well, so far, their long-range shooting has been the story, doing damage from deep. They've also been quick to set up their teammates, wasting no time making the extra pass for the open look. On the court for the Grizzlies. Moran and Bain in the backcourt together. Jaron Jackson out there with Brandon Clark. And it's Smart in it to three. Out of bounds, it'll go to the Magic. That was an... Okay, let's say that was an odd play. You don't see misconnections like that too often. Here's Anthony. 12-point lead, their biggest of the game. And it's good for two. Anthony's got nine. And just not letting up at all. I mean, you have to love this approach. You want to get the ball to the guys who make plays. This is when good players really get after it. He can sense that they're reeling, and he's going to put his foot on the pedal. And let's send it over to Ali LaForce. Well, Brian, durability is a focus for Ja Morant. He said, quote, the number one thing is being available, working on my body to get stronger and on the court, being way more consistent with my shooting so I don't have to go back to the rack, absorb all that contact, and hit the floor every single time. Brian? Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you, Ali. RJ, you watch Desmond Bain. He plays with a giant chip on his shoulder. Yeah, not highly recruited out of high school, playing four years in college. Bain was the last pick of the 2020 first round. And let me just say, he plays like he's been slighted. Now here's Anthony. He's got nine. Here's Wagner. Another basket. He's now six for seven in the contest. And trust me, when the D's slow to react, he'll be the first guy to make them pay. Yeah, they're going to do a much better job of putting a little bit of pressure on him. And they stop the action here. They're using their coach's challenge to see if they can get this foul overturned. And even with the coach's challenge in place, we've seen so many of these. The video review. There's no doubt there's going to be a gray area in a lot of these calls. But at least we have the option to take a second look so the officials can be sure they get it right. The ruling on the floor is confirmed. And they've made their decision. The call will stand. And as much as it hurts to lose a challenge, I think Coach would challenge that call again if he could. He really disagreed with the foul, and he's still beat. Williams has checked in for Memphis. The free throw drops for Bain. And Bain drops them both. Two-part equation. You have to be aggressive enough to get to the line, then talented enough to sink them. And the first one at the line is good. And Anthony drops them both. We're about a minute and a half into the second quarter now. Here's Bain. Banked it in off the glass. Bain's got eight points. Credit their discipline. They've been working for high percentage shots. Second 
Anthony, the pass to Isaac. Here's Wagner. Williams defending. The kick out to Ben Carroll. Stolen by Jackson. That was just incredible instincts defensively. He saw the ball coming back out and made the play. And stolen by Anthony. Fast break. Here we go. The finish. Oh, a huge slam. An exclamation point on that break. Adding insult to injury with the dunk off the steal. Nice to see a good play on D. That led to some fireworks. <laughs> Once he poked it away, he knew what was on his mind. Morant with the bucket. John Morant's body control and ability to take contact and stay focused is so impressive. Anthony, the pass to Wagner. And the bucket is good. 17 points in the game. This man has entered the zone. Great shooting performance from him all game long. And that puts them just one foul from the bonus. Fultz, he's checked in for Orlando. Here in quarter two, we've played a little over two and a half minutes now. Payne with it. Wagner picks him up. Williams. Nice dish, and the layup goes down. Got it in close, and unless it's an open three, that's the key to efficient offense. Pass to Ben Carroll. Here's Suggs. Outside Fultz. And here's Ben Carroll. Back to Fultz. Shot clock at five. The rebound by Jackson. Oh, gritty defense. Protecting the rim at all costs against a guy who has all sorts of ways to finish. Fires it. Hey, no good. For Orlando, they've gotten six of their seven shots to go in the second quarter. And Wagner gets it to go. He's officially taken over this first half, making all the right reads. And so Moran will bring it up for Memphis. It's a 16-point game. And it's out of bounds. Last touch by Moran. Those are the turnovers that have coaches pulling their hair out. Why do you think I'm ball? Derek Rose, he's checked in for Ja Moran. And here are the Magic now. Here's Suggs. Hey, in six attempts, he's made five. Talk about efficiency. And I like the shot selection. Suggs recognizes when to look to score inside. Jackson outside. Jackson, the screen. Bain, the pass to Jackson. And Jackson gets double teamed. Smart with the ball. Now guarded by Isaac. Three. Parked it down low that time. Got hit with the three-second call. We've seen out, more than a few miscues from them tonight. And if they want to come back in this game, look, they got to clean up those mistakes. Timeout called. The Grizzlies. Orlando has gone four or five from outside the arc in this one. To the middle. Here's Black. And that one is stuffed right through. <laughs> I tell you, a little extra pressure on D when you're up against a point guard who can elevate. Ha, it doesn't make it easy, does it? Yeah, hard to strategize for a guy who can make a pass or a play like this right in your face. Payne with it. He's picked up by Ben Carroll. Five to shoot. Bain, the pass to Jackson. Gets the three to fall. Jackson's got his first bucket of the game, and he's on the board for three. What separates Jaron from other bigs is he's got great confidence in his shot. Smart against Fultz. Pass to Houston. Shot from the low post is good. They've been the more poised team tonight, and the score reflects that. And it's because they're not playing in a rush. They're just letting their shots come naturally within the flow of the offense. It's been all about Franz Wagner for Orlando. Eight points in the quarter, showing how effective he can be. We'll be right back after this word.
And after a very lopsided first half, we'll see if things play out a little more evenly in the second. When you look at Franz Wagner, what a contribution. They've leaned on him to provide a lot of offense, and that's how he likes it. He always wants to be a go-to guy for them. I'm sure he'll be calling for the ball even more in this half. Orlando calls timeout. In the backcourt, it's Anthony and Suggs. Isaac and Wagner make up the forwards. And it's Ben Carroll in at the five, roaming the paint. That's who's out there for Orlando. Boy, he hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. Saving the possession. Great energy from Ben Carroll on the glass. Williams passes to Moran. And Williams punches it home. Good heads up basketball. Season opening and capitalizes. Anthony up top. And Anthony slams it in. And he did that so well in college. Suggs sharing it well in the league, too. Pass to Moran. Boy, that foul looked intentional. Not exactly what you'd expect here. Yeah, I know. It just doesn't make sense, given the situation. Goes up off the inbound. Ooh, plenty of contact on that shot. Officials call the foul, and he'll take two free throws now. Then he drops the first. Shooting for Memphis, Desmond. And Bain drops them both. Now here's Anthony. He's got 13. Wagner for three. The rebound by Jackson. A challenging stretch here for Memphis. Outside Morant. Carries it down low. Morant's got 18. Shows great imagination offensively. Morant so many tricks up his sleeve. Anthony feeling it out a bit. Going inside. Pass to Ben Carroll. Uneasy two on the layup. He has six. Coaches love to see ball movement, especially when it gets you that kind of look. Moran against Isaac, and the call will be against Jonathan Isaac. That's foul number two for him. Yeah, they've been pretty careless so far, racking up a number of fouls in very little time. Jackson, the screen. Back to Moran. Down low. Five on the clock. Bain, the pass to Moran. Oh, my! Came close to a four-point play. He'll head to the line for three free throws. It goes on Cole Anthony, and he hits the first of three. The explosiveness of Moran is just incredible. His motor and work ethic are both tremendous as well. He's off on the second. And he nails the third. Into the third. Two minutes in now for Orlando. They've gone three of five from the field in this third quarter. A moment to hear from Allie LaForce. So, Brian, this is year three with coaches and team branded attire. And you've asked them. They're in no rush to go back to the suits. The Heat's Eric Spolster said, quote, there's so much less to think about. I used to hate those dress shoes. The Pistons' Monty Williams said, quote, none of us can dress. That dry cleaning bill is gone, and you can pack in one bag. Brian. Hey, that sounds pretty good, Allie. Thank you. So one for two that time at the stripe. And here's Wagner. He'll bring it up for Orlando. At the line for the magic, Cole Anthony. The free throw drops for Anthony. And Anthony drops them both. Not quite two and a half minutes played here in the second half. Moran against Isaac. Kicks it out to Smart. Up top, Bain. To the inside. And the dunk by Jackson. The strong finish from Jackson Jr. He goes up with power inside the paint. Anthony finds Isaac. And Anthony gets it to go on the assist by Isaac. 
Anthony's got six here in the quarter. Breakdown for the defenders, and you can't ask for an easier bucket than that. Smart with the bucket. Good work inside from Smart. It's clear how confident he is close to the rim. Anthony against Bain. And Anthony slams it. Ferocious all the way. Man, that was good. Smart, a screen on Isaac. Here's Moran. And that one's good. Moran's got 22 points. Love how selfless he is setting brick screens like this. Plays like that right there are what help create easy scoring opportunities. Anthony up top. Let's it fly. And Orlando again with the bucket. You know the coaches hated that shot. But guess what? Some of them go in. Now a timeout called by Memphis. So for the Magic, Houston comes in for Wagner. And Harris is subbed in for Isaac. So Memphis going with an almost entire new group here. Jackson, he's checked in for Jackson. Williams comes in for Williams. Kennard, he's checked in for Bain. And it's Derrick Rose in for Moran. And now we have an intentional foul. I'm not sure why. Yeah, bizarre play, B.A. Not sure what got into him. And stolen by Williams. There's a screen. Harris against Kennard. Sinks that one from the post. 40 seconds left in the third. Here's Houston. Takes it inside. Soft touch off the glass. For Memphis, they've gone 6 of 7 and appearing confident in this half. Here's Rose. Kicks it out to Smart. Back to Rose. Up top, Jackson. Oh, and he got fouled on his way up. He'll head to the line to shoot two. That one on Ben Carroll. And he makes a first. Shooting for Memphis. That's also good. So he hits both free throws. Orlando has gone one of two shooting from the perimeter since halftime. Here's Suggs. He's got 12. Pass to Houston. With one on the clock. And that one drops for him. Houston's got six points. That's why you keep your head up. If the assist is there, you can pounce. And so it's Orlando. They're feeling great. A 21-point lead. Their efficiency has been off the charts. They're running... And let's take this opportunity to show you our State Farm assist of the game. Ooh, I'm fired up to see this dish one more time. It's always great to see your two guards share the wealth. Not just playing selflessly, but also making a smart decision with the ball. And one quarter to go in a game that, to this point, has not been an evenly fought contest. Timeout call, Memphis. Protecting the rim has to be their top objective right now. I'm sure coach is going to give them an earful about that. He can't be happy with that soft interior D. On the court for Memphis to start the fourth. Moran and Bain in the backcourt together. Brandon Clark out there with Marcus Smart. And it's Jackson in at center. Jackson with a screen on Isaac from deep. Morant, pure from three-point range. Morant's got nine points here in the second half. On the wing, Suggs. Oh, got a piece of it. And stolen by Bain. And he commits the intentional foul. Jalen Suggs, fourth personal foul. First team foul. Off the inbound, Bain into the lane, and the layup is up and in. Smart is just such an effective combo guard. IQ off the charts. He's just fantastic at getting his teammates going. Here's Wagner. Oh, it's blocked by Jackson. In transition, here they come. Oh, 
Oh, Clark with the slam. <laughs> Woo! His energy is unmatched. And all of a sudden, that man was just on the other end. Wow. Wagner with a screen on Smart. Pass to Wagner. Back to Anthony. Here's the three. Oh, he's been lethal. Connecting again, making him nine for nine. See, he had time to line it up. And you know what? He's capable. Smart, a screen on Isaac. Here's Moran. The shot, no good. Oh, great D that time from Isaac. All right, a look at how the points have been generated so far. A scoring breakdown for the Magic. Oh, they've been punishing the inside defense consistently in this one. Look, it's been a very productive area of the floor for them. And they've also been in the zone with the mid-range jumper. The defense has given them space, and they haven't hesitated to rise and fire. <laughs> I tell you, a little extra pressure on D when you're up against a point guard who can elevate. Ha, it doesn't make it easy, does it? Yeah, hard to strategize for a guy who can make a pass or a play like this right in your face. And so it's Memphis with it, trailing by 19. Inside, here's Clark. Nice D from Wagner. And here's Wagner. He'll bring it up for Orlando. Anthony, the pass to Isaac. And here's Wagner. Clark covers. Anthony, left side, takes the three. Smart grabs the miss. The Grizzlies have got three of six shots to go in this fourth quarter. Morant, the pass to Jackson. Back to Morant. Here's Clark. Oh, Clark with the slam. He gives up a bit of size at the center position, but his leaping ability, well, let's just say that makes up for him. And stolen by Bain. Jackson, the pass to Bain. Down low. Moran against Isaac. Up top, Jackson. Clock at six. Back to Moran. A shot from the high post. That one rolls around and rims out. Orlando has gone six of nine from three-point range. Here's Wagner. Oh, he nails it. Ten for 14 after that one. And they just continue to attack, even late in the game, while they're up big. If you want to be great, you have to have that killer instinct. And he makes it. Morant's got 27 points. Somebody, somebody help this man. Get this man some help out there. He's doing everything he can to keep his team in the game. Yep, that one goes. Yeah, once Suggs gets hot, he's not easy to stop, especially when he's getting whatever shot he wants. Right side, Bain. Pass to Moran. Floats one, and that one drops. Moran's got seven points for the quarter. And the distance between the point totals for these teams tells the whole story. Just a fantastic effort, and you have to give it up for the Magic. Well, Grant, I don't know if there was one deciding factor in this game, but I'd say shooting accuracy if I had to choose. Agreed, B.A. They really went after quality looks and shot the ball with confidence. And what a huge performance it was for Cole Anthony. Okay, I'm going to explain what he did. Oh! oh, oh nice finish. Man, oh. big time right there. It's just so much fun to watch Ja fly. The way this man can take off is so impressive. Here's Wagner. And down it goes. Two points. And guys, that's got to be the dagger. This is how you finish a game. And it felt like they just flipped the switch to go on that run and seal the game. Saving their best basketball for the end. Always smart. Well, I guess we could give them credit for not getting discouraged. They're still playing hard. He's doing his job out there. Jackson against Ben Carroll. On the take, laid it in with a nice touch off the window. And the Magic lead by 19. Their home crowd has energized them all game. Now they're closing it out. It's always nice to perform like this, especially in front of the... Oh, yes! Whoa. Throw it down! Oh! So courageous, taking it right to the defender. Boy, this dude knows how to finish in traffic. Wow. 
Anthony against Smart. Anthony with it.
Courts tonight, and this is probably the kind of game that suits your taste, am I right? <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it, Kevin. This game is going to come down to guard play. It's not just about the backcourt scoring. It's just as much about that strong perimeter defense. So let's take a look at the Boston Celtics starting lineup. Out of the front court, along with Tatum. Holiday out there with Derek White. And it's Perzingis in at the five, down low. Now here's Tatum. And it's good, two points. Excellent job finishing on the inside. Tatum doesn't fear going in amongst the trees. And Simons, here we go. Grant, that's good. Oh, what a great option he gives them on every possession. Here's White. Here he goes. Off to a good start as he hits his first shot attempt. Now, here's Sean. Pass to Simons. And it's Grant in the corner. Aiton a screen on Holland. Sharp the pass to Aiton. The dish to Grant. Beyond the clock. The Trailblazers need to get off a shot. Whoops, there's the 24 second shot clock violation, so they'll turn it over. A little over a minute gone here in the first quarter. Well, Brent, with the Blazers, it seemed like they were ready to take the next step a few years back. Yeah, and then it felt like things sort of shifted in the opposite direction and trying to find out through injuries and defensive struggles who is it that is going to help this team make that next step. you got to appreciate Porzingis, a willing screener, and he rolls quick to the open space. Hits the three-point bomb. And that's exactly what he's looking for, draining the triple. Now, here's Tatum. Here's White. Score the basket, his second of two attempts. And I like to see this. They're calling his number early, and he's delivering. Well, he's going to just keep going now. That's early confidence for him. Here's Sharp. Simons from outside. Aiton finds Simons. And it's Grant in the corner. And he could not get that one to go. Out of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. That's on Jalen Brown. Talk to most of the coaching staffs around the league. What is the first thing they think about with Jeremy Grant? And it's that athleticism that comes to mind. At the beginning of his career, Grant Brent was more of a role-playing forward. Those days, though, are long gone. And yeah, no question, he just about tripled his shot attempts per game, leading to more and more points, has even developed that three ball to become a multi-level scorer. Here's Simons. Jason Tatum picking up that last basket. And it's Simons missing. Celtics leading by three. Here's Holiday. Here's Brown. And White kicks to Porzingis. Over Ayton. And it's Porzingis that time on the assist by White. Persingas has got his second buck. Driving to the basket. And then Sharp with the dunk. Look how Sharp bounces off the drive, going to the rim full speed. White looking around. It's Brown on the wing. Outside Tatum. Brown sets a screen for Tatum and slam dunk by Tatum. And how about that show of confidence from Tatum? He really excels at playing above the rim and taking that one home. Now, here's Sharp. Passes it to Grant. Back to Simons. The three. Up and in. Off to an efficient start. Two for three from the field. Simons has great confidence in shooting that three ball, and that consistency will help this squad. <laughs> Come on, fella, and power it down. That tuck was ridiculous. There was absolutely nobody that was going to get in the way of that finish. Here's Aiton, and the foul is called. He intentionally grabbed him there for some reason. I don't know. Kevin, Kevin, all I can think of is that he's trying to slow the game down a little bit. That, right. That's a stretch, though. Definitely a strange move on his part. Aiton kicks to Simons. Aiton a screen on Holiday. 
Simons, the pass to Aiton. And Aiton throws it down. Does it feel good as a big man like Aiton to throw it down? You bet it does. Here's White. Yep, that one goes. White's got six. You can't just stop when there's a pick set up. Got to fight over it as a defender. That's one that the coaches will watch tomorrow with that player. You hate to see him give up in that situation. Here's Tatum following the basket by DeAndre Ayton. Tatum kicks to Brown. Persingas with a screen on Grant. Brown finds Persingas. Brown wide open. He fires. The rebound by Grant. You're not going to see that very often. Plenty of space, but he just, let's face it, he whiffs on that one. Now, here's Sean. White covering. He takes it in. That's a two from Simons. And no good on the last second attempt this time. Well, it's been a high-scoring competitive game through the first quarter of play. And close game underway so far. We'll see if either of these teams can jump out in the second quarter. And a chance for just a second to check out the scoring breakdown for Boston. Uh, they've been so aggressive, going strong at the defense, looking to score off of that penetration. Well, in the early goings, the mid-range shot has also been working well for them. They've been racking up some points off of those jumpers, and those are probably being invited. On the court for the Celtics, second quarter underway. Onto the front court along with Tatum. Derek White is out there with Holiday, and it's Przingis in at the center. Now here's Brown, following the miss by Jeremy Grant. Outside White. That's his fourth basket of the game, and he's only taken four shots off to a good start. And guys, they continue to put a lot of pressure on the interior defenders with their work down low. Pass to Sharp. Shoots it up. Gets an open look and hits. Of all the action happening there, it's the assist that jumps out to me there. That's just a great look and a great setup for the bucket. Now here's Tatum. He has six and slam dunk by Tatum. And the ability to score in many ways when Tatum drives with force, get out of his way. Aiton, the pass to Thibault. Aiton a screen on White. Thibault for three. Goes back up. Here's Aiton. And Aiton throws it down. That's going to be a big morale booster. And you know what? It could come down to those second chance buckets when it's all said and done today. Well, especially in a close game, every possession matters. And the dunk by Tatum. And the defense hates to see it. Tatum putting on a little bit of a show with that jam. Aiton, the pass to Sharp. Simon's on the wing. And there's the pass to Sharp. And then Sharp with the dunk. Clearly, he's one of the best there is in the business when it comes to making that lead pass. Outside, White. White setting the pick for Tatum. Back to White. And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle and two shots coming up. Great. there's been a scoring surge throughout the league. Is that due to poor defense, or is it to the rising talent level? Listen, teams are still defending, and the rules might have helped some. There is no doubt that there's not as much grabbing and holding. But these guys are scoring from all over the court and doing things we've just never seen before. And let's head over to the sideline and catch up with David Aldridge. Thank you, Kevin. Well, there's a new era in Portland with number three pick Scoot Henderson viewed as the franchise player of the future. He says, I'm going to embrace it. I've got a lot of responsibility, but it just comes with the work ethic. I always fall back on getting in the gym. I'm determined to be the best version of myself. Kevin, back to you. I love the fact, David, don't you, that he wants to be great. That was a terrific report. Thank you. Oh, great patience from Tatum there. Not allowing the shot clock to rush him while he finds his spot. Grant for three. And it's Thibel in the corner. Aiton a screen on Brown. To the paint. And Aiton throws it down. 
A good pass from the two guard sharp, solid at finding his open man. And now the first timeout call here for Boston. An almost entirely new group here for Portland. Williams is checked in for Aiton. Murray comes in for Matisse Thibel. Brogdon, he's checked in for Sharp. And Henderson subbed in for Anthony Simons. Now, here's Brown. Inside, Horford. The kick out to Brown. And the three ball is good. Brown's got the lead up to six now for the Celtics. Such a solid and unique big man in today's game. Horford's passing skills and ability to find the open teammate is very special. Grant dishes to Murray. Henderson with the screen for Grant. And they wasted no time getting those three points back. Grant's got seven points in the game. Nice answer back there. Love to see the competitor. Yeah, both teams finding ways to the three-point line and trying to take advantage from distance. Now here's Porzingis following the shot by Drew Holiday. Here's Walsh. He's covered by Grant. A three from Porzingis. Rebound by Murray. Just a, enough coverage to bother that three-point attempt. Henderson kicks to Williams. Pass to Grant. Williams, a screen on Horford. That's it, and the Celtic lead is cut to just one point on the basket from Grant. Uh, crucial that Grant becomes more and more effective at draining those kind of shots. Just two seconds between shot clock and game. Holiday gets the bucket. Well, that's how you draw it up right there. A screen to shed the defense, a quick move to the bucket, and you get the lay-in. Pass to Williams, back to Brogdon. Let's it go. Williams. No dice on the putback jam. And some good action through the first two quarters as we reach halftime. It's the Celtics up by three. It's time now to go courtside as we... All right, thank you, David. And folks, don't go away. After the break, we'll see you right back here for the start of quarter number three. If you're just joining us, we've played through the first half in a game that's been fairly even so far. And you know, guys, Jason Tatum has really been making it happen. Well, we'll find out if they were able to find an answer for him over the break. He was scoring with ease in that first half. Yeah, just way too easy out there, and I'm sure Coach is going to make that a priority at halftime. Grant is out there with Rob Williams. Then it's Henderson. Then there's Malcolm Brogdon, and it's Murray in at the small forward position. That's the group on the floor for Portland. Brown the pass to Horford. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. Jeremy Grant picks one up. And it's great to see Horford looking determined to get himself to the line. The Celtics have converted one of two free throws so far today. And a season ago at the charity strike, this is a group that shot an impressive 81%. Here's Henderson, and he goes right over Jalen Brown and slams it down. And what a creative player this kid is. Henderson, so much fun to watch. Scoot Henderson became the youngest G League player ever in 2021. Greg, he was only 17 then. And Kevin really speaks to his abilities that he was ready for that near NBA level of competition at such an early age. The kick out to Holiday. Offline with his three. Portland's gone three of five from beyond the arc so far tonight. Here's Henderson outside Williams. It's intercepted. And a fast break now for the Celtics. Here's Persingas. Oh, he misses the dunk. Well, you can tell right there he just wanted to go for the jam, but the defense too good and distracting. And the dunk by Grant. Already a gifted passer. Henderson has solid vision for such a young player. Time called here. The Celtics decide to talk it over. So for the trailblazer. 
Trailblazers. Ayton, he's checked in for Robert Williams. Walker comes in for Jeremy Grant. And Matisse Theibel subbed in for Murray. Jason Tatum, he's checked in for the Celtics. White comes in for Brown. And the dunk by Tatum. Well, you know Jason Tatum can score. And that's exactly what he's done thus far. A crossover. There's Henderson. Count the basket and the foul. That one on White. Yeah, the D has not been able to keep the ball out of the paint at that end of the floor. The Trailblazers shooting their third free throw attempt of the game. In a league of the best athletes in the world, Scoot Henderson stands out. He can just levitate in the air, blow by defenders. Scoot putting on a show. Into the third we go. Two minutes in now. Henderson against White. Henderson kicks to Thibel. Back to Henderson. Puts one up from 19. It's Henderson on the wing. Thibel finds Walker. Second shot opportunity. Rebounded by the Celtics. Yeah, it's better than giving up the layup. You want to go in there and use the hard foul. They did it there. That's aggressive attitude defensively. Changing ends quickly. He's rewarded with a high percentage look. Yeah, the defense trying to do their best to slow him down. But when he gets room like that, you got to look out. And stolen by White. Let's check in with our reporter, David Aldridge. Thank you, Kevin. Anthony Simons grew up under the tutelage of his father, whose workout regimen sometimes left his son in tears. Anthony said, I didn't get real joy from working out until middle school. By high school, it was just a normal day. It was so ingrained into me, working out extra and getting up as many shots as possible. Kevin? Now it brought him here, David. Thank you so much for the story. You can see Aiden does a good job of just picking a line and running the court that time. Here's White. Six for six. He's yet to miss from the field. 135 left in the third. Rodden against Holiday. Rodden looking it over. And it's Walker penetrating. And Walker throws it down. Well, the size that Brogdon has at the point guard, a good job of finding somebody over the top. Our time called here. The Celtics decide to talk it over. So for the Trailblazers, Grant, he's checked in for Walker. Sharp comes in for Malcolm Brogdon. And it's Simons in for Henderson. And the Celtics also making a change. Jalen Brown's checked in for True Holiday. Brown's shot is good. And guys, I don't think Brown gets enough credit for his toughness. This is a guy who never shies away from contact. Simons from outside. It's hauled in by Persingas. And so it's Porzingis. He'll bring it up for the Boston Celtics. They lead by one. Well, if you're giving up that much height, the only thing that you can do as a defender is to foul him. 41 seconds left to play in the third. White against Simon. Plenty of space. And again, it's Portland converted. The Celtics have gone 6 and 9 from the floor here in the second half. They've got to be happy with that. Now here's White. Guarded close. He kicks it to Tatum. To the middle. And out of bounds as the Trailblazers gain possession. There's 14 seconds left in the third quarter. Simons against White. Aiton a screen on White. At the top of the key, Aiton. Again, the Trailblazers good for two. DeAndre Aiton happy to shoot at that range. Nice stroke. High hole for three. And the last second attempt does not go in for him. And the game still closely contested as we end the third. And a chance right now to show you our State Farm assist of the game. Yeah, a terrific, unselfish play right here. Set up his teammate. Then how about the setup this one? What an advantage if your off guard can make plays so valuable. And 
with three quarters behind us, we start the fourth quarter in what is still anybody's ballgame. Getting the latest now from our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. David, it's all yours. Take it away. Thanks, guys. I was able to hear Chauncey Phillips coaching up his team during that break. Now with the game in the balance, coach told his team to play loose. Don't overthink it. We got this far playing our game, and we can win the same way. Back to you guys. All right, David, thanks. And a look at the five for the Celtics to start the fourth quarter. Down in the front court along with Tatum. Holiday out there with Derek White. And it's Brzingis in at the center, locking down the middle. Three points. And this is the effort you want to see out of your guys, win or lose. A great example out here of just a, a no-quit team continuing to compete until the final buzzer. Grab the pass to Sharp. For the three. And Tatum pulls it down. Austin leading by four. It's Brown on the wing. Defended by Thibel. Back to Brown. Yes, and it's Holiday with the assist that time. Well, an outstanding floor general right there. Holiday has switched between point guard and off guard in a great field for when guys are open. Here's Simon. And it hung on the rim, but wouldn't fall for it. Tatum deciding where to go with it. And he can't extend the lead to double digits. And the foul is called. He intentionally grabbed him there for some reason. I don't know. Kevin, Kevin, all I can think of is that he's trying to slow the game down a little bit. Right. That's a stretch, though. Definitely a strange move on his part. Time call here. The Celtics decide to talk it over. First minute and a half of basketball played here in the fourth quarter. And Simons wide open. He'll fight. Good. He hits the jump shot. That's exactly how you utilize the pick and roll. Simons looking really comfortable in the set there. Outside Holiday. Tatum setting the pick for Holiday. And he drives in. He dishes it to Tatum. Six to shoot. And it's Portland with the rebound. Ayton's got four rebounds in this game. Here's Sharp. Gets it to go from beyond the arc. At the arc, Sharp just going for it there. He's trusting in his ability. Brown outside. Tatum. And the dunk by Tatum. Oh, and he went for the two-hander on the slam using some muscle. Some urgency from him there. Sure. A nice shot by Simon. So much fun to watch Simons get this kind of confidence. He's so speedy with the ball, creates off the dribble. This kid's impressive. Here's White. Count that one. White's got four points now in the quarter. And, and won't find many more games as entertaining as this one. No, this is about as high octane a game as you're going to find. Eight in a screen on Hollywood. Five hole, the pass to Grant. Good ball movement here by the Trailblazers. Eight and a screen on Brown to tie it up. And it's Sharp missing. And so it's Porzingis. He'll bring it up for Boston. It's a three-point game. A nice shot by Brown. And with Brown, it, it doesn't matter what point in the game it's at. He's ready to shoot whenever and wherever he has the ball in a good spot. Simon's missing. Well, you make strides to get back in the ball game, but an errant shot like that can definitely cost you any kind of momentum. Have to use better judgment there. Brown with a screen on Grant. Tatum gets to Brown. Outside White. Down down low. Defended by Feibel. Misses the easy stuff. And that's an intentional foul. Really no idea why you're fouling in a situation like that. You know, maybe there's some bad blood between those two. Holiday against Simon. Ayton sets the pick for Simon. Wow, came this close to a four-point point. Well, head to the line for three free throws. Simon's really settling in to what he is in this league, and that is a microwave score that can come in 
and good buckets. And so he's good in all three free throws, and that brings them within two. And not the guy that you want to put at the line in these moments. He's not missing these. Now a timeout called by Boston. They're up by two. 55 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Boston with the ball. To the inside. Tatum. And he gets the whistle. The coach's challenge has been issued. A team like this, out of the wire, this is what it's for. And this is the time now where the officials can. Personal foul. Getting a different angle can sometimes make it a lot easier to determine. Indeed, and the one thing with replay review. immense speed at which these players are moving and how fast the action really is and, and how hard it can be sometimes you know Greg to, to make the right call and so the word is in they have decided that the call stands as it was made on the floor and you know even if a coach still feels this much of the right call you gotta acknowledge the effort being put in to review it the double checking and the game continues on Grant sets a screen for Simon Here's the triple. Kept alive. Pass to Sharp. Portland again missing. The Celtics on offense. They lead by four. Holiday with it. And Simons picks him up defensively. Outside Holiday. Back to Tatum. Four on the shot clock. Baseline try. It's hauled in by the Trailblazers. Time called here. The Blazers decide to talk it over. They're trailing by four. Six seconds left in the game. Your Blazers breaker dance to everyone. Let them hear you. The pass to Sharp. Puts up a three. That shot misses. 